It is showtime. Welcome to Webathon 2021. My name is Daryl Ledger, along with Simon Hogman. Welcome. Hello and there. Good afternoon to you. Good, good morning to the folks on the East Coast and Pacific. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. We're going to talk about all kinds of things today. We've got some very special guests coming up. Uh, Craig Camel was going to kick us off. Uh, he's get, getting his computer set up so he can share his screen. So he'll be up here in a little bit. But we want to welcome you and thank you so much for taking a part of your Cyber Monday to check out our uh, live stream today. We're going to go 12 hours long. So we, this is a, a crazy idea I had last week. And we just got all these people together. And here we are, right, Simon? Yeah, th this is definitely crazy. I mean, it, it seems like a great idea uh, last week. I think it still seems a great idea now, but I've never done anything like this before. I don't think you have. And uh, yeah, we're going to do a 12-hour yeah. marathon uh, live stream for, for Cyber Monday. And as you said, we've got loads of different guests. We've got giveaways, all sorts of stuff we're going to be covering about SEO, digital marketing, affiliate marketing, mass page building, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, let's uh, let's see how it goes. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I got Craig Campbell ready to come in. Hey, Craig, how are you doing? I am good, other than I'm struggling to share my screen. <laughs> but, is it is it giving you a chance? I, I didn't know if I brought you up, if that would help to help you share the screen or not, but we might have to have you change some computer settings and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, so if that's you want no problem. To, we'll we'll we'll, we'll work that. it out. I mean, I I had some pretty bit serious audio issue, issues yesterday. I've actually had to uh, yeah. transport my whole setup over to my parents-in-law house just to be able to get a decent broadband connection. So uh, that's going a lot better today. So uh, I'm sure there'll be all sorts of technical issues and challenges throughout the uh, throughout the twelve hours, but we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll get there. And anyway, you know, Craig uh, Craig and uh, ourselves can talk even if we can't get his screen up. So that's uh, that's no problem. We've got a few people coming to say uh, hello there uh just uh, say a quick uh, shout out hi uh, adam good to uh, good to see you good to have you on board and there's uh, reese as well hi uh, reese good to have you with us reese is over in australia as well so he's uh, he's well ahead of us so uh yeah that's uh, that's great good to see you guys great to have everybody here and we're just getting started so you haven't missed a thing folks if you have not signed up at webby.link make sure you register at webby.link or just go to webbython.com and click on the register button. It'll take you to the uh, registration page so that you can be entered to win these very cool prizes. So uh, I'll show you, there is a wheel of names here. And right now we have about a hundred names on here and that will we will run a few of these giveaways throughout the day. So if you take a look here, uh, the prizes, we have over $25,000 worth of prizes. Take a look at this. So viewmyresume.com, name worth says it's worth $14,500. Uh, Tilio, uh, dot com, or Telio.com is valued at $24,500 from Nameworth. Uh, I'm going to give away a Domain Kicks um, lifetime offer twice today. So there's $2,000 there. Sitesnip.com I'm giving away. That's $12,000 uh, plus in Nameworth value. 21,000 exact searches uh, for that domain. And then coming up at uh, seven o'clock, I'm going to give away names, namewebs.com, which is valued at $19,500, nameworth.com value. It's a 17 year old domain. So lots wow. of prizes. Okay. And lots of value to come your way. Yeah, today. amazing. So, we we, um, we put the advertising sure. out with uh, with twenty thousand dollars worth of stuff, but there's a lot more than that. So that's uh, that's fantastic. I'm also going to give away uh, an SEO course and, uh, and training package worth a thousand dollars as well. So that's something I'll uh, put in, and we can draw that whenever we can we can find the time uh, a bit later on in the day. So yeah, it looks uh, it looks great. I'm I'm just gutted I can't actually enter the draw myself, but there's some there's some good domain names awesome. there. Yeah, awesome. So it's where it says name goes here, that could be your name. So hopefully you win with a wheel of names. Make sure you're signed up only once at uh, web, uh, webby.link or go to our uh, website, webbython.com and go click on the registration, or register, okay? All right, it looks like Craig's back and it looks like he also uh, is able to uh, share. Uh, I saw his little screen come up, so... Welcome, Craig. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. Um, just cold here in Scotland, but um, mm. yeah, all good. How are you guys? 
Cold as well, to be honest. Yeah, I'm in uh, North Yorkshire, as you know, and it's uh, absolutely freezing. It was worse a couple of days ago. It's it's got a little bit warmer, but it's it's yeah, it's absolutely Baltic uh, here here as well. I don't know how about you, uh, Daryl? What's it like over there in the New York State? It's typically yeah, it's typically pretty cold here. Um, it, it was uh, about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so about a few degrees under C uh, zero. So yeah, but that's normal for us. We're pretty used to it. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, just so Craig, you've had a yeah you've had a busy year you you kind of became a movie star this year uh that was a really cool story i heard that on one of your uh, your talks about how you became a news movie star by accident that yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it's been a lot of fun um yeah i've got i've actually the first part of my showing you guys what what um what's going on um, with what I've been playing around with is actually that story, believe it or not. Um, it's quite a fun story, though. But, um, yeah, it was good to try acting as well. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, cool. We'll so use yeah. that as a tease then. Yeah, we'll yeah. use that as a tease. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're so grateful to have you. Let me just tell uh, the audience that um, Craig is – the big reason why this all happened because when we talked to Craig and Craig said, Hey, why not? I'll do it. It, it set the ball rolling to get more speakers on here and it really got us going. So Craig, I want to thank you. You were you know, one of the very first people that we asked and uh, we really appreciated you, you jumping into this uh, full feet forward. So we really appreciate that. Nah, no worries. I always like to, to try and give back to the community and, you know, lots of guys um, have helped me over the years, you know, um mm -hmm. so yeah it's always good to come back and give something back and hopefully someone can take one wee thing from what i've said and um, that's what it's all about and i think great that you guys are doing it and and you guys are doing a lot of stuff i know you daryl um <coughs> you know you've you've been in my podcast before and um you know the the stuff that you're doing is, is pretty amazing although it's not in my niche you know i learned a lot from just having you in a podcast so i think these things are amazing because you can just even if you're not doing it, it's just good to be aware of what's out there um, and, yeah. and the way people think and the way people work. And obviously, I've met Simon in person. Uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Last SA month. Underground, wasn't it? Yeah, early last month, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, um, and again, you know, you sit with these guys and, and you know, just have a conversation, um, understand how they make money and, 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 and you know, what, watch what they're doing. And as I say, I always take, you know, either inspiration or a nugget or something completely new yeah. and you're running with it. So I think these conversations and um, these, these kind of shows and, you know, just sitting and meeting new people uh, with different, you know, outlooks on it um, is amazing because, you know, especially for, for what you do, Daryl, you know, I'm, I'm the least skilled um, developer type person. Um, so it's always good to tap in. Nothing against Simon, but, you know, dev guys that are making, Automation, if you like, or tools, you know, I, I, that stuff always, always blows my brains. Um, because yeah, I'm not, I'm not a dev guy, tech guy at all. Absolutely not. I come from a totally different uh, area. So absolutely, Daryl's the tech guy of, of this setup. Absolutely, and yeah, some amazing, amazing stuff he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's all good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So were you able to share your screen? We'll see if that uh, does work the second time we try. Yes, we'll it should work this time. Um, I'm so... worried, you know, now that um, StreamYard has made that so secure now, uh, or maybe it's your antivirus. Do you know what it was that, that kept you from being able to share? Um, it's just a new computer. So, um, oh, okay. No. Nothing majorly wrong um, as such. Um, it's just my settings. When I go to screen share, it wasn't allowed, allowing Chrome to um, access my screen. And obviously, I was on Chrome with a uh, StreamYard, so just on a new laptop, and the settings are all knocked out. So it's a pain oh, in the I backside. See. So that was it. But now nah, StreamYard's fairly solid. To be fair, I mean it's a bit glitchy with certain people who maybe don't update their computers and stuff. Um, but overall, I think it's a good solid platform. Well, I hope we're able to share slides with different people today. I really hope that that works out. Maybe we'll figure out some sort of workaround if we have to. So, all right. Do you want us to add your screen yet? Yes. So all you need to do is add it in. So that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to start. Everyone, you can see the screen okay? 
Yeah, got it. See it okay. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to start with that acting story <coughs> and uh, where I was going with it uh, and the reason actually behind it all, which some of you have probably heard, some of you have not. So I'm going to start with that. But <clears throat> it was all based around trying to get the knowledge panel. Um, and I'm going to give you a few things I'd done initially with the knowledge panel, which basically caused me problems. It probably took me a good 12 months to get a knowledge panel to work. Um, and I will explain the reasons why. So as we all know, Brian Dean, um, Neil Patel, just pulling up a few random names, Jason Bernard, and Alida Solis did have a, a knowledge panel. And I'll come back to that in a moment. So I was like, what, what, how do you work out? What, what's the knowledge panel? What, what, how does it trigger and all of that kind of stuff? Now, most of us know that it's entities and all this other stuff. Now, being the lazy guy that I am, I couldn't be bothered um, trying to do it the real way. So I went on to legit, found a dude who was making knowledge panels on here, one of these guys, can't remember which one, and bought it couple of hundred bucks, and he came back a week later, here's your knowledge panel, blah, 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 blah. That's all good and well. So the knowledge panel's there. I've got the link to it. Now, <clears throat> I started then understanding what triggers the knowledge panel, and I knew that that was Wikidata. It was one of the main sources for it, which also then feeds into Wikipedia. So again, being that lazy bandit, I just went and bought it from a guy um, on Legit. So <clears throat> the guy comes back, nice Wikidata profile. My, my knowledge panel's triggered. All is going well. Um, now, my knowledge panel looked fairly basic, similar to this here. Now, if we look at Jason Bernard's, it's fairly well populated, the same as Neil Patel's and Brian Dean's. Well, Brian Dean's is not that well populated. Um, however, I was getting into Wikidata, and I thought, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add more of my social media profiles. I'm going to add more everything. Um, so went into Wikidata, set up an account, started editing my profile, and it, you know, that was it. I left it for about a month to see if the stuff would pull through. Boom, my knowledge panel disappears. My Wikidata Wikid profile disappears. And I'm like, what the fuck actually happened here? So <coughs> the guy that made my Wikidata, this dude from Legit, um, came back and said, Craig, you're not allowed to edit your own Wikidata. And I said, says who? Like, surely it's my Wikidata. I can do what I like. And he's like, nah, nah, nah. That, that's not how Wikidata works. It has to be a third party that edits your Wikidata. I'm like, for fuck's sake, you not told me that? Um, so anyway, the Wikidata's down, blah, 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 blah. Um, so done the same process again. Got it all up there, called myself SEO consultant, blah, 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 blah. Boom. They, it all comes down again. Now, I didn't edit anything. I got a third party to do it. Uh, so I tried the third one, a fourth one. They all came down, and I'm like, fuck, surely to God it's not because I edited it that first time. Dug a bit deeper. And the reason I've got these guys up, Brian Dean calls himself entrepreneur. Neil Patel, entrepreneur. Jason Bernard, musician. Alida Solis, who hasn't got one, had SEO consultant there. Now, the editors of Wikipedia, Wikidata, do not like SEO consultants, digital marketers, or any of that wording. Why? Because we manipulate everything, we break everything, we blow everything up. You cannot call yourself that name. And you see... Brian Dean and all the other guys do not have that. So I had a conversation with Jason Bernard. Um, now, Jason's big into the knowledge graph stuff, talks about it all the time. That's his thing. And he was saying, basically, I went, I mean, Jason, what's this musician shit? Like, what, what, what's going on here? Um, and Jason used to be a musician. And he said SEOs are not deemed noteworthy enough to, to, to have a knowledge panel. And, you know, but people hate them and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to need to call yourself something else. So I'm sitting there going, what the hell else can I call myself? Like, I've never done anything else. Jason did have a music background. Um, so I was like, it can be the entrepreneur thing or I'll try something else. So 
I was messing around and I was looking at Jason's website again, uh, calicube.pro. Now, on here, it basically, you can look at the different kind of locations. You can look at person or cooperation knowledge uh, panels and all that kind of stuff. Now, basically what Jason's tool does is pulls in the kind of entities that you need to be listed on. So I'm looking around Jason's tool and I'm looking at uh, Wikipedia. I can't get on there really without a Wikidata. And there's also a Wikipedia story. I'm blacklisted. Google. Dot com, IMDB, Crunchbase, LinkedIn, Fandom, Forbes, blah, 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 blah. I'm on them all apart from IMDB. So I'm like, right, what the fuck is IMDB and how am I going to get on there? Now, IMDB, for anyone who doesn't know, is the Internet Movie Database, which I am on now. Um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to explain the story of how I got on there. Now, this is all just That's to try awesome. and think fucking knowledge panel. Anyway, um, so if we look at the, the stuff that I'm known for, um, where the hell is it all? I want the full list. Filmography. There was one down here, The Naked Man. I was a naked man in a film called The Rain Has Stopped. Now, this one isn't actually true. Now, there was a guy called Craig... No, so basically, to get on IMDb, you need to be in the end screen credits of a TV series or film, or whatever it's going to be. Um, now, I went on to IMDb, and I'm looking for a way in, and I seen there was a dude called Craig Campbell who was in this film, and he hadn't claimed his profile. So I claimed the profile, and it asked me to upload my passport and so on, uh, and it all went through, verified. Uh, so I left it a few months, um, and I put in some bullshit up the top here. Um, you know, Craig's a successful businessman, blah, 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 who used to be an actor. So <laughs> that was all good and well. It stuck until I get a Facebook message one day. Um, so this woman slips into the DMs. Um, Craig, are, are you an actor? Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, who's asking? Uh, and the woman said, oh, you know, I've got a, a partner with the same name as you, and he was in this film. The, the rain has stopped, and somehow your face is attributed to his IMDb profile. And I'm like, shit. My, my fucking knowledge panel's going to go. So anyway, I blocked her. Um, <laughs> and I started to shit myself. I'm like, I am he's going to go. Um, you know, I, I have to do something else. I have to be in something. And um, I seen this series, crimelordseries.com, um, which is a local crime series based in Glasgow. And it had a support the series tab on there. And you can contribute for perks. So you can donate and you can get your name put in the credits for uh, 25 quid or whatever it's going to be. Um, now, in this one, there was actually a phone part in it. Um, and it, 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 yeah, it was yeah something like this here, which is sold out. So I was like, fuck, you know, I can actually be in this, get a picture of me being in it and consolidate my IMDb profile. So reached out, got, the, <laughs> got in there, um done the, uh, so I spoke to the guy and he's like, oh man, I've just been looking at your YouTube and all this stuff, like uh, does it have to be a phone part? Can you not just be in it um, for like a couple of lines? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, this, is, this is brilliant. This is a great this, story. I love this. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so a thumbs up um, and uh, done done what I was asked to do. And the guy's like, are you sure like you've never acted before, um, and I'm like genuinely not. Like I, I just don't care. Like I don't give a mm. fuck. Um, I, that's my my whole attitude. Um, he's like you're really good. You you know do you want a bigger part in the next one? You kill a guy and do this, do that. <laughs> um, and and that's where um that whole situation came from. So if anyone thinks I was ever going to change career um, into acting, um, you know that certainly is not the case. It was all to make sure that I was able to consolidate the IMDb profile, have proof that I was actually in something, and you can see all the... the straight. Data. You know, I was in four... I think I'm going to be in five episodes in total. We're filming... I, I, I'm not allowed to see, actually, but no. the, the next one's going to be my last one, uh, and I might die. That's about all I'm going to see. Yeah. Uh, would, but, would you consider doing other other ones as well? I mean, you, it sounds like you enjoyed it, so, uh, you know, is, is it something you think you continue, or are you just going to just leave it there and just just do it for the seo 
Nah, so the, the the funny part is after that I've been offered quite a lot of other work. Um so I've been offered, and again, I can't see anything because I've signed an NDA, but I'm going to be in a Netflix series next year. Um wow. off the back of that. And I have also been signed up by an agent um to do acting. Um don't know why, but apparently the 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 Crane Lord series people think it's really funny and 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 all that stuff. So there there might be something out there. Yeah, I'm, watch watch the space. Yeah, awesome, love it. Am I ever going to be a full time actor? Nah, I, I I love what I do and 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 make good money doing what I do. But again, like like anything, you know, you meet people, you do mm-hmm. something, and you just don't know where it ends. Um, yeah, you know, and you go down that rabbit hole, and it's been. A new learning curve for me. I've learned some things, met some great people, um, and and I think that's what life's all about for me now is just new experiences, new things, um, and yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's a that. that's a great story. There's a few people uh, commenting as well. Somebody here, Justin, saying it's the funniest story, isn't it? SEO now he's <laughs> now you're an actor. I think it's it is it is a great story. Did you you must have got some good backlinks out of it then? Is that work worthwhile? <laughs> that point of view was that the what, what's what's the benefit that you see from getting the knowledge panel as an seo you know what 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 are you what are, what are you getting from that um i mean it's more traffic you know you're trying to build a brand and you're taking up your, your own brand cert if you like um, and i think that's what jason bernard is always harping on about when he talks about it mm-hmm. you're taking up that full right hand side of that page um yeah. now what why would you want to do that the, these things can help attribute to social media verification they can help you with PR. Now, when it comes to PR and backlinks and, and everything else, like we, we all know where to get backlinks from, where to buy them from, you know, citations, buy mm-hmm. guest posts, blah, 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 blah. But we need something else into our arsenal um, when it comes to backlinks, and that, that comes in the form of PR. Now, let me take you, for example, Simon. Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing your, your local SEO thing mm-hmm. and, and, and yep. you're starting. Now, if you wanted to get something in the Daily Mail, what are you going to do? Like, what, what story are you going to tell? How creative can you be talking about shitty local SEO? It's not a cool story, mm-hmm. news mm-hmm. It's 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 crap. You know, it, it's just that it is what it is. And I mean that for me as well. You know, I've always tried to get more PR. And you're just like, mm-hmm. what shit can mm-hmm. I say? Um, you know, and I'll tell that other story, actually, the Nigel Farage story in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, that's why I released that Nigel Farage story, um, just purely to get those links Mm-hmm. Um, and the PR from it, it was nothing else because everything else we do, GMB, citations, pin drops, mass page, all of that stuff's just, it's just never, never. It's, it's not newsworthy, is it? I mean, nah. it's not going to be something that you're going to put in the national press. It's, you've got to have an angle on it and, you know, a, a GMB being posted is not going to, not going to cut it, is it? Nah, so that's where you have to think outside the box. And, and for me, I want to be able to do that and, and get the PR side of things, get social media verification, you know, build my brand up. You know, that's where I'm at. Not not in terms of I don't need backlink, a certain amount of backlinks. There's other aspects to it. But, of course, triggering, triggering the knowledge panel is a challenge for me. Um, and one last thing I would say on that is there's an American singer and a Canadian comedian, both with the same name as me. So if you Google Craig Campbell... Mm. The one that's most prominent, I think, is the American singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's got, just below that, me and the other guy. So I want to be the most well-known Craig Campbell. <laughs> and doing that against two people who have a fairly high profile um, is difficult. But I want to show people that it's possible. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen people doing it as, like, becoming an author and writing your own book and self-publishing it. And, you know, if you get it on Amazon, you know, that can be a route to getting you seen as a, as a knowledge panel person so of, of note that was another part of the story so at right. when i went through jason bernard's if you go to amazon and put my name in there's literally a big long-winded hmm. uh, pbn post that I, I basically made an amazon book out of yeah. i tried yeah. every trick in the book to to try and get into that knowledge panel but the imdb really was the, the powerful one because i think everyone's doing the author thing um yeah. Not everyone's doing the the kind of mm. actor thing. So uh, they are now, though. Um, <laughs> final thing on that, you know, that Crime Lord series was then inundated with guys trying to buy IMDb, IMDb lights yeah, uh, yeah. and phone parts to do the same thing. So, um, it, well, yeah, it was quite a cool story. Um, but, again, uh, you know, there's multitude 
of different benefits, including the PR, the mm-hmm. social media verification, uh, and, and you know, trying to, to to build a brand and take up more of that landscape more than anything. Yeah, does that have you got a, tw- a Twitter blue tick? Does that help you get that as well? Is that going to follow through after that, or do you have to do more on, on Twitter yeah. to make that work? You have to do more. Um, I've got the Facebook verification, yeah. um, Twitter, um. It is a bit more difficult, um, depending on where you work and all that kind of stuff. But uh, and Instagram's fairly solid just now. But those <coughs> those are ones that I'm working on, um, and hopefully I will achieve them in the not too distant future. But PR is the biggest thing behind the blue ticks. Uh, they're looking for you to be newsworthy, noteworthy, um, and are looking at what you've been uh, in in terms of high profile press publications, not your Twenty pound things off of legit yeah. or something like that. You know, it's got to be a Daily Mail and hmm. uh, all of that kind of stuff. And that, in fact, I'm going to start sharing my screen again, if you don't mind. And I'll just share. People have probably seen this story a million times, but I'll just briefly touch on it. Um, Raj, well-known uh, UK politician. Uh, Nigel Farage let his domain go um, and I grabbed it um, and pointed it to Greta Thunberg's website um, and it made the Daily Mail and a whole bunch of other stuff there um, and again good solid article in the Daily Mail um, and it made some other high profile publications uh, which again is just good for your brand. There's no such thing as bad news, um, and picking on someone like Nigel Farage is where it's at. You know, in terms of getting it in the press, you know, because he's obviously a high-profile figure. Um, so I was able to get the Daily Mail and a whole bunch of other stuff just based on that one story. Because as I say, um, PR plays a big part in it, and uh, Nigel Farage is as high-profile as they come um, in terms of me being able to to get exposure in the the press. So, so was, how how'd you go about getting Nigel Farage's domain name then? Um so <laughs> it was a dot co dot uk um, so there's a slightly different process from a dot com at the moment. Um I know that is going to change uh, in not too distant future. But um when a domain drops it goes into a suspended state for 60 days. Um so Nigel Farage could have reclaimed that at any point during that 60 day redemption period and uh, he didn't um, and then basically you've got a drop catcher so all of these guys with all their nominated account are ping 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 because Nigel Farage gets so many bloody backlinks going to that website from every PR under the sun um, yeah. so it, it was well in demand but if you know a good drop catcher um, who's the right setup then you're able to grab that um, and, and that's what happened and uh, I repurposed his website, so it's the same old website. Um, and actually, guys call me out. Um, <laughs> the guy write a blog post about me because uh, I've had this for a few years. It was when Nigel was in his peak, um, and I had the guy trying to call me out. He's like, "Oh, Craig Campbell is a bad scamster. He's trying to pass off as Nigel Farage." And I'm like, "Fuck off, dude! Like, what? What sort of shit is this?" And the guy's like. Yeah, you're not going to do anything about it. I'm going to throw you under the bus. And I'm like, mate, you ain't throwing me under the bus. You're actually shedding me in a good light. Um, but when that guy released that, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to tell the papers and, and get newspaper articles out of it as well. Um, but I'd, I'd only done the Nigel Farage thing to tell stories at conferences, really. Um, and for the past few years, um, it's been one of my main stories, um, talking about expired domains and, and the value of backlinks on something like Nigel Farage. Um, and I always just used it as a demonstration thing. It's got the same old garbage on there. In fact, I'll share my screen again. Sorry, Daryl or Simon, whoever's got to keep um, no putting problem. this up. Um, but Nigel, whoop, Nigel's website looked really bad when it was up there. And that's how shit it really was. That book actually is my Amazon affiliate link. Uh, the two books, um, but what I used to do <coughs> on here um, with the news and media, um, when I used to post stuff on here, um, I used to basically just grab stuff uh, from YouTube, 
So Nigel Farage, the video's gone for that one, but Nigel Farage used to obviously be in a lot of YouTube videos, and I would just basically go into this website here, rev.com, and basically get it transcribed. I think it was a it was a dollar at the time. It's one dollar twenty-five now, but basically they would convert that audio into text, and I would just slap it up there. Um, and the Nigel Farage website. Um, let me just show you. It still does get a reasonable amount of traffic. I think it's about 10,000 plus. Um, Raj, amp.co.uk. I love the idea you've got the, the, the Amazon affiliate link on his books. That's just brilliant. Um, so it's not so great now. It kind of dies off at certain times of the year when he's not doing anything. Always dies off getting into November, December, believe it or not. And then it picks up when he's talking shit at the start of a year. And that's the same thing year on year um, with this guy. Um, so in terms of traffic, it's it's actually crap just now. It's only got a few hundred, but it normally is several thousand. But um, it's, it's still a DR28. He's still getting backlinks. Don't, don't know why. Um, and it's still got a whole bunch of referring domain names um, from... The Independent and BBC.com, Business Insider, Fox News. There's just so many. It's it's un, unbelievable why he would let such a... Well, I, I, I've obviously spoke to, to Nigel um, in the past. He wants it back. Um, and it was a guy where he had a guy in control of his online presence and he fell out with the guy. Uh, and the guy buggered off, and but the guy didn't take his website down or anything, and then it just expired one time, and um, the guy just couldn't be bothered renewing it. And uh, Nigel had his legal team trying to figure out who had it for a number of years, and uh, yeah, that that's the story behind Nigel Farage. So it was quite a cool story, um, again to tell people. And as I say, it, it was very easy to implement and. I've not really utilised it to the best of my ability. Could have done something more with that domain name, possibly, but because it's a high-profile politician who probably is hated more than he's liked, um, I'm not sure you could have turned that into anything else, um, like an Amazon affiliate or anything like that. So it was a difficult one um, in terms of what I could have done with it. I think what I like about these stories, though, is it shows the creativity. As you say, it's thinking outside the box, thinking differently. It's not necessarily going on a, a standard path for, for getting links or promoting yourself. So I think it's uh, it's great, great uh, inspiration just to look out for a different angle on something. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, you're a domain guy, aren't you? You uh, you like uh, looking out for, for domains. You need to uh, get one of those yourself. Next Nigel Farage one that comes up or something. Similar. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Craig, um, about you know uh, three hundred one redirects uh, with with expired and aged domains. As you are sort of involved in that business, do you feel that that is as strong as it was, let's say, five or six years ago, with the with the, the boosting um, effect? It, it's a difficult one. Uh, I'd probably yeah. see. I'd probably see no, it's not as good as it was, um, you know, five or six years ago. However, I think for me, it, it still works relatively well in most cases, not every case, because there's some that I follow the same process and shit just doesn't happen. However, I think yeah. there's a certain part of this project or, or when you do this, this process, if you like, that people often miss out. People think you can just go and buy an expired domain name and just redirect it on, and boom, everything's going to work. Right. That, that's not how the internet works. Now, the part of the process that people are missing out on is you need to repurpose that domain name first and foremost, create all the old URLs. Now, why? Because most of the backlinks are already triggering a 404 or, or whatever it's going to be, the link from, say, the independent to your expired mm -hmm. domain name. You need to repurpose that to get that flown again. You need to make sure that that stuff gets indexed again. And if it doesn't get indexed, there's no value being passed. So when I get an expired domain name, I normally throw it up, leave it for a few months, start to see if some of the old rankings come back. 
Um, now, in certain instances, the rankings won't come back, either because someone's stolen the content already and got their version indexed. Um, so I'll need to do something, but it doesn't matter what I need to do. I need to make sure that my URL gets crawled and indexed. Otherwise, those links don't kick in and there's no value being passed. So for me, doing that properly is the most important thing. Um, and there's some nuances in there, like someone may have stolen your content, so your URLs are not going to get indexed. So you may have to put out some new content on there to get it indexed to then do your, your redirects from there. Um, <coughs> so there's certain little things and parts of that process that, that people don't like to to do because they're, they're probably too lazy in a lot of cases. And as I said earlier, I'm a lazy guy as well. I want the shortest possible cut. Um, but for me, I've recovered a lot of expired domain names um, relatively well. Um, I'm not saying they pass the same power as they did five or six years ago. I still think when a domain expires, there, there's something that, that, that you know, a, a certain element of power um, is, is not going to be there. And that's why I probably prefer age domains over expired in most cases. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. I, I think I, you, you, oh, sorry, Daryl. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't, find my, I couldn't find my unmute button. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just adding people to the prize wheel too. Um, so yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, if you have a domain that has something built on it, and um, you know, I, I really think that you know, just to hire someone on Fiverr, if you've got a decent domain name, to just build up a real quick website, uh, just so that you have some content on there. I mean, even if it's you know something um you would be surprised at how much domain authority that starts to pick up over time wouldn't you agree so there's a yeah especially if it's got content for a while like you know listen you know once those backlinks and stuff kick in um you know you, you things start to happen and i know guys that, yeah. that do very yeah. well from it and guys who just don't want to pay the money for an age domain name they, they, they want the cheaper option and um, you can definitely get some good results and good power. Why not utilize the power that someone else has built, you know, five, six years ago and, and, and use it now? Um, it, it's crazy not to give yourself a head start, really, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I totally, totally agree with you. Now, um, a little bit about your um, YouTube channel. You you want to promote your YouTube channel a little bit because I, I know about it, but maybe some of the people watching don't know about what you talk about on a weekly basis on your YouTube channel and how do they find yes. you? So, in fact, I'll share my screen again um, and I'll just show you everything that you can get on there. I think a lot of people don't realize the amount of content I've got on there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So my YouTube channel, you can find if you just search for Craig Campbell SEO. Um, now, on there, there's a whole bunch of playlists. Um, there's there's actually close to 700 videos on here. Um, now, you have anything from how to grow your business with virtual assistants, easy steps to better on page, WordPress tools, plugins, and hacks, how to build a knowledge panel. So there's six videos talking you through all of the mistakes I made and all of the, the, the shit that I've done that I've just explained on there. Um, there's literally everything across digital marketing um, on here. Um, you know, I've got client calls, which I just give people examples of stupid client calls, local SEO, <laughs> um, you know, with, with, with some of the local stuff that works, link building, um, black hat stuff, CTR manipulation, um, you know, there's all sorts on there. There's, there's over 100, uh, well, sorry, 82 podcasts, um, including uh, yourself, Daryl, private blog network stuff, best SEO tools, Q&A sessions. I do two regular live Q&A sessions, one with Mike Pierce and Brad Mabry, and the second one with Mr. Chris Palmer, um, who is um, also a very, very interesting character um, in this space. Um, so I, I love Chris. I think, you know, he's got the creative mindset that, that you know, a lot of people, I think, don't have. You know, he's just a devious, just a weird way of thinking. And that's why I love yeah. 
you know, Holly. Yeah, Star, Chris is a great Chris guy. Palmer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> They, they're just wired up. They different yeah. a different way. They just think differently, and and uh, I love it. Uh, you know, and I mean that with the greatest respect. So that's my YouTube channel. There's a whole bunch of stuff on there, and a whole bunch of stuff being added all the time. I spend a lot of time on your YouTube. I gotta say, Craig, I really do. I catch Chris all the time. I I catch um, Brad and uh, Mike there, and. Um, and then you've got your little shorts you're doing, like little short snippets. And you've done a lot this year. Like I've been watching and there's just a ton of content coming out um, from there. It's, again, I think very often on YouTube, we, we I'm, I've not been using shorts a lot. So the shorts thing is a new thing for me. Um, repurposing mm -hmm. some of the smaller snippets from every video that I've made, um, you know, it makes for some great content. And hopefully leads people into the context. I think a lot of people look at it and go, uh, you know, it's maybe there's not a lot of golden nuggets in there because I know there's a lot of people that talk a lot of shit on on uh, YouTube and, and, you know, it's long-winded. I try and make my videos as condensed as possible and just say, right, guys, here's how you fucking steal a GMB, um, an unverified <laughs> GMB. You know, here it is, boom, and it's done in like two and a half minutes. I don't, I don't need to tell people anything else other than, you know, straight to the point, actionable tips. Um, and that's the way I try and keep it. Yes. I mean, 700 videos is a lot of content. I mean, how long is it taking you to build that up? You know, I mean, it must be, it's not more than months, must be years. How, how long have you taken to, to do all that? Um, so at the start of COVID 2020, now I've had, if someone goes away and checks my YouTube channel, it's been registered since 2016. Mm. But it had one or two videos on it and at the start of covid when the the speaking gigs and stuff dried up um i decided you know i was bored and i still wanted to talk to people and network with people and um, so i started doing a few random q a sessions then i had chris palmer come to me do you want to do this do you want to do that um and i, I just started doing more and more content now on top of that during covid i had a lot of online courses that i had sold previously um and I basically, during the COVID period, just said, fuck it, people are hungry to learn. I'm just going to upload all of my courses onto YouTube as well um, and just give it all away for free, um, which I've done. So all of that stuff is combined in, in those 700 videos. So it wouldn't be fair to, to say that in the last, you know, nearly two years, that all 700 videos, there's probably 200 of them that, that were from my courses. Um, but the rest of them, I've probably still done about 500, you know, regularly, <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm recording videos and putting them out and uh, the podcast thing as well. Um, I wanted to try a podcast and see how it went. And I, I, I've got to nearly a hundred of those. Um, and they, they all form, form part of the, the videos on there as well. And I thoroughly enjoyed getting the the podcast done and i'm going to come back with the podcast as well i just i'm not going to keep doing seo content though i'm going to try and broaden it to more business mm -hmm. uh, and, and and a wider range of digital marketing because trying to do i don't need another five guys on talking about what daryl does like daryl said it and, and that's it we don't need to to get another guy and another guy and another guy to say the same old thing because that's boring and i was always like how what can I do um, to try and keep people interested? So I'm just going to try and go for a, a slightly wider audience, um, business-related um, and other digital platforms. And they, you'll know as well, Simon, um, I bought your Pinterest course. There's, there's certain, yeah, that's right. places that, um, certain places that we can still get traffic from that I'm just not utilising that well. I don't understand that well. Um, you know, and I've always just looked at Pinterest and some shitty platform that i don't understand and i keep hearing people in the industry oh man i get so much from pinterest so much traffic to be had there and i'm just like it's about time i give myself a shake and figure out what the hell's going on <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's interesting i i put putting the course together with anna cordelia who's the real sort of a pinterest expert we, we did a, a course together and um yeah i was amazed actually just researching at the amount of just sort of organic traffic that's just coming through and people 
pinning stuff, sharing stuff. It was uh, it was amazing. I've even seen people using it for local local SEO. You'd have thought actually it'd be sort of maybe more generic. And I previously I have to admit saw it more like a kind of a social media platform kind of a thing. But it is a hundred percent search engine, you know. And I think it does it does drive traffic, and people do use it for searching for inspiration. You know, um, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's definitely worth looking into, and uh, even even for local, as I say, is it's definitely driving traffic. I, I did some test campaigns, and I was having people, you know, within an hour, there were two hundred views, and I had somebody pin it and save it, and it's like this is, you know, amazing, really. So yeah, definitely worth looking into. It definitely is, but also I've got another story for you. First, um, it's just a very quick one for you, Daryl. If you like domain names, you'll like this. Um, let me I share my screen. Names, yeah. <laughs> um, don't, get, don't get him started. He's got his own slot later on talking about domains. Don't get him started. No. We, we all I, like domains, but Daryl Daryl loves domains. Yeah. So this isn't actually my story. It's a friend's, but um, the the story um, is insane. So Benidorm.com was um, bought by a friend um, years ago. Um, quite a high profile domain name, Benidorm.com. It was going to be. Uh, a hotel affiliate and, and a whole bunch of other holiday affiliate stuff going on. Um, and this guy desperately wanted it. That's his job. He's a demeanor. So he's like looking at it, tried to buy it. The guy wanted obscene amounts of money for it. Um, and he's like, nah, I can't afford it. So anyway, <clears throat> so he finds out that the company or the guy um, that, that owns this actually went bust. Um, so my friend's like, fuck. Um, so he went into who is, um, and he's looking up what's going on and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he looked at it and he thought, fuck, uh, you know, it doesn't expire for another 10 years. So even though this bandit went bust, he had renewed his domain for 10 years. So my friend's like, Jesus, that's a bloody long wait. What the sh That's shit. You know, he was just looking for any loophole to get this domain name. And he scrolled down. And he looked down here. Now, obviously, it's different now. Um, you know, they've got the the, 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 it's, the kind of stuff's hidden. Um, but at the time, it wasn't. And he looked here at the, the registrar email. And it was, uh, uh, you know, info at whatever the domain name was. Now, it wasn't, this, it wasn't Benidorm.com. It was another email address. So he looked at that and he thought, fuck, you know, that one expires in two months' time. Um, waited for it to expire, waited for it to expire, grabbed it when it expired, went in here, uh, sorry, went in, reset up the email address, and from there, he was able to transfer out. So he was able to then log in, forgot my password, got a password reset, and he was able to transfer Benidorm.com out of that person's account and into his. Now, here is where it gets really creative. He was he had figured out what he was going to do, However, he did speak to a lawyer um, because obviously that's borderline criminal. Um, spoke to <laughs> yeah. a lawyer. Now, if a company goes bust, now this isn't the UK. I can't speak for any other country. Um, in the UK, if a domain goes bust, if a company goes bust, they don't have any legal recourse over that's my domain name or anything like that. So it was a free-for-all. So he was able to use that loophole because if your company goes bust, everything goes with it, including the domain names. You don't have a say. You cannot say that's my domain name and I'm going to sue your ass. You've stolen it. It's gone. Um, so he spoke to a lawyer. Lawyer said, do what you need to do. It's not illegal. Um, and he grabbed that domain name, um, put it up and sold it for a lot of money thereafter. So just... It, a little bit of creativity if you're looking at domain names and i'm not suggesting you do anything illegal but that company went bust um and it was on a 10 year um registration and he wasn't prepared to wait 10 years so he came up with another way to make sure he got that and it was still legal the guy did contact and say you've stolen my domain name the guy's like i've not stolen anything it's, it's mine now uh, and the guy didn't have a leg to stand on legally um, to to be able to claim that domain name back. So probably a bit of a dodgy trick, but I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, I've, never, I, yeah, I've never done that. <laughs> I've never done that, but uh, interesting way. It's a little bit like the GMB grabs, uh, a little bit how people sometimes can grab a GMB. Like, 
um, doing some backwards stuff. Um, interesting. Yeah, you know what? Um, we I built a tool called Domain Kicks, um, and I'm I tell you what, Craig, I really appreciate that you came on here. I'm going to give you a lifetime of Domain Kicks, um, but the way that software works is, and maybe we can uh, I can do a private demo for you. But it, it has sort of a um, system where you have a dream list and you can put all of the domains on the dream list that you may be interested in getting like a Dropcat service, but you don't have to pay for each one. You just put as many on there as you want and it checks several times a day and it'll send you an email and the minute that it becomes available uh, that it notices. So it might you know, be a few times like, you know, four or five times a day that it's checking. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different than the normal drop catch services. I mean, they, they have other tools that are like more instantaneous, but there's a lot of people not, not, it's a stealthy way because you're not putting it out there that you're looking for that domain. You're just sort of saying this would be a good dream if I could get my hands on this domain. Um, and I've picked up some with that. I've picked up some with the way that this, um, this tool works. So, um, if you get a chance and you want to watch, uh, later today, I'll have a thing on here on the live, uh, webathon, uh, at what time is that? Um, about one o'clock today, Eastern time, it'll be six o'clock your time. Uh, but we'll show, show you how that tool works, but I'm going to give you a lifetime, uh, for just coming on here with us. I really appreciate, uh, your passion for everything that you talk about on your channel, um, the, you know, you've given me some great opportunities and I really, really appreciate you, um, for that. I appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to it. Like tools like that, you know, is what it's all about. And um, if you can do You'll that, have fun within, with it. how many, how many times have you looked for a domain and then it's gone? You forgot, like something came up, you got busy and then boom, it's right. gone. You're going, fuck. Um, you know, I've done yeah. that so many times. So, um, if that can prompt you notify you um, and, and you can keep an eye on it um with a sensible tool then that sounds interesting so i'll definitely yeah. watch that um later on yeah we're but, we're adding a lot of things to it like appraisals and like you know backlink information and things like that so that'll be coming in probably 22 um but it's a great tool that we built just to find domains ourselves uh we on our sunday live show i don't know if you've ever seen but we give away a domain every um every time we're going to give away domains today as well um as part of uh, the little giveaways but i'm able to find really great domains that are worth you know uh name worth over twenty thousand dollars sometimes and so yeah. we just give these away you know is a, is a way to uh you know it's it's just an automated uh appraisal but uh if you look at um you know some of these branding like uh brand paws um you know um uh squad help and things like that. You see that some of those domains and Flippa, you see some of these domains going for several thousands of dollars. If they're brandable, they have good brand names. Uh, so I really, I'm passionate about it because I love branding. I love how a domain can literally build an empire uh, for eight bucks, uh, one, you know, per year, you know, it's just, to me, I just love them. I... Yeah. I'm a big fan as well. And um, not going to lie. <laughs> probably spent a lot way too much money on them over the years i would hate to see what i and do you know the worst thing i would say daryl and again i want to know if you do this but how many domains have you bought and never actually done anything with like 90 percent of my domains i never get around to doing anything with i just buy them yeah and yeah I'm ship them <laughs> gear. um do you get that oh, as well I or am i yeah, yeah, yeah. I what I do is I put them on after Nick and I put them on Dan.com and just uh, I let them set there uh, for put a price tag, you know, between five hundred dollars and like ten thousand dollars. And just if they just sell and then I don't I figure it this way. I'm not paying for any domains so I can be a domain hoarder because I sell enough throughout the year to pay for all of my renewals. So it, it's, it's easy that way. <laughs> Um, so. yeah, now as long as you can pay for it at the other end, that's the main thing. Yeah, we had some questions came in. Um, do you mind answering a few questions from everybody? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, all right. The uh, first question is from Rake SEO This is what is your favorite method to rebuild an expired domain? 
I mean, I'm not sure what you mean by method. It's just like repurposing it. I, I think it's I don't know if it was one, one of you guys said earlier. It doesn't have to cost a lot. Just get someone cheap to throw something up there. The template is not important at the the, the rebuild stage. Um, what is more important that it's getting crawled and indexed. So I just pay someone to go grab whatever content they can that was previously on there. Make sure the URLs are exactly the same. The domain. I don't really care about. People have this obsession with repurposing it exactly the same way it was before. That part's not important. The URL structure is important. The content's important. Mm -hmm. From there, if that starts to get any kind of traction, um, you know, it starts to to get some of the keywords coming back, and and uh, you know, the metrics start to kick in and everything else, then I'm going to then make a decision on whether. I redirect that or repurpose that as an affiliate website of some kind. Um, then I will look at getting a better template on it. And I will then come up with a content strategy and hit it quite hard aggressively with a content strategy and then start to build links at it. So I think <coughs> it's as simple as that. Don't overcomplicate it. I think too many people try and overcomplicate this rebuilding of an expired domain name. Um, doesn't have to cost you a lot of money throw it out, see what happens with it, and then adapt from there and, and you know, deal with what you've got to deal with. Yeah, I mean, Craig, I, I've taken it from what you said. You, you're advising people not just to do the 301 redirect, which is obviously doesn't take any effort at all. You just send send it over. You, you're you saying take a little bit more effort than that, but don't overcomplicate it. So get, get a site up, put it on WordPress, put some content out that is similar or the same as before make sure the url structure is fine don't only 301 re redirect it but you don't need to have a whole new website design and, and make it look too fancy you just you're just getting the content up so there's a live site yeah yeah exactly i cool. I, I will never ever just do a 301 redirect yeah ever. okay yeah that's good advice yeah cool, cool. okay cool. Got a few, other uh, a few more there, comments think, Darryl, um... yeah Mr. Palmer is an interesting guy. I can totally agree with that. I love Chris. I think he's a great dude. Yeah, he's and, a great guy. Uh, he's a very authentic guy. Really do appreciate what he does. And he he shares everything. He puts it all out there on his uh, YouTube channel. So if you guys, if you've never seen Chris Palmer, just look up Chris Palmer SEO on uh, YouTube and you'll, you'll see some really uh, great content. Uh, he's got, you know, all kinds of, ideas and he's working with click-through rate manipulation and all these kinds of things but uh he'll also keep it basic for you so you can uh, understand what's what's going on so. yeah chris does a coaching group i'm in his coaching group and there's some great value there as well just like a weekly session two three hours worth of uh, q a and as he shares it all as well so if you want to uh, ask about chris's group coaching reach out to him and he'll uh, he'll help you out as well he's got a seo mastermind group he's working on he's got all sorts of projects so yeah definitely a good guy to to reach out to for sure. Absolutely. Rita, uh, Rita, Rita uh, says nowadays the best domains to get are NFT, and a meta, and cryptos. Now, that what do you think about those kinds of like fads and things like that that come through? Would you invest, like if you could get a decent crypto, meta, or NFT domain, would you go for it and try to sell it for the highest bidder? <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, again, it's a it's a tough one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of any of that stuff. <coughs> I see it all as gambling, um, as far as I'm concerned. However, when there's a fad, um, there's money to be had. So, is it wise to try and grab a good domain name in those niches and resell it? A hundred percent, because so many people are into it. Just because I'm not a fan of NFT, crypto, and and so on. Um, mm -hmm doesn't mean that you can't make money on them. I just don't personally like crypto. I, I, as I say, I see it as a gamble. I've been there, I've tried it, you know, been up, I've been down, up, down. And I don't want to sit <laughs> in and wonder, you know, if my money's going up or down. I just need a stable bloody money going up all the time. Um, so um, I think, you know, NFT is something that potentially um, is going to be a lot bigger in the future. I think... You know, giving people the ability um, to, you know, artists and, and creators and creative people um, to be able to make some more money um, through the NFT setup um, is going to be big. But again, I think it's a very quick fad, which is going to jump up and then it's going yeah. to crash 
and then people right. will understand what it really is and it'll crawl back up again. Um, so I think NFT is a great thing, but like crypto, like everything else, people go gung-ho at the start and jump into something they don't understand. With anything like that, you really need to sit down and really become, you know, into it. And, and I don't have time to be into it because I'm more into SEO. So I think for me, yeah. um, I, I'm, I, you know, NFT or crypto or, or go and find a new tool to play with, I'm down that new tool um, and automation all day long. So they just don't have a personal interest in me, but money can be made. But I don't own any uh, personally. Speaking of automation, um, what is what is the sexiest automation thing out there for content at this point in 2021? You got one? No, but I've got something I'll show you in a minute. Um, Simon will have seen this um, at the uh, new market, but I will share it with the audience in a second. But in terms of automation, uh, in terms of content, I'm not a huge fan of, of AI and all these kind of things. Um, I do think that the, the quality is average, but I do think that Google will you know, slam that um, if they're not already slamming it. I think to, in terms of future-proofing your business, there's nothing that we can do to automate content right into a high standard at the moment. And you can spin it, you can do this, you can do all this other stuff. Um, and it, it's different, Daryl, from mass page. You know, I think what you do in terms of automation is different from what you would do in a competitive space because you're doing that in a massive scale and you're going to get, by law of averages, weaker areas and everything. And I think what you do in terms of automation, I'm not dismissing that in the slightest, but... I think, you know, in general, in competitive spaces, automated content is just simply not going to work. Um, end of story. Um, that's just so, in my opinion. So where, where do we hire, uh, given that, if you were to outsource it, would you get your own private VAs and teach them what you want done? Or would you go through a platform that has some uh, vetted um, writers, content writers? I've tried everything. Trying to find a content writer is not easy. Um, you know, you can try native UK, US speakers. Um, I personally would look to somewhere like South Africa, where they've got a much lower cost of living, but their native language is English. Um, for me, that I've had some success there. But any time I've ever had a content writer, I have hired them um, and trained them up. Um, I wouldn't go to a platform as such because... Every, anyone can be on there. You know, I try and get someone who's just got basic writing ability and then give them the process. Now, when I say I don't like automation, that doesn't mean I don't like tools in general. Can you use automation as parts of the process? Yes, but it needs to be heavily edited. Uh, and that's where that content writer comes in. So um, I think the biggest thing I can say is, one, uh, you, you will always go through content writers. They, they have a a window um, and then they burn out because they're just writing repetitive bullshit for you. So you need to be right. able to yeah. hire and fire and hire and fire. Um, and I think you have to nail down those processes, whether that's using Surfer, Page Optimizer Pro, Phrase, tools like that. You've also got tools like RYTE, right? Um, you know, mm -hmm. where you can put in a keyword and it will give you a kind of FAQ style content and, and, and ideas and everything else. So I think you can utilize a lot of the automation, the tools and everything else just to give you ideas and give you a kind of templated job to then go right, then run it through your surfer phrase and stuff like that. And then the end product should be, you know, after it's been edited and tweaked and run through Grammarly or whatever, then you should have something that's close to decent content. So Everyone's got a slightly different process, but I just think there has to be a human being involved in there, like, you know, that understands the tools, and that's where the training side comes into to play. Yeah, so let's say, for instance, we let automation reword something in a way that breaks normal comprehension, right? Normal meaning. And you're like, okay, an average user finds that, and they spot it right away. Do you think, just as asking your opinion, do you think when Google sees that on your website, it's a major strike against you? Yeah. Okay. If you can't that's why copy. spinning doesn't work. In your your opinion, that's why spinning doesn't work, right? Yeah. I, I just think Google 
can understand content. It's got, um, you know, it, it's natural language processing. It can understand semantically related keywords. It can understand. Mm -hmm. It's still a machine, but I mm -hmm. think it's understanding of what is crap, you know, illiterate content, if you like, that, that's been spun out and makes no sense. I, I, I think Google can detect that and it will go against you. Okay, absolutely. Um, do you have any questions, uh, Simon? At this point, we, we are no, no more, to... no more questions. Yeah, just uh, we uh, are we doing the giveaway at the on the hour, or are we waiting a little bit later on? I don't know. Well, I think we'll wait. Uh, we'll wait before wait we just past, uh, handshake yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Craig, I, I gotta say, we spent hours working on a promo for you, and we didn't even. We didn't even play it when he came on. So do you mind if we play it for you right now? <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. All right, here we go. We were up all night working on that thing for you. <laughs> Push the button when we're supposed to. I forgot to do it, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, oh dear. Anyway, we, we, at least we shared it now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask some uh, some questions. Obviously, it's Cyber Monday today. Have you got any uh, deals, tips? Have you, is there anything you've seen? Do you, do you think Cyber Monday is a good or a bad thing for the industry? What, what's your what's your view? And have you got any uh, any things to share? Um, so for me, um, I have 60% off of hourly SEO consultancy, which people can get. Um, but, I, you know, this year I decided not to do anything uh, major for Black Friday. Normally I would always release a course of some kind. Mm -hmm. I just get fed up of making courses, to be honest. And and I also don't think Black Friday is what it once was for SEOs. You know, I've had a lot of people in my inbox. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's not been great. It's this, it's that. Uh, and I think maybe, maybe... Black Friday, people have got a bit bored of it. I know people still do okay with it, but it's mm -hmm. not the same as it was three, four years ago, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone is rattling out a course. Everyone's everyone doing it, yeah. Rattling out yeah. a shit-ass tool. And and when I say rattling out, I mean that literally, rattling out any old bullshit. Uh, and I think that's what Black Friday is. It's just bullshit now. Uh, people are literally cobbling old content together and throwing it out and passing it off as a course. Uh, you know, I'm not saying everyone does that, but in general, I, I've I've heard people say, "I'm just going to cobble something together and see what." And we're, we're not launching a course today either, Craig. Mm. So uh, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I I just don't think Black Friday is, is as big as it once was. But out of the the good people I know in the industry, um, I do have a Black Friday SEO deals page in my website. If you just Google Black Friday SEO deals, I think it comes up near the top anyway. Um, but there's a whole bunch of different stuff on there from content, um, from, from link building, coaching. Um, there's some SaaS tools. There's various other bits and bobs on there. I think there's 40 odd things on there. Um, there's there's some guys that are, are, are selling reviews um, on a discount and stuff like that. So... There's a whole bunch of stuff on you, and I try to cobble that together more than anything to to um, basically help the community uh, more than anything because uh, there are still some some great gems out there um, to be had. To be honest, yeah, so, I'm just trying to just trying to get your link up actually. So uh, just give us a second. I'll uh, I'll try and put something uh, in the chat. Hold on. Justin uh, said uh, that we forgot to credit you as an actor on your big intro that we did. <laughs> I should have put <laughs> actor as well. <laughs> Not a very good I'm actor. Gonna... <laughs> I thought it was good. Like the, you know, I didn't see the whole like action, but your your picture with the handgun and the, all that stuff that was fun. At you least you didn't shoot anybody on the set like Alec Baldwin. What's that? Oh, no. That is true. That is true. <laughs> you had an Uzi, didn't you? I mean, I saw you. Were, I think you were on your boat on Lot Lomond, weren't you? There was some of, for some of the scenes, and uh, yeah. you looked very convincing to me. You're, 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 <laughs> we had, we had. You know what? You know what it's like being on here. On anything, you're always going to have someone that doesn't like what you're saying or what you're doing. Um, and and when we had that Uzi and I was shooting, um, there was a whole bunch of guys that that messaged the film director and they're like. 
yeah, that dude's not holding that Uzi properly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but obviously my character was supposed to be a crazy motherfucker that just lifted the Uzi up and started shooting. So um, yeah. you know, it wasn't like I was a trained... You're not special forces. You're FCA, yeah. FCA, not special forces. Exactly. Well, maybe that's the next thing. Who knows? <laughs> but you have to remember, people watch every last little yeah. fucking detail, yeah, yeah. Um, which is uh, yeah. sometimes it's a pain in the ass when they when they try and troll you for stuff like that. But guys, I've got something else I want to share with you anyway. Um, Love it. Cool. Um, so, oh, need to share screen. That would help. Um, share screen. A little bit of automation, which most of you will like um to some degree so uh, linkedin I want to talk a bit about linkedin um now i've got 40 odd thousand followers on linkedin um and we all know that every platform we have has an algorithm of some description um which can hold things back or whatever it's going to be so you'll be able to see when i post something out on linkedin um like this, which has got a link to my YouTube channel, LinkedIn basically puts a hold over it um, and doesn't really show it to a wider audience purely because I'm trying to drive people off of LinkedIn. Um, and sorry for the noise in the background, guys. I think someone's at my door. Um, so but so LinkedIn do not want you posting links to drive people to your YouTube, to your Facebook, to your website, whatever it may be. Um, so the proof, I've got 40,000 followers. I post that every week, and it gets 127 posts in the feed. Now, how does LinkedIn work, and how can we manipulate that? Now, the next post down, I do not try and get people off of the LinkedIn platform. I try to natively use the platform, um, and I just put up some shitty posts about, are you using the Clubhouse app? And it got 134,000 views in the feed and a whole lot of votes, and a whole bunch of interaction, 83 comments, and, and a whole bunch of followers and everything else. Now, <coughs> LinkedIn works purely based on engagement. Now, if, for example, um, say I'm not connected to, to Simon or Daryl, and I post something in LinkedIn, and Simon and Daryl both like it, then that post is likely to be shown to some of their audience. And if someone else likes it, then it's shown to some of that person's audience and so on. And that's what blows these things up and makes it viral. Now, how can we manipulate that stuff? There is an app called LemPod. I'll just put it up on the screen just so that you can see it. Now, mm. LemPod is very, very cheap. Uh, now, it's not your typical pod where you go into some group and say, hey, guys, can you like this or like that? And they might or might not do it. This is forced. A bit like what uh, Simon said earlier with the UK TV licence. It's a forced thing. <laughs> so how it works is <coughs> I go onto LemPod, which I'll show you. It's a Chrome extension. And here's, how it, here's what it does and, and all that kind of stuff. Now, basically, I can paste my LinkedIn um link so i'll just copy link to post i can copy it there i can go down here whoops need to get it back up again and i post that in here boost post boom off it goes now with this platform you've got a marketplace a marketplace full of industry related um, pods. Now, all of the ones I'm in are either business related, digital marketing related, or something very, very close to the niche I operate in. Now, basically, if I want to join something like, um, I don't know, farmer, I'll see if there's a farmer one. In fact, there probably isn't. I'll just do a business related one that I'm not in. Um, What the fuck? Marketplace. Oh, I need to go to the marketplace. That's why. Um, business. And it will show me a whole bunch of the business ones. Um, and it could be some Italian business thing. So I can click on that. 
and it should ask, oh yeah, here it is here, request access and you'll get access. Now, if I request access, it costs me $5 per pod. So I'm not going to join that one, but the pods that I'm in, I'm maybe in um, six or seven different pods. You'll see them there. Maybe slightly more, maybe neither 10. So it probably cost me about 50 bucks a month. Now, what happens when I go in here or what happens when I sign up to this is I am basically agreeing that people can like and comment on my stuff, but I'm also agreeing that my profile will also like and comment on other people's stuff. Now, how it works is essentially you go in, you promote your stuff, and this will tell you all of the members who's going to engage with my stuff. All of them. It will show you that some wow. of the pictures have got loaded up. But I can customize those comments. So when I'm doing it, I can make sure what this dude here says in my profile, I can customize that. I can customize every single person that's in that pod and what they're going to see on my profile. Now, this particular post I've done here ended up in a link, a LinkedIn experts um, Facebook group, and people were going, look at the shit comments on here. Now, when I was doing this, I was only playing around with the pod to see how it worked. And um, <clears throat> and you've obviously got people saying the comments on this post demonstrate that a great deal of engagement on LinkedIn isn't really organic and more about getting noticed. Duh. Um, you know, it's all about getting noticed, but you'll be able to see some of the posts, some of the comments are garbage. What a great post, Craig. It's not great and it looks a bit spammy, but you have the ability to be able to customize those comments and be able to create real engagement from real people, which is going to blow your LinkedIn post out there. Now, that is the main thing. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that when I promote Chris Palmer or, or, or my Q&A session on YouTube with Chris Palmer, it gets no traction. Why is that? Now, you need to think creatively. How am I going to force people from LinkedIn onto my YouTube channel? So that's where you're going to graphically have to come up with better ideas because you quite simply cannot paste a link in here at all. And also, if you put the link in the first comment, it will also hold you back. A lot of people are not aware of that, but I've tried every conceivable method to try and force the traffic over to my YouTube and other places for click-through rate manipulation reasons because I've got a lot of followers. I'm trying to force that traffic onto my YouTube, and why wouldn't I? But it's very, very difficult. So you're going to have to come up with creative wording or a creative graphic to entice those people over because LinkedIn is on to you for trying to drive people off of the platform. But if you want to try and get engagement, be creative and try and utilize that traffic, either for generating leads, building your brand, or forcing people over to another platform, then limpod.com does work really well. Other than the fact that you have to think creatively in terms of how you get those people over there. Um, because, as I say, like anything else, it doesn't matter whether it's Instagram or, or any other platform. If you're trying to drag people off of the platform, you are going to be hammered by the algorithm. So <coughs> that's where you maybe have to natively upload a video and tell people a teaser, for example. Guys, I've got the next best automation, blah, 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 blah. Jump over to my YouTube or something like that. So... Lempod works really well though when someone else is saying that the Lempod is yeah, good. I think I think that's great. I mean LinkedIn's obviously interesting because it's it's business to business, isn't it? So it, potentially there's a, a lot of potential clients on there that would be exactly the sort of people you'd want to get in touch with. It's just finding the the way to do it. I mean, I know we talked about TikTok earlier on and there's loads of people on TikTok, but they're not necessarily the the target audience for SEO services, business to business. But uh, link, LinkedIn would seem to be exactly the right kind of place if you can make it as you say, convert traffic and get people over to your site or, or your YouTube. So, yeah. Interesting. We'll have to look at uh, Lempod. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely should because one post, 134,000 eyeballs on it. 
Mm. I actually one shitty post asking if people are using Clubhouse. Now, you think what happens mm. if you post a good case study on there or a yeah. good knowledge bomb or a new tool? Yeah. Something that actually excites people. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> it, it's going to go crazy. So um, that was me when I was posting all that stuff. And just if anyone's listening, going, I've seen his engagement. A few people did message me saying, Craig, what the fuck are you up to? I don't care about LinkedIn, to be honest. I could not give a shit about working for another client. I am playing around to see what the fuck was working. And that's why, um, you know, I was, I was trying different methods um, and different things to see what was being held back and what wasn't because I'm using the same pods for all of the testing. So it's the same people, the same level of engagement. Um, and from there, I can understand what actually goes and what doesn't. So... Uh, just for anyone watching who was like, what is he doing? <laughs> uh, that's what it was. Um, wow, yeah. awesome. I, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what, you've been a fantastic guest and you are our very first guest on here to kick off the show. And what we're going to do is we're going to have you get to spin the prize wheel for somebody to win one of our domains, okay? So... Uh, Craig is not on the list. I'm sorry, Craig, you're not on the list. <laughs> uh, but uh, before we before we pri throw the uh, the prizes out to somebody, the first prize is right here. It's the 10 o'clock uh, winner, uh, where your name will go here. You're going to win the the domain. View my resume. Uh, name worth value of fourteen thousand five hundred dollars, and it's an eighteen year old. On that one, wrong. I think I registered that. Uh, quite a long time ago, so uh, I put it present, so I don't need that one. Would you like to spin the Find out our working. I didn't hear a word of that, by the way. Yeah, we had a few audio use... problems from you, Daryl. Yeah, I think uh, I can hear Craig oh. okay, but not not oh, you. Just... I think we've got the message that you uh, well, it's it's a, it's a valuable that. domain and uh, you're going to spin uh, get Craig to spin the uh, to spin the wheel. How the hell do I spin the wheel? Yeah, we, you just say spin yeah. it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you ready? I'm ready. Right. So spin it. Need to get the right screen on Daryl. And yeah, it's spinning. <laughs> We're not on the right screen. Change the screen. Oh, on the right screen? Uh, okay. Let me see a second. It's Alex B. Let me see. Why don't you guys see it? That's weird. Can you see uh, it now? No. We're, we're seeing the webathon.com site where you were just calling out the uh, 10 a.m. winner, and, and that's the page you're on. Oh, there we go. We can see it now. Good. Alex B. That's Alex weird. B. Alex B, we just spun it, but uh, you saw the wrong tab. I don't understand why you're seeing the opposite tab that I'm seeing. Um, maybe I maybe I shared tab instead of the uh, full screen layout. Let's yeah. Or... Anyway, is, is Alex uh, B? Uh, Alex B I may know. or may not be uh, watching, but uh, yeah, I mean all the all the entrants are from people that have registered that Webby dot link. So we've got quite a lot of people that are here that may well come in uh, later on. So we'll. Uh, Get in touch with Alex B. We've obviously got their uh, email, and uh, they've won that yep. uh, fourteen thousand dollar name worth um, domain. So that's cool. Yeah, that was fun. I'm sorry, I, I don't know why that got messed up. Of course, the first one will get messed up, right? So, uh, but I'll put in <laughs> Alex B's name on the uh, page here. Uh, so yeah, so you just gave away a fourteen thousand dollar domain. That's <laughs> <laughs> all. So, um, great. So, so uh, yep. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, I was just going to say, if there's any other questions that people have for for Craig, I mean, we're just sort of about to close up uh, Craig's uh, session here. So, I, I don't know if are there any questions people have for Craig before we uh, uh, wish him on his way to celebrate the rest of Cyber Cyber Monday uh, with uh, whatever he's doing. Yeah, I've got an easy day today. This is the only call I've had. Oh, um, nice. So, I'll do a few more posts on Cyber Monday, my Black Friday SEO deals page, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and cool. see what sales we can generate for other people. Yeah, I'll just put up your link again as well. I think that's the the link there, Craig. Is that the right one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Looks like the one. it. Awesome. So uh, you go there for some some deals. Uh, awesome. Okay. So any any more questions from people? Got somebody um, just let's take a look. Do you see? 
Somebody's Somebody saying thanks thank to you. Craig for the LinkedIn information. Uh, did miss the beginning of the presentation. Um, this is obviously being streamed live, but it's also being recorded. So you can go back to the YouTube channels or uh, Facebook Live to uh, to watch this back again if you missed anything from earlier on. Oh, uh, we have Rankus SEO who said, where do you register? Uh, just go to webby.link. Let's throw that uh, up there. Or you can go to webby, webbython.com and go to the register page. Just go to webbython.com, go to register, and we can go ahead and get you in for the um, the next, uh, the second half of the show, you'll have a chance on the prize wheel. So anybody that registered up till nine o'clock this morning, we got you on the prize wheel, and then we're gonna add people just before we switch over to the next stream. We have a part one and a part two because you can't do 12 hours on these social platforms. So uh, we're, we're sort of breaking what they had in mind for these things. Might be nice um, to have a, a minute or two break as well to try and eat or eat something <laughs> halfway through as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We're Always we're in good shape now. I think we're only an hour and a half in, but I don't know what we're going to be like uh, late later on after the twelve hours. I'm, I'm finishing yeah. up here at uh, two a.m., so it's going to be interesting. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Webby dot link is the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cool. awesome. Well, yeah, thank so you, Craig. Really appreciate you. Thank you, there, you. Yeah. Really appreciate you coming on, um, and thanks for saying yes to us because uh, you have great advice. Uh, we love your stories. You're you're a great storyteller um, as well, and uh, I wish you very a, a whole lot of success with broadening your market because um, I think that you have a lot to a lot to bring to that, and um, from a lot of experience. And I love how you like basically say, "Look, I failed at this. I failed at that." And that's the kind of thing that people like about you, Craig, is that you're saying, look, I'm not good at this, but you know what? I respect people that are good at that. And when I see somebody yeah. that's good at that, I, I recognize that. I say that this person is good at this, this skill set. So it's, it's a cool thing about you, man. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Craig. I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing part of your uh, Cyber Monday with us. No worries. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, Craig. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Really. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, wasn't that awesome? A way to kick us off here for our uh, marathon here, uh, Webathon 2021. And if you're watching and you are just finding us, uh, if you want to register, just go to webathon.com. That's webathon.com. And uh, it basically is a word that came up because I have webby.link. And it's uh, Webby is sort of a, a name for a webinar. And so we built Webby.link and then we made it a webathon because it was a marathon webinar. Uh, so that was the whole idea here. So we're going 12 hours. We're just an hour and 26 minutes into this. Um, so our next speaker is, is coming up. Um, do you uh, have anything to say before we bring up our next speaker? And we'll put, we'll press the intro on this one. Yeah, I was gonna say that my only thing to say was press the intro. We spent the time building one for each speaker and it'd be great to uh, <laughs> uh, welcome them in. So uh, if you want to do that, obviously I'm apologies. My, uh, my lighting's starting to change here. I'm, I'm not in my normal place. So actually it's shifting. So I'm, I'm starting to sort of fade out at times. So I might need to adjust things as we go on, but hopefully you can, at least you can still hear me today, which is, uh, which is good. But uh, yeah, play the promo. Awesome. All right, here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Udit. Gunka, how are you? Goenka? Uh, doing fantastic, and how is it going with you guys? Yeah, it's, great. Uh, it's, all, great. it's all good. Great to have you with us. Uh, same here, same here. Pleasure, your pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me over here. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we uh, obviously it's great to, to have you. I mean, I uh, I'm a bit of a, an LTD addict, and we've uh, we've spoken before. I've I've seen you on your Twitter Spaces, and we've had a bit of a chat, and uh, I've also bought a number of your deals as well. So I'm going to continue to do so. So it's been a busy uh, uh, weekend and Black Friday. So I thought it was a great opportunity to get you on to um, you know I guess celebrate Black Friday, Cyber Monday, have a bit of a, a chat. I know Daryl uh, likes uh, LTDs as well as domains, so uh, he's definitely. 
yes. uh, a, a buyer too. So, and I know a number of people that watch our uh, Sunday stream. We we have actually started recently doing a lifetime deal of the week um, show, uh, well, a part of the show. So we will we'll choose one every week, feature it, and and, and talk about it. And that's been uh, been popular. And we've even put together a list of our best uh, lifetime deals uh, of uh, of Black Friday. So we've got a number of pitch ground ones on on there. But um, so I I've I know you through that, but I know you're involved in a lot of other things as well from a SaaS point of view and an entrepreneur and another number of things on your CV. So you, I don't know if it'd be good for you just to sort of give us give us a you know a minute or two of you know who you are and you know some of the things you're involved in just to kick off the conversation. That would be uh, that would be great. A little bit of an audio problem there. You do, I don't know. Uh, do you want to just try and speak again? I'm, I'm, I'm losing the light in here as well. But uh, just just speak again. You do, make sure we can sit here. You okay? Yeah. Is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So my name is Udit Goenka. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, a SaaS marketplace known as Pitchground. I uh, started this platform about uh, three years ago after my previous startup failed very miserably. I uh, started researching more about it uh, to a point where I figured that 92% of the SaaS companies actually fail every year. That means mm -hmm. out of every 100 SaaS companies that comes out every year, 92% fails. And with with me being in that 92%, it sort of triggered me like, hey, like there's an opportunity. And plus, imagine the amount of money that's being lost, uh, uh, the psychological effect that founders go through because of the failures. And because I went through it, and that was when I started with the MVP of Pizdrum. Took off, made about 350k in sales in the very first year, which went to 1.3 million. That went to 1.4, and this year we are already on a runway of 2.2. Uh, we might hit about like 2.5 million, so we've already crossed over like five million dollars in 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 uh, lifetime sales in about three years of uh, running page round. Apart from this, I have also started investing in um, in a, a lot of startups, but most of my portfolio consists of SaaS companies. So anyone who uh, does pretty well in in at Pitch Ground. We end up sort of like investing in in them at the same time. So also started my like startup uh, uh, journey. And about next year, I'm about to start my uh, angel network, which is going to be the first India's very first uh, SaaS focused only angel network, uh, where we have roped in some very big names and market investors. So this is just about me in like about a minute. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Well, look, we, we'll dig into some of these uh, things in a bit more detail. I mean, D Daryl's uh, gone off for a second. He'll be, he'll be back. But he, he is a, a SaaS owner. He's got a number of different products, mass page tools. He's got Domain Kicks, uh, the Leads Detective, Geoholics. He's got a number of different things. So I'm sure he'll want to talk to you about it. And uh, I don't have any. I, I buy a lot of the, the SaaS deals that come through, and uh, but I don't actually make any any software. That's not my uh, not my thing at all or, or, or skill set. But um, what, one of the things I've noticed on the stuff that you've put through on PitchGrand well, first of all, PitchGround seems to be getting a lot bigger. I mean, there's obviously a number of marketplaces out there. We all know the the market leader. I'm not going to mention them here, but so we all know who they are. Uh, but my impression is that you guys are growing uh, fast, you know, and you've had a particularly strong uh, Black Friday. You've brought a number of interesting software deals. And a number of the things that I've seen recently seem to be well Backed. I mean, there's obviously a concern about SaaS. You said it yourself, SaaS deals failing. Uh, lifetime deals are particularly risky i think you know for for both the founders and and the buyers um but you can obviously buy some gems so we're all interested in the longevity of what we uh what we buy in but a number of the big projects you've put through recently i'm thinking things like scale nut seem to come with a lot of vc funding already which obviously would should make sure that they're more sustainable but is that part of your strategy is that just part of the the mix that you've got just in terms of you know the type of Softwares that you put on Pitch Grand. What what are you looking for? What what's your kind of ideal um, SaaS for for that platform? So uh, when when we started about uh, three years ago, we weren't really sure how to position ourselves uh, thoroughly because with any startups, positioning is is sort of the key, right? And with us trying to compete with a market leader who has who pretty much owns about 98, 90, 99 percent of the market, it was hard to kind of like break into that market and and capture those share. After running about for, for a year and a half, we started figuring out what is the core problem in the industry. And that's when we started like slowly shifting our gears towards focusing on, on the startups that actually has a chance of sustaining, where we started analyzing a lot of patterns behind what are the reasons why certain companies are failing. And once we started identifying that, we completely shifted gears and started focusing on the company where we know for the fact that chances of their survival is above 90% over the course of next five years. 
Because typically what we see is like, even if, if a company survived for three to five years, the users get their money's worth already, right? Mm. They would get the, the money that they have paid for for the software, plus they would have generated a very heavy ROI for their business at the same time. So it's a win-win for, for everyone. And that's why we started focusing more on companies that are like very well funded or have raised at least some capital or are doing very well in terms of like MRR. But we no longer deal with companies that are like absolutely new and has got zero users. We don't do those companies at all anymore. We go out there, tell mm. them, go ahead and at least get $1,000 in MRR. Because when any founders do that, they start seeing that even reaching to $1,000 in MRR is no joke. Mm. You have to burn a lot of time, energy to understand what the users really want, modify those softwares, modify everything, make sure your onboarding is perfect. And then you re reach that even $1,000 in MRR. And by yeah. then, most of the work that is required to be done by them to ensure that stability is achieved, they hit that. And that's why we started dropping those companies. So now, any companies that reach out to us, we simply tell them, hey, here is a guide. Go ahead and do this. If you do not qualify right now, that doesn't mean that we're gonna not we're not going to work with you guys. It's yeah. just that you guys do not qualify right now. Once mm -hmm. you hit those targets, we're more than happy to get you in front of uh, 200,000 users uh, that Pitchground has right now. Yeah. And, and I think that's good. I, I think it's obviously good for the, the marketplace and the platform. It was yes. going to protect your reputation, protect buyers. And, exactly. uh, you know, we've, we've you know, like earlier this year, the amount of AI content writers that were just coming out and, and you know, some of them more successful than others, but they, they can't all live and exist. They, 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 exactly. many of them can't be here in a year or two. And, and, and a number of them are one man bands. And obviously we, I, I wish them all, all the best and everything else, but it's going to be hard. There's going to be a shakeout so that, that some of these investments are going to go. And I, I guess that, you know, as, as an LTD buyer, that's, that's part and parcel of it. I mean, we're all looking for a gem and I can think of things that I bought three or four years ago that I still use and they're fantastic. I, I can think of one or two that I, d I didn't get and I'm, still kicking myself that i didn't buy in but i can also think of a number of them i bought and and they've they folded and, and some of the marketplaces have been good enough to provide refunds but a lot of the time things things shift and the and the features don't get carried forward you don't get the upgrades you're kind of grandfathered onto a platform that's not being developed anymore and it's you know it's part and parcel of uh, i guess the the fun <laughs> and drama of the uh, the ltd uh, world so um a number of things i've uh, Bought through pitch ground recently uh scale nut i think was a, an interesting one that was was notable um uh, light funnels i know you've had a big uh, focus on that this uh, this past uh, week or two and you know doing a, a full launch on that and um virus die as well as another one that's come back recently that i know was uh, popular from a number of uh, months ago so um yeah i don't know if you have any favorites at the moment maybe you can't say any uh, any any favorites but how how has black friday been been for you you know and uh, you know what are your kind of take take outs from it um this uh, this weekend uh black friday has been pretty crazy for us we almost like uh doubled our revenue that than what we did in the mm -hmm. last black friday and the promotion is still going on right we still mm -hmm. have about a week left so we are probably thinking to crash in a seven figure uh by then uh seven figure in in about like two weeks of time this will be by far our biggest black friday um yeah. some of the key takeaways that we have implemented that worked out amazingly well for us and this is something that I want to share with all of you guys is focus on personalization. Hmm. One of the biggest reasons of this year's Black Friday success for, for us has been personalization. So we came up with a very unique sort of idea where we would uh, offer a crazy discount of 24% on only Black Friday, right? And that would re reduce by 1% every single hour. That means you got to be prepared <laughs> ahead of time, put all the products in your card. If you want to get that 10, uh, if you want to get that 24 percent now here was the biggest challenge for us that people reached out to us and sort of complained uh saying that look it's you're asking me to stay awake at 4 a.m you're asking me to stay awake at 3 a.m that's not fair uh we discussed uh the, this these points internally and we were like yeah that's right because if you're doing it a sale at a u.s time zone it's not fair for people in australia and new zealand it's just not fair for them to be waking up so early right or it's not fair for people in some parts of the asia as well why don't we end up coding where the sale starts at 12 pm for everyone that means wherever they are located it starts at 12 pm for them in their time zone we implemented this 
we were able to extend our, our Black Friday promotions for almost about like 36 hours because of this, because of the various time zones. So we got an extra bus to talk about it. And at the same time, it gave everyone a reason to talk and chatter about it everywhere. So the word of mouth, uh, mouth marketing was so high because of this one implementation that people actually absolutely loved this idea and people loved the fact and they were ready to just make the purchase during that time. Now, we also did something something very smart where we said that, look, if you end up getting our PG VIP membership, right, you get the 25% throughout the day. So now if someone misses out, it got, it got an opportunity for us to kind of like uh, let them know that, hey, you can still sign up for subscription. So it mm -hmm. was kind of like nicely strategized in a way where people could still buy the subscription. That helped us to start building our subscription base because now uh, previously we did not have any subscriptions we just launched mm. the subscriptions about uh, three weeks ago and in just three weeks we've already crossed about forty thousand dollars in mrr now now yeah this helps the company to have a better predictability of the amount of revenue that's going to come in and this way we can sort of predict how we can grow further uh, at this point so that's how like we did the entire black friday promotion and some of the things were like pretty spontaneous, uh, last minute codings, last minute features, but the rest mm -hmm. of them were like pretty planned for us. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have to say I succumbed to that marketing. So I signed up in the last week or so for the uh, Pitchground VIP. And uh, I did that knowing that it was going to be a special offer on the Friday and it was going to be boosted. And yeah, it was it, it came through 12 o'clock, 24% off plus 10% if you're a, a VIP. And it was, an, it was a no brainer. You know, if you're buying more than a, a few hundred dollars of stuff, if, if uh, you <laughs> attempted to go for some of the agency plans, uh, and I went for one of them uh, on Virus Die actually. And um, yeah, you know, great. Great, um, a great, a great discount. It, it was hard not to see that, and and the the the, the FOMO, which is legendary in LTD circles, <laughs> uh, is there because you're saying, well, you know, if I, if I don't buy within the next hour, it's going to go from 24 percent to 23 to 22, and by the end of the day, it's going to be whatever, you know, 15, 10 percent. It was very effective. So uh, you know, congratulations on thinking <laughs> thinking that one up. Really, I think <laughs> I think it I think it worked. So uh, that was uh, that was good. Yeah. So, I mean, just talking about the actual um, software, are you focusing on any particular type of software? Uh, you know, there's obviously AI writers and funnel builders and, you know, is there something that you think that you focus on with Pitch Grand? You know, who, who's the software aimed at? Like, is there a target market or, or are you, you fairly generic in terms of the stuff that you uh, you, you look into? Uh, so we don't typically focus on any specific niche in general. Uh, mm. We actually try and look out for as many unique concepts and ideas as possible because mm -hmm. there are so many ideas that are coming out in the market right now. So for example, we have a software known as QA pop, mm -hmm. very incredibly simple tool, but can drive crazy amount of users for you because it just helps you to kind of like figure out what are the best questions that you need to answer on, on uh, Quora. You mm -hmm. have those, just go and write them because those are the questions that are ranking on Google as well. Now combine that with scale nut and it produces the answer for you. Now go ahead and, and start mm. uh, typing answers and start pasting those answers. At least 10 questions would be solved every single day by you. And boom, by the end of two, one or two months, you will start, you will be able to start driving some crazy fresh traffic, right? Again, yeah. very effective, simple tool to use, but very effective to grow your business organically. So those are the kind of unique tools is, that is, is something mm. that we started focusing on. Then the next amazingly interesting tool is known as Get It Out. You can build your entire landing page, copies, newsletter with just a click of a button and then export it to your WordPress. If you're running an agency, it's an absolute no-brainer at that stage. So we started focusing on such unique kind of a software. Again, so, so I like bought this. Uh, I didn't plan to bin this, buy, buy this, but I saw it under your offer when the the twenty four percent clicked in. So I did actually pick this one up. I, I've logged in. I've not used it yet, but it does look very interesting. It does seem to, yeah. to be able to produce a lot of content. Put the inputs yes. in and about your business, and it looks at your website, and it comes up with with content and landing page format. So it looks really interesting. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so yeah, sorry. So you were uh, you were talking about yeah, you, yeah. You explain a little bit more about get it, get it out because I've only just dipped my toe in the water on it, and it did look very, uh, very interesting. Yeah. So the one of the biggest challenges for most of the agencies in general, or anyone in general, is to be able to produce like mass landing pages or mass copies, uh, because if you want to go ahead and start scaling up your business, you have to start focusing on personalization, right? For example, if you create a generic landing page like digital marketing for everyone, 
no one is going to sign up for your agency. But if you have something like SEO services for lawyer, SEO services mm-hmm. for um, plumber, SEO services for, for doctors, right? If you start producing such personalized pieces of content, chances of you getting the number of users will go up drastically. And this is the exact same problem get it out solves in bulk because you do not have to again hire people or else you would have ended up hiring about three, four, five different people doing that one job. Now the software does five people's job for you mm. very effectively. So now imagine if you were to hire someone uh, in in uh, in uh, UK, for an example, you would be paying at least like 2,000 to 3,000 pounds an individual. That's about 15,000 pounds a month going into just fixed mm. salaries. Software cuts it down. You just need one person now to handle all of these things. So you will just have one person as a manager to manage all of these projects. And now you can produce in bulk. That means it will be effective, speed, accuracy, and something that will be driven by AI completely. It will yeah. not only save you time, but you will be able to do more than five people's job in less than like quarter of a time, basically. Yeah, we had Craig Car- Craig Campbell SEO just on before you. We were talking about automation, and um, uh, we asked him about AI content, what his view was, and uh, you know, I think we came to the conclusion that AI is not going to re- replace people, but it can uh, g- give you a head start. So I think you know, if you do produce AI content and you just put it straight up, um, you know, people and probably Google are going to be able to spot it fairly quickly. Maybe people spot it faster than Google, but you know, it's a, it's a potential vulnerability, but the head start it gives you and able to put together a blog or a piece of content or, you know, ideas for a landing pages there. So, um, you know, I think we're just seeing it right across the industry. Uh, you know, I'm involved in mass page building and, and Daryl who, uh, produces uh, mass page tools, you know, we're using AI to cr- create content and, you know, it's a different uh, strategy from an SEO perspective. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, you know, it, it I don't think we're ready to sort of autopilot all business and have no people, but yeah, head head start, I think is definitely the way to think about it. It's just a tool, yes, but I, it, you know, yeah. I just wanted to add one line. So AI is, is not a replacement for, for humans, right? Yeah. What I say is AI is an assistant to humans, right? So what happens when you start implementing AI and when humans start working with AI is your productivity can go up by 70 to 90%. So Mm -hmm. what you're able to produce just by yourself, you're able to produce like 700% more in terms of your overall productivity. So Mm -hmm. for example, you still need a person, right? AI is not going to do everything automatically for you. But like I said, instead of having five people doing something, you can have Mm -hmm. one person managing that five people's job, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is where AI would slowly start coming into picture with, Mm -hmm. with all of the automations and softwares, right? So for example, Several decades ago, we have e- we had like email automations coming in where it was just broadcasting. Now yeah. we have segmentation. Now we understand the patterns of the buyer. <clears> and then <throat> we have like AI writing those copies depending upon how those users are. Mm. So this is helping marketers to perform better. And this is actually good for the users because they get mm-hmm. much more relevant and personalized content, much more personalized emails, much more personalized content. Mm-hmm. And even Google, I think, has said thing, one thing very clearly that they don't care about you producing content via AI. What they care about is that content needs to add value to people's life. Yeah. Simple. It's good content. Yeah. And, that, and that's yes. what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So when you use AI, uh, it does about 80 to 90% of your work. And then comes a 10% of that editor's work to go out there, scan it out, make sure that your factual data are absolutely bang on. Mm-hmm. The content is right. Remove any gibberish content and replace it with things. So instead of you spending four or five hours or seven hours on one piece of article, you'll probably just spend one, one and a half hours on the same article. So increase you easily like increase your productivity by about 700% yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, I, I use a number of AI writing tools and I have uh, have been a subscriber to Jarvis. I'm not currently. Uh, I did buy into ScaleNut, which is uh, obviously an AI writer and SEO optimization tool and and marketplace as well, which obviously is is uh, a pitch ground um, uh, LTD. And, and, you know, that's been interesting because I can see, obviously, that you know, it is VC backed. It does yes. it is developing. You know, the, the amount of functionality and the features are are going. So, you know, I'm I'm hoping for as, as a long term investment. That's going to be a, 
a, a good one. But um, yeah, a number of the tools are all on the same platform that just helps you helps you get a get a head start. You know, you can get an insight into Absolutely. SEO. You know, the the volume of the words, the the mix. You know, it'll obviously help you write some of the content. And uh, I even ordered a logo recently, and there was a, a marketplace for logos and content actually within it as well. So I think yeah, scale has been a really interesting uh, one, and I know that's been a popular one on your on your platform as well. So um, yeah, so do you think you'll have other AI um, writers on pitch ground, or do you, you know, is, is scale not your kind of big big focus? Uh, yeah, I don't know how how do you worry do you worry about duplication or overlap? Is that part of the consideration when you you look at your pitch ground um, uh, products that come in there, or or is that not a consideration? You just just kind of go for whatever the, the latest uh, greatest is. So we we primarily just focus on on the quality of the company and the quality of the mm-hmm. product. And not really about duplication because we clearly say people that look if you've already got Scalenet, uh, you don't need to buy anything else. But then again, Scalenet is not going to be there on platform forever, right? So mm. I think 13th or the 14th of December they're saying goodbye to LTD forever because mm. that's not a sustainable model, right? They have to go out yeah. there and start building subscriptions, right? Yes. And that's that's something that they're going to start doing right away. So LTD mm-hmm. for them was just giving them a head start to come out there and start competing with with Jarvis. Right, which yeah. is like the number yeah. one uh, platform yeah. right now in the mm-hmm. world for in this niche. So that gave them a great head start because now people are directly comparing them with 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 that platform. So that now after that is done, right? Uh, there's going to be something new come out, and pe- there's always our user base is growing up who would require a software like this. So this is where when we come up with the next tool, again we focus on just two things, right? One is the quality of the software. Second is the quality of the founder <coughs> team. As mm-hmm. long this two matches. We'll bring in another one. And if someone has already bought Scalenet, we tell users uh, like very upfront that please do not buy. If you already have something that's fitting and working brilliantly for you, you don't need to buy everything that comes out. You just need to buy what is what is something that's missing out from your tech stack, right? Mm-hmm. So you just need to focus on completing your tech stack. Worst mm-hmm. to worst case scenario, after three years, four years, five years, if any of the tool is dead, just replace that one kind of like yeah. because by then you would be made you have already made a ton of you've money. made the money back on it yeah. Uh, exactly yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good way to look at LTDs. That if you know if you've got a two or three year window and you get the value out of it for that fee, and it's cost you less, obviously there's potentially a little bit more risk because you're not always sure where the development's going to go in the future. But you know that gives you enough to uh, to make something back, and then you, anything after that is a is a good bonus. And obviously, once in a while you buy a gem, and it's and it's there for the long exactly. term. Exactly. You know, ten years later, you go, well, wow, that was that was an amazing investment. You know, if it kind of yeah. feels like you're making a very very small investment in as a shareholder in a way you, you 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 know it's not massive amount of money you're not it's not uh, you're not buying shares but you are taking a small stake in something particularly if you're buying an agency plan and it's a it's a more expensive deal you know it's uh you, you know it's a, it is an investment you know so that's how, how exactly I, uh, exactly I it, yeah. sometimes 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 i just wish i had uh, shopify and and Zapier LTD that they did uh, during the initial stages, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I we're wish. D- don't we all? Yeah, and, 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 yeah. We bought the we bought the first set of bitcoins and and all the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, <laughs> um, so I know, and I know another thing. I mean, when you and I have spoken on on Twitter, Twitter Spaces, and I know very recently that's been a really big for, thing for what you've yes. doing. You've come up with some amazing stats where you've grown your audience to. I don't know. You're going to tell. You can probably tell me better than I. Uh, I can. Have Forty thousand or so. You got something like a large amount of followers, didn't you? And I know you've also launched a, a piece of software on Pitchground as well called MakeSu. And I think yeah. that was was that what you were using, or you, I think you'd, you'd had some sort of tool that you were helping you to build your Twitter user. But I don't know if you can sort of share any thoughts on on Twitter because it seems to be quite a big thing for what you're doing at the moment. Uh sure, sure. So, so. So I started working on Twitter back in um, in um, 15th of September. Mm-hmm. So I had registered my account, I think, in 2009. But because of the way Twitter really worked, and it would mostly show me like political content, I, yes. saw, I completely stopped using Twitter, right? Um, so right after that, what I did was um, I, I thought, like, why don't I jump into Twitter again? Because there's a lot of people who are using Twitter at the moment. So I probably see a good opportunity out there. And 15th of September, I started using it. And that's exactly when I also got my verified account verified, which is I have a blue mm. check on my You got the blue check, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started then, and I had 2,200 followers uh, on 15th of September. I remember that very correctly because I was documenting my entire journey. I started strategizing. Before that, I spent about a good four months trying to analyze why some accounts are so big, the kind of content they're posting, what contents are going viral, 
and we ended up building up a small tool internally as well for those anal uh, analytics because such kind of tool doesn't really exist in the market mm. where we would analyze things use ai to understand mm -hmm. things and then try to figure out what really we have to do and i started implementing a lot of strategies on twitter that helped me to explore my account and i think i have crossed about 18 i have 18200 followers right now uh, 18300 followers right now on twitter and this phenomenal growth happened in just two and a half months, right? Where the kind of content that I was working on was exactly based on uh, what our AI suggested us based on how things work. And one of the crucial tools that kind of like pay flat apart from our own tool that we are going to launch, by the way, as, a, as an MVP uh, in January was MakeZoo. So MakeZoo kind of like really helped me out in terms of like follows, do follows. Uh, some of the DMs uh, then started strategizing a lot of contents that were being produced with it. Uh, so Megzu really helped out with that entire sort of like 70 to 80 percent mm. of the Twitter automation. Now, rest of the 20 percent of my effort went into doing spaces. Now, I currently mm. do about three to four space a week and I join about uh, eight to 10 spaces a week at the very least where the user base are quite high. Right. Mm. So when I go out there, start talking with people because you cannot get growth on Twitter with 100 percent automation and people don't even mm. see, want to speak with people who, who who cannot have a voice. Right. Yeah. So that's where I say use the 80 20 rule over here where 80 percent is automation, 20 percent is manual. If you want to take the growth to a whole new level, then put in 30 percent of the work into manual work and 70 percent into automation so i use the 730 formula rule right now for myself and mm -hmm. i'm spending a lot of time and spaces now any piece of tweet that i write it goes viral every single tweet of mine so mm -hmm. twitter has got something known as topics right mm -hmm. where where just like we have like uh, uh like topics in quora right there are like different 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 mm -hmm. topics like investing then there is uh, like software. Similarly, there are various topics uh, inside Twitter. Now, if you have certain keywords mentioned in your tweets or synonyms mentioned in your tweet, and it gets some incredible engagements from your followers only, mm. right? That are mm -hmm. real active followers and not some bot or some purchase yeah. likes, right? Twitter is smart enough to figure that out. Yeah. So if you start getting those engagements, in no time you start trending in the topic and mm. once your star once your tweets they start exploding and start trending in those topics mm. you start going viral because you mm. would start getting hundreds and hundreds of followers every day and by the way all of these followers are 100 percent real followers mm. because if you go and check all of my engagements in all my tweets mm. it's crazy Right. Mm. And this has helped me so much more opportunities to connect with people. I've been reached out by over 30 VCs in the last yeah. one and a half month alone. I've been reached out by media people from some very big yeah. publications and many, many countless collaboration opportunities, interviews yeah. and so much more. All of these in the last two and a half months. And I think that also sort of contributed to the entire Black Friday. Yeah. Happened. I mean, I was, I was going to ask, you know, is it is it? Um, business prospects, partners, you know, other, other vendors. But it sounds like you're getting you're getting it from all 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 areas. Though. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of SaaS companies have started reaching out to us because now our penetration. Because most of the SaaS founders as yeah. are usually developers, and Twitter is Twitter and Reddit are the place they ha they hang out, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because they love showing and bragging about what they're building. Because Twitter is one platform where they don't have to come up and speak or make videos. They can yeah. just post like a couple of lines and post a screenshot and they're keep happy, it, Keep right? it cryptic, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. our content, my content started reaching out to them. And because mm. of that, now we have 600 SaaS companies in our pipeline, which yeah, is okay. insane, yeah, massive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this number is probably going to start growing to a whole new level in the next few months. So this yeah. is what happened with Twitter. And I would highly recommend everyone, guys, please yeah. start using Twitter right now before they turn into LinkedIn and they kill out all the organic reach. Because what worries me is Jack, who is the CEO, is going to step down as a CEO starting today. This news mm -hmm. just came out a few hours right, ago. Okay. Oh, okay. And if the new CEO comes out, I'm just worried that the first thing he might do is start focusing on ads. Yes. He would start focusing on cutting down on organic growth. 
and mm-hmm. he would say that hey start monetizing people start building up the ads platform but, in a better way yeah. because we need to start monetizing right mm-hmm. this means the death of organic reach so guys get out there before they would probably take about a good 6 months to 12 months to build this entire new twitter entire mm-hmm. new sort of like ads panel right which they haven't focused on if this happens you have about a good 12 months of window to really explode your growth get as many people as possible because growing right now for me from 18000 to 30000 will be a lot more easier mm-hmm. growing from 2000 200 000 to 4000 was the hardest for me or right, 5000 okay. was the hardest for me yeah so the journey becomes a lot more easier because you already have a lot of people who knows you now who are following you now and yeah. just naturally start engaging with you at the same time yeah i mean do you think it's been like a, a, a traffic source for your website I means that something that oh, you think can be used so, so it's 100%. not just people people no people just messaging you through your your profile you're actually they're clicking through the link and actually it's driving driving traffic onto your site then yeah, yeah. 100% 100% it's yeah. not just about then driving traffic either people reach out to your dm as well and they mm. want to do mm. big deals and and businesses with you like i said i've been reached out by publications and that yeah. has gotten me mentions on some very huge publications mm-hmm. that increase the credibility and that led yeah. to more people trusting right so it's like a, that ecosystem that it's like a, that 360 degree marketing that yeah. you say can happen automatically on twitter yeah. so that's the sort of opportunity you can get right now on twitter yeah and we've got to say for for our stream and Daryl and I do a you know Sunday live and we we typically stream out to Facebook and YouTube are our main channels but we've uh, this one we've put it out on Twitter we've put it out on LinkedIn which was quite interesting uh, particularly the way it, it displays it it's very visual right at the top of your uh, your, your own profile and we even had uh, somebody uh, yesterday watching in from Twitch as well so i mean i guess you know if you, if the platform allows you to share in lots of different areas why why not you know you you're sort of sca- casting the net a bit wider and and people can act as in different ways so uh yeah that sounds uh that sounds great so um i know you're involved in other things you know, we've talked about uh pitch grand and we'll 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 cover off things a little bit at the end if you you know you want to highlight uh, your cyber monday deals we'll make sure we get to that but I'm just thinking about other things that you're involved with because obviously little sas involved um encompasses other companies i don't know if you can share a little bit about that and i know also you're on uh, made a note of this, the the forbes business council which sounds very impressive and i don't know if you can share a little bit about what 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 that is and and how you're involved and and why you're part of that uh sure so lil sas is actually the parent company name of of pitchground yeah. uh under lil sas we currently have two brands one is pitchground and second one is known as communication which is our our first sas uh product uh, it's an alternative to health scout if anyone knows about health scout it's mm-hmm. a shared yeah, health scout inbox yeah. plan yeah so it's a it's an alternative to that if you go on pitchground you will see that there is that live chat with, uh, widget as well it's actually our own software that they're using that we have built up mm-hmm. and we're currently working on version 2 at the moment so it's still like in in early early stages it's been like a year we have been developing it uh, and uh, we continue to intend to develop so that's why we don't push it very aggressively right now we are waiting for version 2 to come out because that gave us the version 1 gave us a lot of insights to what to work on and version 2 is amazingly kick ass the way it mm-hmm. has come out so i think we are hoping to release version 2 and that's when you guys will probably start hearing about it more because right now we are aren't really marketing much we're just focusing on sales side of it at the moment yeah any ltd you want to share on it you know special special deal ah uh, for <laughs> for 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 that uh, maybe i can probably like speak to you after after version 2 is out because right now it's still version 1 so we want to make sure that uh, when yeah. we actually release it it's top notch out there you guys will be like oh my god i need this for my business right so we want to make sure that the tool tool reaches to that position so we are just like investing back into into the product development at the moment to hit to that like oh my god kind of like a point basically sounds sounds good and and forbes business council again you just just share a bit a, lot, a bit on that how you got involved in it what is it? it sounds it sounds very impressive to me uh yeah so forbes business council uh, if if anyone basically does over over a million dollars in revenue mm-hmm. uh they they do a very heavy due diligence uh, of of you and your business and uh, once you kind of like uh, clear out all of the due diligence you can be a part of uh, forbes business council so uh, a, a few years ago i had uh, one of my good friend who kind of like uh, made a soft intro for me to forbes business council and that again gave me some very good us market plus i am also forbes author now because of that so mm-hmm. any sort of like articles that i publish goes on forbes 
So I'm I'm a writer for Forbes uh, as a, as a guest writer and at the same time also a guest writer for Entrepreneur.com. So this mm-hmm. has also helped me to build a lot of my personal brand credibility at the same yeah. time. So being a part of such different different councils and huge networks is massive because you know that there are like thousands of other entrepreneurs in that network who are all making a million dollars. So they are very serious about work, collaboration, and opportunities. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That sounds good. And I guess yeah, you're going to meet other people that are in the in the space and be potential partners, potential yes. investors, and yeah, and it grows that. So I mean, how part how important is the the personal branding side of things of what you're doing? I mean, obviously you're an entrepreneur, you're involved in a number of SaaS companies, but personal branding sounds like it's a part of your your strategy as well uh, with what you're doing. So until until about a few months ago, I wouldn't focus on personal branding at all. For me, it was just mm. like focus on brand focus on company focus on brand push the brand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um i spoke with a very good friend of mine who is excellent and has driven and built a company out of his personal brand and turned mm-hmm. that into a business i spoke with him and he told me oh that you got to start focusing on your personal brand like mm-hmm. you have incredible knowledge about softwares implementations mm-hmm. sops our growth <clears throat> marketing you need to start talking about it as udit and not as a company Mm. And this was the biggest reason why I went on Twitter because Twitter mm. kind of like resonated my personality of mm-hmm. I don't have much time for to record videos, I don't have much time to write lengthy articles, but yeah. I have enough time to provide enough value into it yeah. characters and then just write those threads, right? So Twitter sort of like resonated perfect to my persona and personality, mm. and that's when again I started using Twitter very aggressively. And when I did that, exactly the same thing happened. My personal brand exploded. And mm. that personal brand resulted into the growth of the company phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah. Today, anyone who is running any business, run and work on your personal branding. This is the lesson that I've learned mm. after 30 years of running a business. Yeah. And I've realized yeah. that ever since I started focusing on a personal brand, people have felt a lot more connected. People have felt a lot more. Uh, they, they trust me a lot more. And they end up buying from Patreon after that. So focus on yeah. your personal brand today. It's very, very, very important. Yeah, I, th- I think it's interesting. I mean, obviously, I do a lot of work in, in SEO. And, you know, I follow people like Craig Campbell, who've just uh, had on. And I'm in Chris Palmer's group. And there's a number of people that are kind of, you know, famous YouTubers. I've only recently got into doing lives like this. And uh, I have to say, it's, it's fairly intimidating in a way, you know, just sort of get putting yourself out there. And you don't have a brand name in front of you. And you are where you are and you're live. But I, I feel that um, a lot more people are doing this. You know, they're kind of pre-prepared, sort of over-scripted videos. They, they take a lot more time to produce. You can't interact with people as well and you know this kind of format i think is a lot more popular so i think it, it was a big step for me to put myself out there uh, i know daryl's been a dj in a previous uh, life i uh, i've done a lot of work as a photographer actually so i'm used to sort of being behind the camera not in front of the camera but i think probably with with covid and everything else all the challenges you know it's encouraged a lot of people just to throw yourself out there and um certainly in the world of seo even though there are a lot of agencies out there and people have their their, their brands normally people will talk about the individual they'll say oh that's you know know Carl Roof or Chase Rayner or, or you know who you know the the kind of personalities in the SEO space people typically refer to them by their personal brand you know and I think it is an interesting area and I don't know if, if challenges with COVID and everything else and things being more video and more unscripted are, are helping push that way but um but yeah even the even the stuff that I saw on Twitter that you're doing you know they're just jumping on a space having a chat different people and I I spent some time talking to you on that and uh, I'd never used it before I have to confess and I had you know 10 people follow me and reached out to a couple of people sent a few messages and it was a good a good thing I think I need to do a little bit uh, a little bit more of it so um that's good now talking of people uh, who are hiding behind the camera Daryl's Daryl's back now I Obviously, a little bit of a somebody, excursion there. He's probably DJ? having his dinner. He's, yeah, he's having his lunch. He's having his he's having a lie down. He's got to a certain age. He needs to lie down every so often. But uh, good yeah. to have you. As, I don't know how much of that uh, you saw, Daryl. We were talking about various listened, different things. I listened in the background. I was doing some cool. emails, just kind of getting things out there. Uh, so uh, yeah, great interview thought, so yeah. far. Really. I thought I thought it'd be good to talk about some of the SaaS stuff that you do. I mean, you're obviously, you know, yeah. have a, a foot in that and in that camp, you know, and I think it'd be good to just uh, explain some of the areas that you're working and get to get you its view on it. You know, if you're heading in the right direction, that would be good. Yeah, well, before I do that, um, first, I want to commend you on your entrepreneurship skills. I think that you found a real opening in the lifetime deal market to really go after quality over quantity. 
Uh, I do believe that uh, a competitor of a, another name uh, is going after quantity. And um, it, it, as a buyer um, of, of lifetime deals, I, I, I love the fact that you are looking for a high quality team to work with. And the fact that you have 600 in the queue, you have a lot to pick from. So you can really kind of, you know, pick from them and get the quality ones that will be around for a while or be adding more value um to their offers and things like that um in fact i i talked to one of your uh people that uh you have on there because i was so impressed with their software uh that i talked to the team we did a, a little meeting because I, uh i just was really impressed with what they did and um you know the the their plans their you know their roadmap and all of the things that they're working on uh it, it was just top notch so it's it's uh, commendable that you um you see that that sort of hole and i believe that given a year or two that will become what you're known for is that you are the you know the more difficult one to get on uh and so you're more picky about who you choose and i think that a curated list of really high quality <laughs> softwares are much better than too many to pick from uh, especially when a lot of them are doing a lot of the same things. Exactly, exactly. Just to add to it, we are actually working on uh, sort of decentralizing a lot of things uh, that, again, like I cannot go very in depth, but we are going to change the whole aspect of how software launches really work and the quality mm -hmm. of the software. And we are making it 100% community driven, right? We already have like three different layers of qualifications right now. So if they pass through like even second, our third layer is community already. So even if they mm -hmm. if they go through our team somehow, right, managing and convincing our community where we have something known as power users, it's insanely hard because they are community members. They are not a part of our team mm -hmm. or our company. They are community members, right? They rip those founders apart if they find anything uh, fishy within that uh, within that private community. Right. They go out there and. and literally ask the most brutal and, and, and toughest questions to them that these founders are like, mm -hmm. oh my God, we cannot get away. Because again, you know, when people do their due diligence, right. everyone thinks very differently. And this has been one right. of the biggest reasons why like the quality has gone up so drastically is, is the layer. And now we're trying to like uh, work on, on, on decentralizing this entire like technology at the moment behind the scenes. So we are going, we're going to start innovating very unique, uniquely uh, in, in the market where the whole uh, aspect of how uh, software development and software distribution needs to work mm -hmm. will change entirely. So we're still like bootstrap, still like far away from our competitor at the moment, but we're trying to make progress every single day. Yeah. So uh, some people are asking about what was that Twitter tool that you were talking about? Um, what was it called? Because I was also interested in, in that as well, because it seems like you actually have a real growth hack, not some kind of fake automation thing. Oh, 100%. These are like real people. If you see, I've built such a massive mm -hmm. community and network on Twitter in such a short time that now I'm growing organically, crazily at the moment. And now I'm also, like I said, uh, let me let me just share the link with you guys in the private chat so that you guys can check. Okay. Uh, it's known as uh, Megzu. So I've just shared the link on the private chat. You guys can uh, probably share. Uh, but more okay. than that, uh, we are currently working on a completely AI-driven tool at the same time on, uh, on, uh, on uh, PitchGround. Uh, that is being again built by my CTO uh, and who is also my co-founder and has previously worked for NASA, Google and Hostinger, uh, probably has an experience of over two decades of coding. So he's implementing wow. a lot of AI strategies into that uh, and a lot of things that we had developed internally at the same time. So we're going to be releasing this M MVP. So I'm probably going to reach out to, to you, Simon, so that we can probably have uh, a, a free copy for, for everyone who is live right now at the moment. Uh, so that we can probably give out uh, some, uh, something back to the community. Wow, and also, okay. people who are spending a lot of time right now to listen to us, right? It's a good way to, to connect with them and give them back. And if they can grow with the help of our tool on Twitter and get more businesses and grow their network, then there is nothing better feeling than that for an entrepreneur. Sounds great. We That's have awesome. How to, how to share that. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. We, we have uh, emails of everybody that's signed up at webby.link. So uh, if you haven't signed up, folks, and you're listening, go to webby.link and get signed up uh, as well. Let's, and uh, we, Darryl, 
yeah, that I can make it make it a little fun, right? Mm. So guys, sure. uh, this is something that you guys can do if you want that free tool access that we're going to be launching in January around Twitter, right? Just write a tweet about it and tag Daryl, Simon, and me. That's it, right? This way we would know that you guys were there live and use the hashtag uh, Webitron. Just use that hashtag. Webitron. This way we would know who who all were there. Once you guys were there, That's we would great. know. And this way you guys would get that tool access for absolutely free in, in January or January end. As soon as we release it, you guys will have a free license for lifetime, right? Not a single fee is something that you're gonna, gonna pay. And again, just go ahead, tweet, make sure that you mention and uh, mention Simon. Uh, Daryl and me. So my handle is at the rate I O Z G on Twitter. Uh, maybe uh, Simon and Daryl. Well, yeah, share. I'll put I'll put it I'll put it in the uh, the chat. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll share that. We can we can write out to people as well. But uh, I'm just going to uh, put uh, put. Uh, uh, just give me a second. I'll type it. I've got yours uh, in Messenger, sure. haven't I? You did so. That's, uh, and, that's let's see, and let's see if we can if we can get uh, where we want to tend at, at the same time on Twitter, guys. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> great. Good. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you want to flex your Twitter muscle, please give us a little promotion. We would love that. Uh, so awesome. Yeah, again, absolutely. if you guys want like, if you guys want access to free, uh, again, this automation tool uh, in in January that Pitch Round is going to release because we are developing ourselves. Just do that because I'm going to be checking out the that particular hashtag Webathon. And only those people will be getting access. So, guys, again, go ahead, tweet it out, and um, and again, there's a lot of opportunity for you guys. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> I'm just writing those up now. I'm going to put them in uh, in here. So uh, I've got mine. I've got yours, Judith. I've got Daryl's. So uh, yeah, I will uh, we'll get that uh, posted so, now. So tell me a little bit about your previous uh, entrepreneurship. You said that one failed dramatically. Uh, you learned a lot of things from that. Um, Take us back to when you were forming PitchGround. What kinds of things did you want to make sure you did right from the foundation? Because I think that that could help business people uh, that are watching this. I think this is this is by far the best question. That I absolutely love this question. So um, here are some of my key learnings. Uh, the number one was make sure that you're building a lean team. Uh, my last startup, I I built a team of almost 50 people and I grew that team in just one and a half year, realizing that you need to go slow during the initial stages and not rush in. And when you try to rush in, you fail a lot faster because if you try to move your graph quickly, your mm -hmm. graph goes com com coming back down very quickly at the same time. So build a lean yeah. team. Do not hire too many people. Uh, the second learning that we had was build a remote team so even before pre-covid um pitch ground has been remote team since day one we had never mm -hmm. ever had office now here was the problem with us when in my last startup when i had a physical office it was very hard to find good talents locally because mm -hmm. mumbai is where when i live in india it's more of a financial capital where you will find good financial people but you won't find good developers now I started uh, getting developers from other city to come to Mumbai and that would cost me arm and leg because I would have to pay for their migration. I have to pay for rents. I have to pay them extra for the foods and everything. My expenses went up because of that. So that was the second big learning. Third, do not trust people quickly, right? When you hire mm. slow, make sure that you're able to trust those people, but do not give them access to everything on day one. and if they do not perform in one or two months, let them go. Because if someone who will not perform in their first month will not perform in the second month, will not perform in the third month either, right? So there is a very wow. popular saying that goes with uh, hiring is guessing, but firing is not. And when <laughs> I failed in my last startup, that quote stuck in my brain like a hard wire. And, I, and that's what I do right now, right? While I know that this person can be the best, I hire them. But after one month of seeing them work, I get to know this is what they're going to do. If they're not passionate enough in their first month, I cannot motivate them to keep them active and keep working in the second month. So let go of those people because firing is not guessing. You know the statistics yourself. You need to let go. The fifth learning for me was implementation of OKR. I never ever focused on building processes previously. And that was one of the other reasons why it failed. 
So in this particular startup, I was very, uh, very sure that I need to build proper processes. And I implemented OKR for that. The OKR implementation helped me to get the best out of every single implementation. You guys can Google OKR, read about it. There's a lot of concepts and, and, and articles around it. Or you can probably go on YouTube and, and read more about it. Implementing OKR can be the best decision a business founder can make. This, reg this is regardless of what niche you are in, whether you're running agency, whether you're running a software company, whether you're running uh, any, any sort of other businesses, it doesn't matter. Implementing OKR is very, very, very critical. And fourth, uh, sorry, the sixth and the last one, start hiring from the top and not from the bottom. So when I say start hiring from the top, that means start hiring from the C-level executives to go to the head of departments and then go to like individual users doing things, right? Don't hire from the bottom. So this was a big mistake that I made that I would try to hire a lot of interns to try and save money. But by the time they would get trained in six months, they would leave for another job because now that they are trained, they know things, they would get 2x, 3x more. Or they would get paid 2x, 3x more at that point of stage. And I'm like, look, I taught you everything over here. At least give me one year of your time, right? They don't care, right? They would just leave at that point of stage. So now when I did and started hiring from the top, I did not have this issue anymore because people who are at the top, they're already getting paid very well. So they don't need to switch as long as you have different sort of like cultures implemented, knowledge in their personal growth at the same time. So, and plus time is money, right? So if you try yeah. uh, to, to spend too much time to save money, you actually end up losing money. And this was a big learning lesson for me. So these are some of the learnings that I had from my last failure. Wow, that, oh my God, like that was a knowledge bomb and a half. All of that was phenomenal. I did not expect that to come our way today. Uh, so, uh, wow, I was so thrilled with that. So thank you so much. You did, that is, that was uh, a, a masterclass in about seven minutes of time. That was just amazing uh, things that you said, because I've been in business my whole adult life. I'm still learning on the job as it were, uh, and you know, we're, we're always looking for people that have been there, done that. And failures are the greatest things if you're learning from them and growing from them. So uh, those are some great things. OKR, um, I've heard that term around, but I've never used it or implemented it. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that uh, because that's, that sounds phenomenal. Let me, one more question before we have you spin the prize wheel for another prize. Uh, do you have any plans as your business starts to grow and scale to go and have headquarters in Europe and in the United States or Canada? So we're already a registered uh, corporation in the United States and we do not intend to build any offices ever. We're going to remain a remote company remote? Uh, for the mm -hmm. remote for the rest of our life. We're going to keep hiring remote. Yeah, but we do give an option to our to our team members that hey, if you prefer mm -hmm. working from workspaces that means you need a physical office please get a physical office and the company will pay for that one desk for that co-working space which hardly would cost us about like 70 80 dollars at the very most right so we give you the, mm -hmm. this option but trust me no one wants that everyone wants to work from home because we have implemented some great policies within the company so things like we have unlimited leave policy if they want to take one or two weeks off they can we don't care as long as the okr are met this is why i said that having okr can be a boon in your business. We don't care about whether you want to work in the morning, evening, night. We again don't care about it. As long as your OKRs are met, as long as you're hitting your goals and targets and your key objectives, right? As long as you're hitting that, we are all good. So we we usually like have a Monday morning, a Monday meeting uh, every Monday mm -hmm. on Zoom for about an hour, hour and a half, that we discuss on all the OKRs, what's going on, have those been achieved or not? If not then why those are not achieved, we analyze this, we come up with a solution so that we can hit those targets pretty well at that time. So this has resulted into much better implementation and, and overall strategies. Plus it has also helped us to get and acquire the best talents from around the world. So remote has been a biggest boon. And if you guys have a digital company, do not try to set up an office, please. Well, I get to what you're saying. There's a lot of companies that have made that switch and they're not going back. So uh, hats off to you. Uh, I have a selfish question to ask. Uh, Simon, before I ask my selfish question, did you have a, a 
a question or anything to add? No, I've just I've just been putting up some of the uh, the points that people have uh, just listed there. So people just saying it's a, a knowledge bomb and uh, asking again about the Twitter handles. I've just put them up at Simon Hogburn, at I U D I T G, and at Daryl Ladyard. And if you want to um, use the hashtag Webithon, uh, that's great. A few people saying hello, including. Uh, uh, William Jones as well. So good to see you, William. And uh, people saying it's a great offer. So yeah, that was it. Just catching up on some of the um, the messages there. And, and thanks, you. It's great, uh, great summary of things there. Real, real great insights. So yeah, awesome. So are you going to ask another another question then, uh, Daryl? Yeah. So this is my last question to you. Um, we've made our uh, softwares uh, ready for lifetime deals with other platforms. I hopefully we could get accepted by you at some point. Um, when should a software developer or SaaS platform not go with a lifetime deal? When do you think it's not a good decision to choose to do the lifetime platform? If you have uh, the money in the bank already, uh, it's not a good idea because growing slowly will actually help you to sustain for longer and will help you to grow faster. Right, but if you want to have users and growth, uh, you need to start building community. So the whole idea of, of a lifetime deal is to build out a community around your product. Because when you do that, and when your software is helping others, they start talking about your, your tools, right? Our uh, next thing is you also have to look into your cost. So if your business and if your software is very heavy uh, resource-driven software, where you are spending about 50% of your revenue into servers, it's a big no at that point of time. So for example, a video hosting platform, right? Uh, where you are doing a video hosting and you're, that is the core product, then that's a big no because then you just get into the trap of keep selling on, on LTD for, forever, basically. And you cannot come out of that loop to a point where you now have thousands of users and you are stuck serving them because video hosting is something where even if a user just puts up a video and embed, embeds in their blog, you still have to serve them. So the resources will just keep on getting used versus some other email automation software, right? So if you do not uh, send out emails, it doesn't re uses any resources, right? So it doesn't cost company at that stage. So that's mm -hmm. where you have to be very careful about the kind of uh, tools that you're using and the kind of tool that you're building and whether it is resource intensive or not, because your biggest cost in the long run is not just going to be development, but it's going to be the cost of your servers, right? And that's something that you're going right. to be being reckoning. And today you cannot afford to use like a cheap dedicated server. You have to go uh, a full enterprise grade solution like AWS, right? No other solution if yeah. you want to grow your SaaS, because the real growth of a, every single SaaS that are on AWS happens over there. So that's why like 52 or 53% of the entire world is hosting on AWS for the sole reason to a fact, even Apple is using AWS. A, a, Apple is actually the biggest customer. So that's when I would recommend wow. when to go and when not to go with, uh, with, a, with a lifetime deal. It's better to like grow slowly if it's very resource yep. intensive. But if it's not resource intensive, then I think you can have like hyper growth uh, and do also at the same time, do not uh, do like lifetime deals for a longer period of time. Keep it short, handle over like, let's say 500,000 licenses at the very most, build out a community of thousand users, use them as a part of your growth journey. Uh, and at the same mm -hmm. time, uh, it's a win-win for you because they'll start talking about your product and uh, you get to have those buzzwords from them. Plus, you're providing a fantastic tool for them. So just like how we're discussing about ScaleNet, for an example, over here, right? We're discussing about some of the tools because they genuinely are helping people. That's why we remember them and we use them every day. So it's it's all about that that hitting those plateau and then moving forward and then quickly starting to build subscriptions because SaaS eats up money like like anything, right? Right from mm, development yeah. to servers. I'm pretty sure that you yes. can relate. I to you know this. I know. <laughs> I got <laughs> seven. Yeah, I know. I got all seven. about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like Steve I got a lot of kids. I got a lot of nearly as expensive as his, uh, his, his domain uh, domain addiction. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we're in we're in the building stage right now. We're not in the marketing stage as much, but 
uh, we're, we're, you know, building and trying to innovate and doing some pretty cool things. So uh, maybe someday we'll have a conversation about that, but I'm not at that stage to do that. All right. Uh, awesome. Do you, one last thing before we uh, share my screen here and have you spin the wheel for another prize. Um, do you guys have like a little internal name that you uh, call your software addicts? Uh, do, do we have some sort of a little name that you say behind the closed doors? <laughs> our software, yeah, we, uh, we, the people... yeah we, we call our, all users? our users pitch ground. Yeah, we call our all our users are pitch grounders actually. So pitch anyone, oh, uh, okay. yeah, so yeah, so anyone who who is a part of our community, we call them pitch grounders. <laughs> and what if oh, they're obsessed? That's a good, that's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're obsessed, then what do you call us, Simon? Ah, I would love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like I do like an LTD. I have to have to admit. Yeah. So well, uh, just every, just before does. we get onto the the spin the wheels, um, you, you did Cyber Monday today. What's the special deal on on Pitch Grand? Just before we uh we we finish on that, what what so what should people be looking out for today? Uh, so you guys can can uh just use the link that you guys see in the screen, and just use the uh the coupon code Cyber Monday at the checkout. If you end up getting nice. a PG VIP subscription as well, which is pitchground.com slash VIP, then you get 20% discount right away. And this discount ends on 4th of December. So you can sort of like take advantage of this, get your favorite tools right now. And um, and just keep on growing because there are some incredible, incredible tools on the platform right now. Some some very crazy tools right now. This awesome. Is the website. We've, we've can you guys see it this okay? The website, yeah. And we 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 put together a list of our favorite top ten LTDs. There are some from other marketplaces on there, but there's a, a scale nut virus die and um, um, light funnels uh, on there as well. So uh, we've got a, we've got a list at webithon.com. But uh, yeah, awesome. Okay, so Cyber awesome. Monday is the code then. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely great. Uh, all right, so we have the long wheel of names here. Um, do you see all these wheels, the, the, the names here? Let's see if I, do you, do you guys see it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can see it. You okay. do see it? Okay. All right. So we, these are the names that came in before nine o'clock Eastern time. If you put in your name at webby.link after 9 a.m., uh, we're going to put you in when we do the flip over. So we're going to be flipping over, uh, just before two o'clock. So like one fifty or so. Uh, we'll be flipping things over and uh, setting up the part two stream. Uh, so we have a little tradition. We usually have our guests say spin it or spin the wheel or something like that. And then I push the little button and then you get to, you know, you get to be part of the winning process. Up for grabs here is a domain name that I'm giving away from my personal collection. Uh, I have the domain uh, Telio. Uh, I used this for a project a long time ago. Uh, for a telecommunications platform. So it's worth $24,500 from Nameworth. Uh, wow. It's a great brand name. If you're using it for, you know, any kind of like corporate, you can sell it on Brandpa or Squad Help or something like that if you want. Um, it definitely has some value. It may not be as much as 24,000, but I just wanted to be on the safe side and say, you know, uh, it's definitely worth something more than, you know, 10 grand, I would say for a name like that because it is brandable and it's short. So that's uh, something to, to definitely consider. So, all right, do you guys see the wheel now? Yeah, we see the wheel. All right, was I getting too loud? Was it uh, breaking up at all? No, I think you're, no, no, you're, no. you're okay. Don't get too excited, okay. is that what you're saying? I'll try not uh, to. Like, Paul, Paul is getting ready. Darryl, I tell you, I actually have like uh, one thing to add. Is it possible to kind of like add a $100 PG credit to the winner at the same time? We can wow, do okay. that. Yeah. I would love yeah, that. Wow. Okay. So yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll add that. So um, once I get the email, we'll send it over to you. And a hundred dollar credit to uh, Pitch Ground, you'll have uh, as well. So this is a really nice. nice prize for somebody. Again, if you're just watching this and you want to be in on the prize winning, go to webby.link and sign up there and tell us your interest for topics. So that if we do have another Webbython, we know what kind of topics to cover and all of that. So we also can notify you when your topics come up. All right, are you ready? Give yeah, us let's that do magic it. Word. Let's spin. All let's right, spin. we're spinning. All right, let's see who comes up here. 
Looks like Stefan B. Stefan B. All right. Well done, Stefan. Congratulations. Stephane. Nice job. Cool, cool. Uh, so we're going to remove him from the list. I'm going to add him into the website. But thank you so much uh, for the $100 that you're going to get for Pitch Ground from you. Thank you so much for offering that. Uh, really appreciate you. Uh, and this interview has been phenomenal. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much on, for you having did. me, guys. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It was an absolute pleasure. And uh, keep going, guys. And uh, keep keep working and keep growing your businesses. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, great, great to have you on board. Appreciate it. So, uh, well, great. Um, okay. Well, look, we're we're going to uh, just have a bit of a, a switch over now. So we'll say goodbye to to Udit. Thanks, uh, Udit. And uh, we are waiting in the wings. We have uh, Paul Hogden from Flock Marketing. Paul's. Uh, I know I've just been messaging him, so he's about to come into the studio. Uh, Daryl, I'm hoping that you've got the promotional video uh, ready for yes, Paul. Yes, you do. Are you ready? Uh, Here we go. Looky, Hello. looky here. Hello, Paul. How you doing? <laughs> wow, what an introduction. I'm Do you like that? <laughs> we remember to yeah, play well. it for the guests coming on now. So I think you've had the best build up there. So that's uh, that's oh, great. That's that's amazing. I I I uh, I, I was quite quite uh, quite pumped up. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to do that as a, as a, as an idem. Thank you. Yeah. Well, look, it's great to it's great to have you uh, on board. You're up here as part of our twelve hour uh, live stream. I, I yeah. can just sort of check in the time, and I think we're about uh, three hours, two and a half hours, three hours in now, and uh, yeah, we're uh, we're all still <laughs> all still here. So, uh, Paul, I think the first thing to say is obviously welcome. I met you at um, SEO Underground just earlier last month. Uh, which yes. Is the first. Um, SEO conference I've been to in, in person and obviously with all COVID and all the rest of it, it was uh, great to actually meet people uh, in person met up with uh, with yourself and Craig and a number of the people that were there uh, there was a fantastic yeah. dinner and a, and a full day so it was uh, it was great from that point of view um, but I also wanted to clear up any doubt that we, we're not related in any way I know we've got a very similar name yes <laughs> but, uh, we do don't but we? that was sort of a bit sort of uh, weird doesn't it because Hogben Hogden is a, is a very unusual name in well, anywhere I think but even anywhere, in the UK yeah. so uh, it's, but, yeah it, look, I, I, I don't. I don't know whereabouts your family emanates from. Mine comes from Kent. So yes, uh, so, the name's so maybe, originally from Kent. Yeah, I mean my, uh, oh, my uh, yeah, I think it's a Hogben's yeah. Hill, isn't there in Kent? And yes. that's where, that's where the name originates from, I believe. Yeah, I suspect that there was somebody in the Doomsday Book who was probably writing something, and they perhaps had a touch of dyslexia or something. Yes, uh, one, well, one we, way we, or the we, other. We had that argument about who whose name's uh, the the first one, original or best. But anyway, but <laughs> we probably share a common ancestor. Is the is the spooky Possibly. thing? But we we Possibly. won't we won't go any any further on that. So so yeah, I mean, obviously we're speaking to various different people today, and we just had Judith from Pitch Grand, and we had Craig Campbell open up talking about affiliate marketing. Um, yes. obviously I've I've met you, and we've we've spoken before. Um, I know you're an agency owner, and obviously you yes. organised SEO Underground. I don't know if you can just give us a couple of minutes on just give us a bit of background to introduce yourself. That'd be all right. Myself, yeah. So um, I've been running uh, Flock, which is a kind of a, a general uh, digital marketing agency for ten years. Um, I started out uh, going back. I got. I managed to uh, cheat my way into Oxford University. Oh, by, very good. Uh, but, yeah. Essentially, uh, I, I I had the worst A level results ever. I got <laughs> get this a D, an mm. E, and an N. I mean, nobody's ever heard wow. of what an N is, but that's a near miss, and that's yeah. how uh, rubbish I was. Uh -huh. um, but I wrote a letter, and I basically got into Oxford University through the fact that I turned up, and I basically just said, look, I'm good enough to be here. And uh, and the guy said, oh, we'll pick you up through clearing, which was totally not what I was expecting. Anyway, mm. got in there. I suddenly realised, though, that actually what I really wanted to do was earn some money. So um, I only stayed there for a couple of years, had a great time, met some <coughs> really, really interesting uh, people, I shared a toilet with Bill Clinton before he was president. That's my little claim to fame there. Well, um, that's what you shared. That's the, that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must say though, I didn't inhale when I was with him. No, no, um, of course. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so so uh, that that was my kind of my education. Uh, spent a lot of time in corporate for about ten years, learning mm. uh, digital marketing, learning uh, web design, so on and so forth. What I wanted is I wanted to be able to uh, offer 
client not just a website because there was lots of people who were just building websites but they were mm. kind of people who sat in a little dark corner somewhere uh generally a uh, customer would say i want a website and i want to do this and they would then just go off and uh, build it i didn't want to do that i want to mm. do something that actually dug a little bit deeper to actually understand more about what mm. what clients wanted um and so that's where seo started to come in so i've sort of been doing seo for around about five or six years mm. Mm. um going through all of the different uh, ways to do it you know mm-hmm. I, I laugh laugh at some of the ways uh, that we used to uh, to do seo mm-hmm. And then kind of winding forward, SEO has kind of taken more and more uh, of a a front seat. My goal Mm. now uh, with my agency is to uh, essentially uh, not have any clients, uh, only uh, advertisers, because I'm Mm. looking to uh, to do more rank and rent, which is something that I'm very, very uh, interested in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Launched my uh, first rank and rent site um, earlier on this year. Um, that's uh, starting to generate some some revenue, which is excellent. Uh, we're in the process of building that out now, uh, and that's really really exciting because I'm practicing mm. what I preach. I'm yes. understanding, uh, you know, the whole process, uh, the way the processes have changed, mm. um, and obviously met some great people like uh, uh, Craig and uh, and Craig introduced me to uh, you know a whole bunch of guys who came mm. along to SEO Underground, um, and yeah, and and I what I really want to do is because uh, rank and rate requires quite a lot of very very sort of specific seo mm. work and some of it perhaps not entirely uh white hat one, mm-hmm. did, one yep. perhaps say that's right uh, that i got very very interested in learning about more of the black hat techniques that were out there yeah and, and that's, that's what brings us up to today yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely i mean rank and rent something i mean i'm interested in you know i'm doing more affiliate uh work i'm also doing mass page building and interested yeah. in using that for, for lead generation obviously daryl's um mass page tools is, is part of the yes. software that i use so um yeah definitely uh, definitely an interesting it's also just from your point of view with coming from a uh, kind of running your own agencies you're going to have a lot mm. of skills and house that you want to do it and you know if you want to put up a fantastic looking website and productionize yeah. that and and you know come up with a template that you can replicate i guess you can do it yourself and i might have to go and buy one off a site or go on to fiverr or, or look around but you've got a lot of those skills actually in house which must be quite interesting it's it's really really useful um i i i like uh, sites to look nice although mm. i do also recognize that sometimes one can get a little bit you know anal about it and mm. and, and and start over analyzing what looks nice uh, versus mm. what's actually practical and there's actually quite a lot of argument to say that um it should be more function over form so i yeah. what i did normally what i've done is i've ended up making uh, a, a website that looks really, really nice and then kind of scaled it back a bit to make yeah. it look a little bit less nice because I think some people may look at it and think, you know what? That actually looks like something. It doesn't look authentic. It's, it's yeah, it looks like a lead generation it's... site, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. What, yeah. So, so, uh, so, so, so there's a, it, and I think it's a fine balance because also I think that there are some lead generation sites that look exactly like lead generation sites. Yes, you, so you it's can kind of, spot them, yeah. Yes, yeah. so it's kind of striking that balance uh, as to as to something that looks um, uh, authentic. authentic. Authentic, the yes. word, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's a 100%. great word. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I think authentic, that is the right word. realistic, uh, but functional, but yeah. also is you know is is easy to replicate, is easy to you know yeah. to, to to flip out. 10 20 30 times um yeah. yeah and 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 that's been you know that's kind of been my goal because mm. the trouble is i mean where where i live um and you've had the uh, the displeasure of actually coming to the town where i live it's a very nice uh, place. i enjoyed a very good uh, <laughs> evening there and the hospitality it was it was good very nice race course <laughs> beautiful Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But there's actually there's the, the reason I sort of, sort of started stepping away, and and really it was the the beginning of the COVID journey, really that mm. that kind of got me thinking about this. Is there are 37 web designers in the town that I live in? Yeah. And so, if you stood 37 web designers up next to one another, you cannot tell who is a great web designer, who's a yeah. new web designer, who's an old web designer, who's going to charge a lot, who's going to charge nothing, who's going to undercharge, who's going to overcharge. Yeah. And I don't 
want to be in that kind of no. uh, form you're, any longer. you're a commodity aren't you i mean that's it. you nobody wants exactly. to be the commodity provider in in business and i think website designers like that I, I have a background as a professional photographer and that is a heavily yeah. commoditized area if your marketing isn't on point and and your reputation is there and Indeed. yeah you know you can look at the local town look for a web design look for a photographer etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah you don't want to be 10 a penny um so i, I completely no. relate to what you what you're talking about there <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so 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 for me, it was about how I could take myself on a journey. Mm. First of all, learn from some of the best people that were out there. Yeah. Second of all, um, help other people to learn from some of the best people out there. Mm. Um, and, and obviously, you know, black hat is one of those mm. things that people tend to steer clear of because they mm. think, I don't know, it's, it's witchcraft or, or, or something like that. Let's not forget that black hat is not illegal. Well, generally it's not illegal. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it is just uh, unorthodox ways of doing yeah. it. And let's be honest, black hat is basically anything that you do to manipulate a search engine's views upon your website. Which potentially is just about any form of SEO. Uh, I mean, people like to kind of be precious about the the definition. And I, yes. I, I think if you're in an agency, uh, a lot of people say, well, we only use white hat SEO and there's, they're a bit sort of um, yeah special about it. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would never recommend anybody doing anything illegal. But, um, you know, no. for some of the stuff that we talked about earlier on uh, with Craig Campbell, he had some amazing examples of stuff that was just really creative, you know, and, and people thinking yeah. outside the box to get those angles. You know, Craig Campbell, as you know, has become an actor on the back of, of of trying to build a knowledge panel for his seo you know so it's Absolutely, amazing what, yeah. uh, what's there and i think that that creativity but i think also if you are doing rank and rent you are doing mass page building you're using those sort of tools that they're not typically the, the, the types of techniques that are going to be deployed by mainstream agencies and i guess if you're doing them for yourself you're renting the website it's not the client's domain you can take more risks you can be more you can yeah. be more creative and you if can. you have a problem with a domain you can move on to a next one you don't you're not having to have that awkward meeting with the client to say yeah i think we've got a bit of a problem with a manual penalty or, or whatever yeah. else not that these things come up very often anyway no. but um you know you, you've got your world's your oyster and i think that's very exciting for, from my point of view and no doubt from yours is that control you've got about yeah you you, you you're just supplying the leads you, the traffic and then the uh the conversion as well so um yeah, yeah. i think it's a great a great model the thing the thing is with where, where people start running scared with penalties i'm not saying that they they of course they exist mm. but you have to be doing something pretty bad yeah. and at scale to the yes. point that you get noticed if you are using duplicate content or something like that the chances of you getting picked up i think are practically none yeah um and and therefore i think um a lot of the people who perhaps don't understand uh, seo or or you mm. know the 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 let's call it gray hat seo yeah. uh, would would use that as a as a kind of a threat to a client to basically yes. say look you shouldn't do it because you could get a penalty yeah you mm. could get a penalty but you mm. could get a penalty for a whole host of things yes. even if your website's running poorly you know yes. um i mean okay so it's it's not a penalty that you couldn't necessarily uh reverse quickly if it was just a mm. website running poorly but you'll get marked down if you're too slow yeah. yes. um and and they're the hey, biggest penalties people make. They're the, the normal penalties people have. If they go uh, a poor website that's not mobile responsive and is, is yeah. too slow, yeah, they're the penalties you're really going to face. Yeah, yeah, massive images that take um, four light mm -hmm. years to load. You know, that, yeah. those are the those are the sorts of things that uh, that people uh, that, that the search engines get very yeah. very funny about. Yeah, um, and quite rightly so. You know, I yeah. mean, it, it's it's a crappy experience. It's huge uh, experience, if, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that most of the time it, things are just going to get ignored, aren't they? Duplicate content, if Google doesn't like it, it's just going to ignore it. It'll either not rank it or possibly even just not index it, and then it just moves on, More and likely. then you can take a view on that. Do you want to delete the content? start something up new or whatever else but are there the yeah. penalties you know the, the worst penalty you face really from an seo generally is your stuff doesn't get indexed you know and that's yeah. the thing you ought to keep a uh, keep an eye on but um yeah easier to to take some risks and be creative if you're uh, you're doing your own thing and i guess also seo is seo is about traffic and then obviously what the website looks like is about the conversion and there's always that kind of thing of it's fine sending the traffic to it and this, what you just said about authentic uh, uh, looking sites is if you yes. you can do all the seo in the world but if people land on the the site 
and you know it, it's not optimized for conversion you know there's yeah. no click to call and most of you know local stuff we're talking about here the forms are not working forms not in the right place the, the yeah. trust signals are not there the reviews and all that kind of stuff you, you can do all the black hat in the world all the links all the everything else you want to do but if, if it lands on the site doesn't convert it's just it's no good you know so um yeah a, wa a waste of time i think I th and i think that's another sort of um uh, point to make is that people people tend to start the journey uh, you know people people with mm. websites um you know affiliate marketers rank and mm. renders tend to start their journey kind of halfway through the process um mm. and it's really really important that they that they put everything in the right order because um making a beautiful website is great but if you don't have any traffic you're wasting your time mm. you know if the traffic comes to your site but it doesn't convert then you're wasting your time it's it, it is about you know making sure also and then right at the very very beginning if the site doesn't appeal to the people who who are, mm. are supposed to be buying from it then you're wasting your time so 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 it's also about getting stuff in the right order mm. um, and it's something that actually most web designers don't uh, don't ever ever consider don't ever think about and yeah and that's that's a real shame i suppose the nice thing in rank and rent you, you get the both views don't you that you control the website what it looks like and you control the seo and the traffic that goes into it and you can get Indeed. i think an optimum result i mean i was speaking to a uh, a local um not a local co uh, client actually it was a, it was a hairdresser believe it or not and i was having my head <laughs> talking about what we did and all that sort of and this often, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, daryl's the same Touchy subject Touchy yeah subject. well yeah that's it yeah um <laughs> and and um, yeah, I mean, this this guy had a great marketing for his business, and his shop looks fantastic. And he'd spend a lot of time on things. He was doing um, social media and various different things. His SEO, I, I learned later on, was completely non-existent. But he'd spent very recently seven thousand pounds on a on a brand new website. The website looked awesome and it was actually done yeah. by a local web agency that was also an seo but he just bought the web design not anything else so you know there were there was no h1 tags the the, the message wasn't all filled out it was just yeah. not, there was no alt tags on the images you know all the kind of just yeah. basic stuff that you would do had it been optimized basic but important and, and you seven, know, again, seven but, but seven thousand pounds is a lot of money to spend on a website that people couldn't find and his gmb was exactly the same right. i mean it was it was all reds and uh, he hardly had the word haircut or hair, men's hairdressing on his website so it, was, it looked fantastic but again how much yeah. traffic was he getting onto it and that's always the thing but if you're yeah if you rank and rent you, you control both both parts of the of the the formula which i think is is uh exciting so do, do you see this becoming like uh, you know you obviously involved in a, like a big or, or bigger part of the, of the business is that how you see your, your kind of direction of travel for the agency or or where you go yeah I think I think that the prime I'd like to make it the the primary source mm. of income. In 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 all honesty, I, yeah. I think um, you know the it's it, it potentially it could be you know the alternative to a to a retirement fund uh, for, yes. for want of a better word. Once it's yeah. set up, um, because the competition generally is so sparse mm. and don't know what's happening. You know, if you come up mm. from behind, mm. you know, I mean, I, 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 I put a, a site site together very, very recently and I started ranking in the top 10 for, for some of the search terms, mm. which were, you know, reasonably competitive. I mean, I'm not going to say mm. that any of them were, yeah. but yeah. within weeks, you know, and you're yeah. against uh, companies who have been established for, you know, 25, 30 years with, with mm. a, you know, a mediocre site, but they, yes. they've got no idea how they're even getting their traffic. They've yes. got no idea um, that, that it's even contributing towards their business. Yeah. It's too, it's too they big. They just do. absorb, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't see it. Yeah. I mean, my, my background is local SEO and I, you know, I come from that, but from being a professional photographer, yeah. learning SEO, by promoting my own site and, and seeing that as a good source of traffic. And then I, I got into helping other photographers and I did a course and um, I have a, um, a number of clients. Most of my clients at the moment are photographers, you know, and obviously I know that niche and, you know, it's, it's yeah. good. Uh, it's easy to understand um, some of the issues they, they, they face and it's come from that. Yes. But actually the, the, the competition in photography as a, as a niche probably is, is higher. I think that photographers are more, more aware of some seo challenges obviously there's course and things like that but in other local areas maybe outside the traditional plumbers electricians locksmiths kind of thing there is very low competition and there aren't people that have got you know location-based landing pages or uh, have put much content out there and um whilst the websites look authentic they might not convert yeah. particularly well so i think if you can get that sweet spot between the maybe very large scale national you know generic lead gen site that they've got you know 
five thousand on location pay, uh, based landing pages out there, yeah. and the the kind of local plumber has just put something out there on Wix or is you know brother-in-law's done something or whatever i think there yes. is an opportunity there because you don't need many of these leads to be coming through i mean the number of people that are booking carpet cleaning and plumbing jobs day in day out is is massive so you don't need many leads to come through to make it worthwhile um that's right and most people are not, not looking at in the level of detail that we would do as as an seo you know they're, they're trying to do the day job you know um, that, that's that's absolutely right and and also you know if you're going for something so so for example i i, I one of my first uh, sort of howlers that I made was that um, I started off by trying to make a, a, a plumber website. And of course, mm. the trouble is, is that first of all, it's harder to rank a plumber in a city mm. uh, than it is to, uh, to, to rank other, uh, mm. other sort of part. But, but, um, but, but also um, it, it isn't just that, but who wants to pay um, for a lead for a leaking tap? You know, n nobody does uh, because yep. because you know uh, you're going to pay what ten or fifteen quid for a lead for something that's going to net you sixty five quid. Yeah, it's, it's just not, not enough not worth it, isn't it? it. Yeah. yeah. So so I, I you know I, I uh, spoke to uh, Mike Martin. You, mm -hmm. uh, he yep, was at Mike, SEO yep. Underground. Yes. Uh, and his biggest bit of advice was, you know, just go. Uh, he, he said, make it an inch wide and a mile deep. He said, pick mm. something that's profitable yeah. or people urgently need. He said, yes. uh, you know, and, and maybe plumbers are too broader yes. uh, uh, subject. And maybe you should yeah. be looking at something that, that, that potentially makes more, more profit. Yeah. Um, and, and so that kind of helped me focus down and, yeah. and stop trying to want all of the pie yeah. and just yeah. grab a thin slice, but a damn thick slice. <laughs> yeah, and we're, and we're all there. And I think Mike Mike obviously knows this whole uh, business model inside out. And I think that's absolutely fantastic uh, advice. I mean, I'm learning about this area as well. I'm fairly new yeah. to affiliate marketing. And then some of the things I'm doing there on mass pages is in that area. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, I mean, I, I the first mass page site I started with was a carpet cleaning um, business because I'd been doing okay. some carpet cleaning, Google My Business um, optimization, and that seemed like a good uh, a good area to go in. And then I've got it mm -hmm. ranking uh, in an area, and that's and that's fine. I have had some leads through, not masses, but um, you know, I've certainly got something that's that's turning over there. But you're absolutely right; the the value of the leads is is low. You know, uh, you know, the job yeah. might be 100, 150 pounds. You know, they're, they're not going to pay 50 to 100 pounds a lead. It's going to be no. 10, 20 pounds, something of that kind of order. Because you're yes. also up against, you know, Bark.com and Checker Trade and all the rest of it. And they've already got a, a well established tariff for leads there. And I think if you are you are researching this, I think it's good to look at what the other leads providing sources are and, and how you compare. Because if you're uh, trying to charge 50 and Bark.com's uh, offering something for 10, you know, yeah. it's, there's going to be a mismatch. Now, you might argue, well, I've got higher quality leads or this, that, next. So you'd have, you'd have to be able to prove that. But um, yeah, everyone says, you know, find a niche, niche down. You know, they say in affiliate marketing, I think it's true in, in local SEO, in all these areas. Yeah. Um, and it's just getting those magic, uh, magic. I know roofing's a very popular niche because it's higher value and it's emergency if you don't have a Indeed. roof. And I think there's a few people around here in North Yorkshire uh, over the weekend, unfortunately, <laughs> lost, uh, lost yeah. it. It's been, uh, the weather's been pretty bad. But yeah, yeah, but maybe, you know, and if it's not... Um, uh, residential, you know, it's, it's it's roofs, but it's commercial roofs, so it's a certain yes. type of roof, and it's just trying to find that. I, I'm I don't I'm not involved in roofing, so I'm just making this up. But it's trying to find that angle, you know, of of uh, a particular niche, and then then you're into you know stuff that SEO is perfect for long tail keywords, location based pages with long tails, you know, all the stuff that you can get yeah. into with mass page and rank and rent. So um, it, so it, it sounds like very good advice. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it is, and also yeah, I, I mean. I, I, I'm sure you probably met um, Mike came down with his posse. He had Keith. He had Stephen. Yes, I'd, yeah, I've done some um, work with Keith. Uh, Keith's uh, advised me on on things. Yeah, met Martin as well. So yeah, 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 and and Martin as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and they um, they all had some really really interesting yeah. um, nuggets of, uh, of, of of advice uh, mm -hmm. with regards to you know things that you should and shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. um, and you know make, making sure that you're always thinking about okay well how can i ensure that you know if this website stops working how can i have something behind it to yeah. um to uh to, to to back it up and so also working with uh on making uh some single niche pbns as well so yes. that um you can sort of sweep up some of the other uh, uh inquiries around mm. the same sort of niche because at yeah. the end of the day it doesn't matter how 
um, your clients getting the uh, getting the uh, uh, the inquiries as long as they're getting the inquiries. And so, if you yeah. end up having to buy five web uh, to build five websites, which for me is not not an issue, no. No. Um, it it, it, me- it means to say that they get more. Uh, a more rounded uh, set yeah. of inquiries. It was one of the things that came out for me um, from SEO Underground was, was PBNs. It just came up again and again. Mike did a very good presentation yeah. about the PBN business model. And uh, there were a couple of the providers, uh, Raymond as well from, from Seekerhost, uh, talked about yes. PBNs and, and uh, a couple of others. I can't remember the name. Yeah, Fernando. It was one of the, f- f- yeah, Fernando. Fernando, yeah, sorry. Yes. Fernando, Raymond, yeah, Fernando. Um, and, and PBNs came out again and again as, as just a, lot of, a money-making opportunity in their own right. They can self-fund themselves, and also they, they obviously will send traffic and, and generate leads for your, your your money sites as well. And I think that really came yeah. out. So I mean, I'm I'm you know I've got a a, um, a small number that I'm working on at the moment, just trying to work out the best way to build it out efficiently. You know, how much AI content can I use or not? You know, how do I kind of mm. if I can build ten? Could I build fifty? Could I you know how do you scale it up? But I think it was a really interesting theme from SEO Underground. Uh, all that the whole PBN making bit. Yeah, PBNs have had quite a bad rap, but I think that mm. that probably comes down to people's experiences with um, the quality of the PBNs. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I worked with um, uh, several PBN uh, providers, mm. and I found you know my my mileage has varied quite significantly. Some have been absolutely useless and yeah. had absolutely no shelf life whatsoever. So within three months, you know, you you notice a drop. Um, it's none of your normal uh, sort of, uh, mm. it's none of your backlinks that you purchase or any of the niche edits. Uh, it's yeah. stuff that's kind of in the background. It's also quite a, quite a lot harder to track as well because um, they stop the um, the bots from uh, from spidering yeah. their uh, um, PBN. So you have to go down some alternative um, monitoring so that you can sort of see mm. what's actually happening. Yeah. Um, and then others have been absolutely amazing. And, and mm. you can see the needle moving. Um, yeah you know, on a, you know, on a, on a sort of a bi-weekly basis as they start mm-hmm. introducing more and more and more. So I, I think, I think that it, they get a bit of a bum rap, but I think if mm. they're used properly and they're decent quality, yeah. um, PBNs still have a place. Uh, yeah. Right now. And there was a, a lot of discussion about the being like single niche, you know, and being focused and, and being the P standing for private rather than public, you know, because yes. obviously people are out on Fiverr selling high DA, um, uh links and 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 posts but actually in reality it, it's not it's just it's a free-for-all it's anybody's content in there the da can be artificially uh enhanced you know yes. and, and you're not really getting something from from a quality point of view whereas if you have a private uh, network which you might use for your own clients if you you say like yeah. i'm going to focus on the photography niche or the plumbing niche or the roofing niche or whatever it is you can have your own pbns to focus just on those clients or you could just yeah. use it for your own rank and rent and again then i guess it's you're going to maintain the the quality um because yeah. the, the, the the examples that were shared at seo grand underground these were legitimate interesting articles and you know interesting content and it looks you know everything was you know you would land on it and you think oh my god this is a spammy pbn because these sites yeah. look like you know business news sites or sure. uh, trades trade sites or whatever uh, which is obviously yeah. what you want to, to see so absolutely and, and of course now you know um looking at stuff that like uh, uh holly and william <coughs> are, are doing as well with their news sites yeah that's another kind of angle uh, sort of variation on a theme um you know and getting stuff blasted out uh, across yeah. many 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 sites that's really really exciting yeah uh, the stuff yeah. that uh madge was doing uh, that mm-hmm. was that was really impressive and i spoke to kazra dash as well who wasn't who wasn't right. on on the stage, but mm. he also does um, the the same the same sort of uh, thing, and he and he his uh, you know his angle as well was really mm. really interesting um, as far as uh, as far as rank and rent. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned Holly's news network there, and I actually subscribe to that and use it. And I I've got a, a setup where I'm posting. <laughs> hosting every day on something. So I'm using AI content, but it, the stuff that's produced is good. I'm not really expecting too many people to read it, but as a way of generating a, a backlink that indexes super quick, 
um, you, you can't beat it really. And uh, those links I, I did some six six months ago. I can still see them on client profiles, yeah. and they're sticking. They're not always the highest DA, but you can get something that is relevant because the site is, you know, carpet cleaning monthly or something like that. And you know, the the, the, the site you can actually choose the category. So I think that's quite a nice way of building it. And and for that, you you've got a network you can buy into without having to do your own sites and yeah. resell it onto clients for for much higher than the the, the dollars a day that you uh, you pay for it so yeah i think the hot leads network is quite a quite a good one actually yeah i i, I agree i mean I, i've I, again i've seen um some of the stuff when i've put it onto Holly's news network has actually mm. moved the needle yeah um i think the relevancy um mm. relevancy over high da yeah. uh, was was something that came up a fair few times uh in seo under uh, during seo underground yeah. and i think we all agreed that yeah high da is great First of all, providing that it's actually legitimately a mm. high DA, mm. that it hasn't just been manufactured. But second yeah. of all, that, that's good for kind of giving a grounding as to uh, legitimacy of a, of a site and so on mm. and so forth. But it doesn't do much for 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 relevancy, uh, and that's yeah. where you know potentially lower lower DA but highly relevant, uh, good quality sites. Yeah, uh, that's that's where they come into their own. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so SEO Underground was like the the first one you did, mm. and uh, was that the first SEO conference you've ever organised? Is that a kind of a completely new thing, or have you been involved in events or things in the past? I've been involved in events in the past, but not SEO events. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, back in my corporate life, I used to organise mm. lots and lots of events. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, okay. the organisation side didn't really worry me. Yeah. Um, um, had a had a great uh, deal of uh, of help from uh, from the guys you know from people like Craig and mm -hmm. uh, you know Mike and yeah, yeah. and so on and so forth to to bring in the uh, you know to bring in the speakers which I'm really mm. really grateful for because we end up getting some great speakers Peter van der Graaf mm. uh, oh, yeah, sticks yeah. in my mind fantastic a, yeah amazing yeah. <laughs> What a guy! What Just a, a guy. an eye opener. I mean, I, you know, I know, I know. Obviously, you have videos from the from the day. Peter yes. Vandergrat. I don't know. I mean, there were a few people that really stuck out, but and I had the chance to speak to to Peter for a little bit. The stuff that he is um, again, you know, thinking the stuff we're talking a little about thinking outside of the box. The I think the great SEOs are the ones that really do challenge things, think differently. And uh, yeah, if you, you ever see uh, Peter's video from SEO Underground or or see him speak or whatever else, you, the, yeah. the, the, it's next level. Probably the next couple of levels up really it was oh. it was an eye-opener <laughs> for sure yes opinion sculpting I opinion mean, that, sculpting that was, yeah. yeah yeah that Amazing. was uh, his subject and to think that um you know that people's thoughts can be kind of you know bent slightly yeah. uh, by what they're seeing how they're <clears> experiencing <throat> it was was pretty yeah. mind-bending yeah in itself I think it's probably not not a surprise that you know that the idea that, that um, things are being shaped. That's probably not that much of a surprise when you think about media. But yes. I think in terms of SEO, like specific campaigns to not only promote certain articles but negatively SEO certain other things, and to, to you know to change yeah. the narrative. Uh, and obviously, Peter explained that he'd worked with with governments, with multinationals, with defense companies, with energy. You know, it was it was very interesting. I have yeah. to say that definitely definitely um, um, stood out. So so I mean. I and I think also it's very brave of you to put together a in person an in person conference in the middle of a pandemic. I have to say, I mean, I, I bought tickets <laughs> earlier on, and you I did? was thinking, is it? I, I did buy tickets earlier on, yeah. Yeah, you and did. Yeah, I did. Oh, right, yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought yeah, you said you did. No, I did. And no, 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 like, no, you're you wondering, no, wondering, no, like, is it going ahead? Yeah. Is it going ahead? Because you just you just don't know, and it's like. Well, um, we had to move it around a little bit if you remember yes. because yes. it was actually supposed to go out uh, beginning of this year yes um but it became very clear um sort of yeah. uh, during the second lockdown yeah. that uh, it was going to have to be pushed out and uh uh, we were very fortunate to have uh, Odis as uh, as our key yes. sponsor, which was brilliant, and they were really really keen for us to to do a live event. Um, yes. So we uh, we wanted to to try and do that as best mm -hmm. as we possibly could. And then suddenly this, you know, um, I, I'd wobbled a couple of times, and you know, mm -hmm. I'd spoken to a couple of the guys, and they'd sort of said, you know, mm -hmm. I still think that there's that there's something in this. Yeah. So we so. Um, you know, we kept quiet for a while and then yeah. suddenly we went all out uh, mm -hmm. about uh, a month and a half before it was due to come out. And yeah, uh, yeah the, the uptake was really good, um, yeah. especially for, a, you know, for an event that had no track record. Mm -hmm. um, it was really well supported. Um, mm -hmm. The feedback I got was was excellent. Yeah. 
our per- the person that came from the furthest away was uh, from the UAE. Uh, he, wow. he was yeah. <laughs> he, he'd flown in especially, and he was flying yeah. straight back out again uh, wow. to uh, to uh, to to uh, UAE. Uh, so shout yeah. out to Frederick if you're uh, if you're yeah. watching this. Um, so uh, yeah, and and he absolutely loved it, and he was mm. he and he he messaged me and said, you know, as soon as as soon as I know the next the next SEO Underground, I'm on the plane. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I got uh, I got a lot out of it. But you know, so it's the first face to face conference I've been. So I'm relatively new into the SEO industry. To be fair, uh, coming from my um, photographer background, but I guess mm. SEO is most of what I do now. And obviously, I'm doing this. And COVID's been a big change on that. But um, yeah, to to be able to meet people in person. So there was a lot of learnings from the day and all the different speakers and different perspectives there were a lot of learnings from uh, you know there's was, there was obviously a dinner and some of the social side was great and there were some yes. again knowledge bombs and nuggets coming out from that as well and just the whole networking side of things it's actually not that big an industry you know i mean i think that you know if you look at okay there's there's agencies and there's web design companies and there are a lot of those uh, out there but i think actually people that are really involved in seo and, and some of the you know black gray hat whatever you want to call it mass page building is is phenomenally niche rank and rent you yeah. know it, it's a niche you know it's a niche within a in a niche you know you've got digital marketing and then you get down to seo and then local seo and then rank and mm. rent and you know it's um I think it's uh, you know it's it's interesting to uh, to to see that. So as a way of networking absolutely. and, and meet, meeting people, you know the chance. I mean, I, Craig Campbell, absolutely fantastic. You know the chance to meet Craig, have a beer, have a chat. And what I found is that people were genuinely uh, friendly. You know, there's, there's there's no doubt there's some questions, there's some mavericks, and there's some characters uh, <laughs> in amongst the, the group. Oh yes, and and some stories. But um, I you think know who great. you are. Yeah, you know who you there's are. quite a few of them, but I, but I think actually the chance to meet meet some of these people in person and have a chat and and shoot the breeze uh, was was great. So uh, I mean, I don't know if you're planning to do one again. Uh, you know, put me down for a ticket if you are. But you know, oh, have, yes. you got, have you got any thoughts to? to yeah, kind of we're, we're probably going to move yeah. the we're going to move the venue. The reason that we we chose uh, my home, well, Newmarket, was because it was kind of off the beaten track, and mm. that was one of the uh, sort of the COVID decisions really that we yes. took is that we didn't really want it to be you know too in a too built up area um, mm-hmm. in a in a in a, a massively open sort of environment yeah so the decision was taken to basically open up the uh millennium stadium uh, for for us to to have that there and uh, you probably noticed that there wasn't actually very many other people there and no. that was because um we, yeah. we picked a date uh, yes. specifically for us um Next time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, put it uh, near an airport, uh, which then yeah. hopefully opens it up to, uh, to to more people flying in, um, and also near to a main train line as well. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at um, what hotels are available around sort mm. of Stansted, uh, yeah. potentially yeah. Heathrow, somewhere somewhere like that. Um, and yeah, I think at some point next year. Uh, mm-hmm. You could probably see SEO Underground: The Revenge. Yeah, well, look, uh, look forward to. It. I'm just about recovered from the last one. It was a bit of a heavy <laughs> night, so I have to say the first night, but right. uh, it was uh, it was a good one. So no no uh, no complaints. But and you, you still think you, you still positioning it as a black hat conference? Is that how you think? Is that kind of the purpose of it? Do you, do you see it kind of changing focus at all? Is that very much where you've kind of nailed your nailed the line? I think I think the thing is is that there's quite a few SEO conferences that are just SEO conferences. Yeah. Um, the jury's out on 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 that. Although I'd like to see it still black hat because mm-hmm. I, I think that there is a community and and it's also to try and encourage people to not take it as meaning that we're all a bunch of sinister people. Yeah. Um, that, that, or that it's uh, illegal. Yeah. 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 Or that it's it illegal. Might be, which, it might be unconventional. Which it, it might not be in line with some of Google's guidelines, but it's not. Um, it can be that's illegal, right. but that's uh, that's. Uh, it's not uh, not normally. Uh, yes, it's, that's it, yeah. not the bit that we're that we're focusing on. This is mm. just you know different ways to get your website found. Um, yeah. So so the jury's out on on, on that, but it's probably mm. going to still be black hat because yeah. because I I like I like the people. Yeah. Um, they're you know they're interesting. They're they're all mavericks in some way, shape, yes. or form. Some more so than others. You know who you are, um, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, and 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 th- those are the types of people that I'd like to support because mm. I feel that um, it's underrepresented. There aren't yeah. that many uh, black hat conferences. Mm. Um, it's niche, but I'm I'm happy 
to be niche because yeah. I know that niche works yeah. and yeah. you can build a really, really good bond with those guys who are inside um, that niche. And actually they wield quite a lot of power, um, yeah. you know, in, in, in the world of, of web. Um, and, and so those are the types of people that I'd like on my side. Yeah, yeah. I think that the networking side of things is very valuable. I mean, Adam Poland's just commented up there to say that was the the best uh, best part of it, and I think that's right. I mean, I yes. had known Adam because I'm part of Chris Chambers' coaching group, and Adam is as well. So we'd had a bit of a chat before, but obviously that was a chance to to meet him in, in person, and we're now doing some work together on on a project, and that and that's been great. And I've had some contact with uh, Craig. I had a call with Craig last week, and there's just more people that are, you know, and people are actually genuinely really really friendly, even if they might not appear yes. to be so friendly. Uh, so I think actually this this part of the industry is much smaller than people might imagine, and I think yeah. people are much prepared to help if you you can reach out. A lot of people just have a chat and point you in the right di- direction. I think we've got some really specialist knowledge in this yes. area that is is valuable, you know. And uh, it's not it's not magic. And I mean, I learn new stuff every single day of the year. I'm watching YouTube videos. I'm absorbing it stuff and speaking to people, and, and that's one of the, the great things about it. And there's so much to to learn and, and new stuff. And whilst you know the whole SEO is dead thing is is a well trodden sort of cliche you know the number of people searching for s about seo on the trends it goes up each year you know the yeah. the role of in corporate seo local seo affiliate marketing seo is is becoming bigger i don't i don't think the industry is dead or anywhere closer i think it's becoming bigger you know and tiktok <laughs> optimization pinterest optimization there's all sorts of stuff you know yeah. that's going to be out there it's it's far from far from dead i think i think the other thing as well simon is that um is that the reason that people think that SEO is uh, is dead is because there's a lot of people out there who either are not really doing SEO, yeah. um, but are claiming that they are, or there are a lot of people who are paying, you know, a couple of hundred pounds a month for SEO and expecting mm. miracles and not getting yeah. them. Yeah, um, it's it's about kind of opening up the veil and kind of accepting that if you want decent SEO. Mm. You have to pay for it, yeah. and it's not a hundred pounds um, from a. And it's, you know, it's long term. It's long term yes. as well, medium to long term. You know, it's a it, six month plus six year, to twelve you know. month investment. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. It, it really is, and and it, it should be. Um, you know, it should be do- documentable. It should be easy to see. Your, you know, what's happened to your website over that mm. period. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and and why that's happening. The key yeah. thing as a, as a website owner is that you have to be sure that, you know, the things that you want to get found for, because as an SE, again, the other thing that gets crossed over is that business owners tend to, you know, look for people who essentially, are, you know, they're not going to run their business for them. They're not going to, you know, it's not going to, to potentially uh, um, do anything if they don't actually know as a business owner what it is that they need or mm. the types of people that they need to have coming through their door. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's where things start to get a little bit fuzzy because people don't want to take the time to actually analyze who their customers are, who their ideal no. customer avatars are. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and that, that of course, is, is something that is, is missing in, in a lot of businesses mm-hmm. today. Yeah. Um, and, of course, SEO is only a part of that because – as SEOs, we can bring people to a website, mm-hmm. um, but it has to be the right type of people doing the right type of action yeah. to get the right type of outcome. Yeah, uh, exactly, and, and, yeah. And, and I think it requires complete buy-in. If you're going to be mm-hmm. investing a thousand pounds a month, realistically, you need to be bought in to the mm-hmm. to the whole thing to make sure that you rinse it and get the most out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was speaking to. Um... Uh, not a client, a contact uh, just uh, last week and looking at some of the stuff on their site. And they'd had some SEO work done and it was optimized, but they were feeling that they weren't getting any conversions in the, in the right type of traffic. And when you looked at what their proposition was, it was very specific for a very specific demographic, very specific market, very specific yeah. location. They, oh, this is perfect. This will work really well. It's really niche, everything else. And then you looked at the SEO that we've been done and it was all about cheap this 
best this you yeah. know all that kind of stuff and i think well that you know that that's great but you you're not even a cheap service you're a premium service your marketing's yeah. premium your website looks great but you you're saying and you may well get some traffic out of that because you can put in cheap whatever service in in yeah. london and you know maybe you'll hoover up some some um traffic from that and then it, yeah. but it won't convert because your service yeah. isn't cheap and it's completely pointless but maybe the maybe um maybe the agency can show well look here, here you know you've got some more traffic what, what more do you want us to do but yeah i don't think that's yeah. that is the thing is is that you can be wielded as a you know as a yeah. bit of a weapon um and, and and i agree with you it's very very easy to bring in a load of dross um traffic mm. that is no you know but but again <clears throat> you know it, the the statistics and the results should be indicative of the fact that it's rubbish mm. um and, and there, therefore needs to be avoided but it, it, it is a hearts and minds kind of thing and if you're taking it on uh you know, as a, uh, as a website, I've actually even stopped saying to clients about, you mm. know, well, what are you going to do once the website's designed? Yeah. And that's another reason that I'm, I've kind of stepped away and I'm doing more of this other stuff mm. is because um, you know, clients don't want to hear it. They, 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 yeah. they, you know, many clients don't want to hear that you have to do more after you've spent yeah. three, five, seven yeah. thousand. They don't want to hear it six to nine months. They don't want to hear that it's no. an ongoing thing. They don't want no. to hear that they can't just turn it on and get it next week. And yeah, yeah they don't they, they don't they don't want to hear it. Whereas obviously and I think a lot of agencies want to sell PPC because then it is they can show stuff that you know well, next week we'll we'll optimize, we'll get your Facebook ads go up and running, we'll yeah. take X percent and then we're we're off and up and running. And um the SEO s- stories are, are a bit of a more of a heavyweight kind of education. And I think also SEO is a, uh, you know, it's a, this has been spoken about a lot. It's a toxic word because mm. the number of people that are, you know, I get phone calls every day. Uh, you probably do too. I get emails every day. The spam comes through and people are selling SEO. And I think the regular client, you know, your, your local client, you know, they, 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 they've heard it yeah. before. You know, that somebody's phoned yes. them and said, I don't want any SEO. So when you talk about SEO, it's a, it's a turnoff for a lot of people. And I think you really need, you need to build up that um uh, relationship and a bit of trust and probably not talk about SEO, probably talk about leads and, you know, leads, and conversions, yes. you know, inquiries, the things that every business yeah. wants. And the, the SEO bit is a, a little bit more in the background, I think. And I think this is a lot of people don't often get that because the people we were all excited to talk about seo and backlinks and all the things we can do we can yeah. do some blogs and this and that and I think people just it bewilders people whereas people selling ppc it's great i can put something up and we could ha- we can have some leads tomorrow and often they you know they can turn it on and, and the, the pipe the you know the, the the flow of stuff can can happen within a few days yeah. if you have a, a good optimized campaign so um I'll give you a SEO does require education doesn't it? it it really does i'll give you a really great example because i, I quite often suggest to clients that they start with ppc because it, it, it does first of all it demonstrates uh, it's kind of a um it kind of shows that uh, the website will do its job if mm. if the right amount of, of the right traffic comes in. Adam's absolutely right. It's not all yeah, about yeah, more traffic. Yeah. He's uh, spot on. Um, but it's the right type of traffic. Uh, so PPCs are always very, very good at demonstrating um, that the website actually does the job that it's supposed to do. Uh, mm. Plus, you also get to find out the search terms that people are using to come to your website. And actually, mm-hmm. you can use that to start to build a framework for uh, for an SEO campaign, uh, mm-hmm. if that's what the client wants. But if the product or the offer isn't right, uh, you've got no no chance. I, I have a, a client who uh, had found out that one of their employees had been overpricing all of their products. And mm-hmm. we couldn't work it out because we hadn't got a first base with, with PPC. They were getting around about... Uh, a thousand people coming to their site every month Mm. and they were going through all the different stuff in the shop but nobody was getting anywhere past sticking stuff in a basket right and it turned out when we started to look at these things these things were five or six times the price they should have been i i could have bought them off amazon for cheaper right and so and so you know off the back of that if the recipe is right then then Mm. it all starts to go to pieces and it doesn't matter what you do (laughs) No, but you'll you'll get you'll get the blame because you, know, you yes. sent the wrong traffic or or whatever. But actually, it's not going to convert, is it? And uh, exactly, yeah. I think this whole area of conversion optimization is is interesting. Again, something I'm trying to learn learn more about because 
you know, <laughs> the key to the the business. It's the other part of the it's the other side it of is. SEO, isn't it? And um, it I think there's a lot to uh, a lot to learn there. There's a few interesting YouTubers. I'm going to forget the the guy's name now. Flint McLaughlin. I think there's an mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, I don't know if you've come across him, but he's he focuses on marketing and conversion conversion rate optimization. I think that's the term. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just really interesting stuff to make you think about. You know where you where you place the messages, the images, the whole sort of thing. There's a whole science there that uh, uh, certainly he talks about, which is which is really interesting. I'd certainly like to know more about it. Well, C- CRO is 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 a is a fascinating uh, concept mm. because the the first thing you need though is is you need sufficient amount of traffic. Most people yes. who are seriously doing CRO <laughs> won't look at a website unless it's got over twenty thousand visits yeah. a month. Because yeah. you need a sample um, size, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. because they can then turn around and say, <clears throat> well, it doesn't matter what you think, Simon, or what mm. I think, Paul, but actually it matters what the data says. And if the data says that this person isn't, pre- these people are not pressing that button, then yeah. that button needs to change. Yes. And, and and actually that's a really powerful thing because mm. you're actually getting the vote of the feet. Mm. And and if, if you're getting that, then you can actually do something about it because it yeah. may just be that it needs to be a different color or in a different place mm-hmm. or a different yeah, Some of the things are subtle, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think did Amazon do some um, research where they felt that the yellow button was the strongest one. It was the most likely to be clear and there was some sort of psychology about it <clears throat> and again these things you know if, you, if you're talking about a local site maybe with a you know you get 10 visitors a day that's not going to be that big but yeah you look at across amazon you know a one two percent shift either way on a button click through whatever yeah. it's going to make a you know tens of millions of dollars hundreds of yeah, millions absolutely. Probably, yeah. absolutely so so cro definitely has its has its place i think again starting to look at the colors of buttons when you've just mm. got a brand new website probably isn't the best time to start doing it. Yeah. Uh, getting that data, it, data, it's isn't it? yeah. data and yeah. analysis and, and then reacting to the data. But also that's also a little bit harder when you're dealing with a, a CEO of a business because yes. quite often CEOs start making emotional choices. I, I was yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. They like, they like purple. No, the green's yes. the best button color or yellow. No, I want purple. You know, there's all, uh, because it's about a lot of, a lot of time with a small or you know, even a large business, the, the, the website and the colors, the whole thing is obviously yeah. the CEO has been very personally involved because a lot of the time it's like the part of their personal branding. Yes. It's, it's, it's part, you know, it kind of complements it. So if you go in and say, I mean, SEO is one thing you can change the technical stuff and some of the wording, this and that, and they don't notice it. But if you get in and say, actually, the whole format of this website that they've maybe personally signed off, it's a much it's a much more awkward discussion because there's more emotions. It is. Uh, absolutely. It, 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 it is. It, it, and, and also, quite often, you don't get the changes past them. And then yeah. they'll still, it, it becomes, you know, a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because they're not getting the increases that they want, but they're not willing to change because um, they're too emotionally attached. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's kind of a, um, you know, for, from from that perspective, it, it's it's a, it is a concern because you, yeah. you can't win uh, if, if you're doing CRO at that point. Yeah. Everyone they've needs got, to come with an empty, with an open mind. They've got to buy into the process. I think you're pushing water uphill with a rake if you if you don't do that. You know, they've, they've got to believe in the data and the, the process to to be prepared to make the the changes. So um, so awesome. Look, so uh, Walter, hi Walter, how are you doing? Um, hey Walter. W- Walter's got a question here. Um, what's the basic sales cycle look like? So I, I can talk about mine, but you're the guest, Paul. So I don't know if you you've got a kind of a sales mm. cycle that you go through. What's your your approach? I know I know Walter has his own he's a, his own marketing brand and he's trying to build that up uh, it's like an agency style branding so maybe you can help, yeah. help with some thoughts on that for walter yeah for sure um uh, so the first thing is is that when uh, we get an inquiry come through is to work out what type of buyer they are are they a buyer that just wants to have a means to an end i.e they want a site they don't really care what it's going to do but they've been told that they need to have a site you know so that's kind of one compartment they're not really the people that we personally like to deal with because we like to go through the whole process with them um the second type of people who are the people we are interested in are the types of people who are looking to have a long-term partnership or relationship with us and by that i mean for them to get something out of the relationship in the end so um uh, the way that we kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, qualify that, if you like, is to um, is, is to basically ask them, you know, about 
Um, are, they, are they afraid to talk about budgets? Some people get really, really funny when you say, you know, do you have a budget in mind? As if that you're going to try and like lift their leg or try and, you know, yeah. say, if so, somebody says, yeah, I've got £10,000 budget. You go, well, that's exactly how much your website is. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's how much it's going to cost, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and of course, for me, I would really rather say to somebody, well, look, you don't really, you should not be spending the whole of your budget on no. a website. You should be spending a proportion of that on a website and the rest of it on a way of promoting that website to actually get your return. Yeah. Um, now that sometimes blows people's minds. So again, you have to watch how they're reacting because mm -hmm. if you start going down this line of, you know, you need to keep some money back because uh, uh, you're going to need to promote your website and they say, well, isn't that what you're doing? Isn't that why we're having a new website? And of course, mm -hmm. That's quite a, a prickly sort of subject because, mm. of course, you know, they bought you in because they think a website is the answer. Quite often, a website is not the no. answer to a business's uh, problems. Yeah. Quite often, it is a symptom of the fact that the business isn't performing. Um, yeah. and, and therefore, the real reason that most people want a new website is because they want more business. Yes. Um, it's an easy and, thing to show, a visible thing, isn't it? I mean, sometimes if like a managing director changes or a marketing director or whatever, having the new website is their most visible thing and kind of easiest in a way and everyone get excited about it. And then you're absolutely yeah. right, they can launch it and then there's no traffic, there's no SEO, the, the conversion issues are still there as, as before yes. and it's a zero-sum game and then they, they change marketing director again, get a new one yeah. and he brings out a new uh, website, you know. Yeah, um, that's, that's so right. And, 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 of course, the, the, the thing is about a <clears> website – uh, is that it, it's it's your best salesperson. Mm. It's there 365 days a year, doesn't ever ask for a pay rise, doesn't take holidays, never gets sick. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is it is the the salesperson that is on mm. message all of the time. And yet it's probably it has the cheapest budget, the smallest amount invested mm. in it, mm -hmm. and the biggest expectations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And where where would you say most of your leads come from? And have you got a sales team? Are you doing SEO for your own site? Are you doing PPC? Where, 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 what starts your sales cycle, Jen, typically speaking? Yeah, mo most of our stuff comes uh, via inquiries online. Um, yeah. We have quite a lot of repeat business because we yeah. have, have had we've been trading for ten years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know we're very very grateful to our to our regular clients who, who come back to us. Yeah. Um, so so we're not. You know, we're a, a you know a small agency of you know four four people, so so we're yeah. not you know we're not super super huge. Yeah. But yeah. actually, I would rather be choosy about the people that mm. I work with who actually get it, and who actually can mm. you, know, you know conform to the way that we want to work than trying to hammer people into my way of of working mm. because it, it you know and certainly in the UK people are very very reserved and they don't understand. And still don't understand. And I'll tell you a, a, an area that's a great example of this. Mm. Retailers. Mm -hmm. Retailers still haven't understood that this is an oncoming storm. That retail mm. is going to decline. Yes. Even year, more than it already year. has. Yeah. Even yes, more. Yeah. It's not bottomed uh, out yet, guys. It's even no, more. It's going yeah. to continue. And it yeah. will continue. And, 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 and long into the future. But mm. the amount of, of retailers who are in complete denial that it mm. is anything other than a blip, anything other than high rents, uh, yeah. council taxes, rates, too high, yeah, business rates, you know, all that. Yeah, if, if only, we, yeah, if only the rent was lower in the business, then we'd have more yeah. customers. It, they're not related, are the ones are cost and ones are, uh, you know, traffic and sales of issues. Yeah. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm doing, I'm doing some, some, some work with, with, uh, with our local uh, town because they've got statistics on footfall, and it's very, very clear yeah. footfall is in decline. And if footfall is yeah. in decline. I'm afraid to say that sales are in decline. Yes. Um, and that yeah. is why they, you know, the idea of things like a digital high street uh, to, yeah. to help replace uh, 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 those clients is something that, uh, that, that, that retailers should really, really be looking at right now. Not just having sort of a, a you know, a, a business card on a website. Mm. Uh, they, they should be looking to go <laughs> all out because otherwise they're going to end up with nothing. Yeah, yeah. And do you do any kind of local like networking? Are you focused on the like new market and the area, or do you focus on a niche? You know, or are you just kind of in a few, a few different areas? Is there any kind of theme for uh, your clients? I do do some networking. Um, 
selfishly, I set up, uh, well, I, I inherited a network working group locally. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of networking to a point. Mm. Um, uh, the, the point being that going back to the same room with the same people yeah. uh, week in, week out, I think is, uh, is quite short sighted mm. because it, it ends up becoming um, uh, too insular. And yeah. you end up never looking outside of that group. And I've actually found um, that my biggest gains have been uh, sort of since the pandemic, where I've had to mm. start to think on my feet and start mm -hmm. to think to myself, OK, well, what are the different ways that I can get in front of different people? Yeah. And actually then, you know, using things, uh, yeah, as you say, uh, improving our own uh, online uh, uh presence but also things like linkedin yeah. um running ads uh, th mm -hmm. those types of things all of those things have been very very beneficial and of course you know our old friend seo um yeah. you know we we get you know we we probably get um i don't know 10 or 15 leads a week from the local area and probably mm -hmm. about the same again from from further afield yeah. um you know and and we can convert probably about 30% of those uh, into, yeah. into some meaningful business. Yeah. And then are you, you know, so when you have the inquiry, I mean, just sort of following on from Walter's question about sales side, because yeah. you, get, you get the inquiry and it sounds like you're getting it from different sources, some sort of network and virtual network. You've got some paid ads running, you've got some SEO, you've got some word of mouth referrals. And so you've got different things coming in. How, when it comes into you are, you, are you taking that that sales discussion? Have you got somebody in the team before that does that? You know, how do you, how do you move it through the, the, the flow? And how do you do it efficiently as well? Because I, I guess, mm. There's only so many hours in the day that if you're the the owner, you know you want to put your name to it, but you can't do every every conversation. But how, how do you how do you handle it? I think um, a lot of people try and get rid of the commercial side as the first thing uh, on their list. I kind of wish I could let go of the commercial mm. aspect. It's something that I would probably tell everyone that I was rubbish at, but I actually still can't let go of it. Yeah. Um, so um, I do personally tend to follow up with all of all of the inquiries that come through yeah. um but you know again that's kind of one of the reasons that i'm looking to do more towards rank and rent yeah. because um the process is a lot more simplified mm -hmm. in as much as um you know we can approach um let's say roofers and yeah. we can say you can have these leads uh, for a week or a fortnight and you know if you like what you get let's sign up and if you don't mm. no hard feelings um yeah. the the onus is completely on us to prove that we're what we're doing is good which i think yeah. is excellent because we mm -hmm. are not selling snake oil we're selling something that potentially yeah. is going to help a business which i love because it's provable uh, yeah. rather than something uh, that um, you know is very very difficult and again lining people up you know people mm. say they do seo you know there's people who do seo and there's people who do seo yeah. so again you know you can circumvent that with rank and rent because you can say well look don't take my word for it just mm. take the leads yeah and if you like the leads pay me for them <clears throat> And it sounds like you've got that very much that partnering <laughs> that partnering approach as well. So you, you it sounds like you're being transparent on data. You're having yes. a call with them. You're trying to understand their business, and then you're you're obviously coming back with a solution. So I guess you're you're a smaller business, so you can be a little bit more bespoke in what you select them. I know I've I've worked with marketing agencies, and um, uh, I'm sure you're not like this at all. But they they send through one one thing. You know, whatever you say to them, whatever answer to any question that is asked, you're getting a package, <laughs> and the package is <laughs> X. We're going to do your yes. GMB you're going to get pay per click you're going to get that and it's a one way street yeah. and it's they, 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 it's just a kind of veneer of yeah we we'll understand your business and the sales guy goes I've just spoken to a manager and if you sign up today we can do you know a half price package and it you know it, it was always going to be the way and it's it's quite frustrating yeah. I think probably for a lot of the small business owners I, I agree with you I think I think the, the, there's a few things there in that in that kind of uh, process um, and and yeah I think I think packages generally don't fit most of the people that you that you sell them to yeah. um but conversely one of the other things that i really really can't abide is um sending out massive proposals yeah. um mainly because i'm a big believer that it is documenting your stupidity and um you're effectively giving away absolutely everything and you know that that person is likely to use it to smash somebody else over the head with yeah. to either get them <laughs> down the price. We've had another or... offer from, yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. and, and um, 
to my mind, I like striking deals with people there and then. So if, you know, if you're talking to the boss and they can make a decision, you say, okay, what are you looking to spend on this? And they say, look, between this and this, and we say, well, okay, we think it's probably going to be somewhere in between that. Yeah. We can probably do that. If that's okay with you, should we go ahead? (laughs) We write a, um, a one page, um, you know, kind of uh, order, order, that, yeah. that, that outlines all of the the salient points, the things that they want to um, capture, yeah. and um, we make sure that they sign off on it. We sign off on it, and then we go we go to work. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't matter what what it is that we're doing, whether it's SEO, whether it's web design. Mm-hmm. You know, we we have to all be in agreement that it needs to be something that we can all sign our names to and say, look, yeah. we think you can do this. I think you can do this. You think I can do this. That's great. Let's use that as our as our benchmark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we've all probably written those those type of pre- uh, proposals and presentations. I know I did. I, I worked in corporate land for twenty five years yes. in blue chip companies, and you know we've all written those monster RFP documents. I mean, I've, I was involved yes. in one that was eight hundred pages once, and it was horrendous, and it took but a team of honest, twenty people. And you know, I don't think they read it. Anyway. <laughs> I don't think Where's they read it. They They'd already decided what they wanted to do. You know, so it was just get, it was a game. Yeah. Because most of it is is loads of paragraphs that you copied and pasted from something yeah. else that you've done anyway. Yeah, yeah, so so yeah. all they're getting is is a load of insincere nonsense mm. that actually isn't about your project at all. And, yeah. and so and so therefore nobody wins. All it looks like is is they can thumb mm. through it at their board meeting and say, "Look at this, we've got a fifty page proposal here." Yeah, and th- and then you suddenly find out it's for a website for five thousand pounds, and you think, "Well, yeah. that is totally disproportionate to the amount yeah. of money they're yeah. spending." But a, lot, a lot of companies will have a standard procedure, and they'll they'll procure it in the same way they might procure office furniture yes. or a, an IT system or a server. They might procure. Yeah creative uh, services in the same way and it doesn't uh, doesn't always uh doesn't always uh, end well I, I mean from my my sort of sales uh, cycle point of view i'm different to, to you I mean, I'm, I'm a freelancer you know i've i'm you know in terms of full-time seo most of it's maybe a year year and a half you know so my background was photography and i was, I was always involved doing some digital stuff you know, build a website for somebody, this and that. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was an eBayer. Uh, I absolutely love eBay, the whole thing of selling it. Never made any money out of it, but I was selling <laughs> stuff quite high volume, 50 parcels a day. And, Ooh, you know, it, it was, it was you know, I was a power seller and everything else. And it was interesting to to learn about that. I learned some of the stuff about SEO then, and we had some quite high ranking gardening websites and, and all the rest of it. But, you know, all that time I was working in, you know, in sales and in a, a corporate account manager kind of role. Um, so, you know, I, I left that and then became self-employed and then you know was focused on photography and some digital stuff but mm-hmm. photography was mainly what I was doing and that's how I learned my, my local stuff and you know focused on that ranking my own websites then helping other photographers and and obviously then COVID changed everything and like a lot yeah. of people sort of pivoted on this and now I'm, I'm doing stuff like this and never thought I'd do live streams or everything else and but I think you know it, COVID has, has challenged all of us to think a little bit different about what we do. So business models are changing sure. and what we're doing. So most of my clients are, are still photographers and I do a lot of work with them. Uh, and actually, I don't SEO my photography website anymore because I don't want to compete with my own clients. So I kind of took all the stuff off and left it. And then I, I have in my local area, three of my students all rank you on page one for the search term I used to rank on uh, myself. So, you know, you've got to kind of get that that balance right. But the, the you know, just going back to Walter's question about sales side, I'm a freelancer, so I'm not the same as, as you, Paul, and you know the different sort of approach. Uh, and I'm not looking to do as uh, probably a similar direction to you as much client SEO as maybe some people would do. I'm trying to explore, yeah, absolutely mass page building with affiliate, yeah. mass page building with um, yeah local lead generation. Uh, and I I have a little bit of a kind of a hybrid <clears throat> uh, model where I build a, a mass page site for 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 somebody. But it's done as, on a subdomain as uh, f- of their website, so it's it's not pure rank and rent, um, but it's not also part of their website. So I control the hosting, I control the subdomain. There's pros and cons to that. I get control, but obviously I have to build up some of the domain authority because it's a subdomain, not the not a sub uh, a subfolder. Um, sure. But the the client sees it as part of their 
um, domain, so they see it as part of their website, and uh, and I think also it will convert higher because of it too. So, you know, that's something I'm yeah. you know exploring and uh, and developing as well. But that's mainly with uh, with photographers. So my my kind of sales cycle is I I do stuff like this. So you know you obviously kind of put yourself out there and do do live streams. I um, have done some presentations in other Facebook groups that are part of that niche. So if I do a lot of photography stuff. So I do stuff in photography groups. But if you were in another niche, you might do more you know local networking as you said uh, earlier on you could join a bni or a network b2b or some of the other kind of local groups but i think all of it because i think seo is quite a hard sell actually out of the blue cold you do need a warm referral you need somebody to be you know you need the whole no like trust thing of, of sales that people to need to know you be aware of you need to like what you're doing trust you a little bit and then they're going to be open to having a discussion because some of these things are very personal about people's businesses you know if yeah. they're failing you know in a small business you know you might have your home uh, up up for grabs you know you might be this is your pension gone you know you, you you're not going to be able to put any money away to for for uh, later in life you know and you need to have that trust to do it. So, you know, from a from a sales cycle point of view, I try and put myself out there. I try and have a, a an initial conversation with someone who do a lot of these uh, uh, Zoom calls and Google Meets and one to one. Try and help people. Try and add a bit of value and and not sort of gouge their eyes out on on a you know twenty minute half an hour conversation. And then if there's a there's a fit and there's a good good kind of feeling, you can. You know, I've got a number of things I can say. Well, have you think about this? And what about mass page? Or we could do some content or X and Y, and and take them from there. But uh, but yeah, the services I'm offering, I'm not trying to do 100% client SEO because I I don't want to find myself in the middle of a Wix uh, website trying to SEO it and, and or arguing with a web designer. That's the worst nightmare. Because it's it's put, <laughs> but it becomes um um a, 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 like a tug of war, doesn't it? Really? Because yeah. if you've got a web designer on one side who's built it and it looks great and all the rest of it and then you try and say well where's the where's the h1s where's the h1 where's you know where's this with that you know where's the where's yeah. the form for conversion and you have yeah. a, a, a tug of war so it can be a bit painful so I'm, I'm trying not to develop what i do as a freelancer in that area i'm trying to do mass page building and i was and then obviously you know my, my retirement fund hopefully more in affiliate marketing which is something I'm much yeah. more recently into but i think um the attractions of rank and rent and affiliate marketing it's the same thing isn't it you're in control and you're owning an asset and you know whether it's um you know a local plumber's website whether it's a pbn whether it's whatever you've got is is something that you can control and repurpose so um Absolutely. yeah not no client seo for wix websites uh, is uh, i'm staying away from those sounds, <laughs> sounds like you are as well but, it should, so. should be a t-shirt with that on yeah so anyway hope we, we, yeah we covered a few things off there but walter i hope that's helpful just a few thoughts on that but i think the Indeed. no like and trust that kind of initial contact trying to understand the customer build some trust and and take it through i you know i i don't do any seo on my seo website i, I just i i try and you know do things in other areas and most of it sort of facebook and social media trying to yeah. and, and being part of a niche and, and, a, and a you know in a community really that's why that's what yeah. i've been doing I think I think every five years a business needs to kind of re-adapt itself into something, and I think yeah. that COVID has been the mm. the leveler for any business that hasn't hasn't done that lately. Um, yeah. And I think it's certainly made me, you know, we, I mean, you know, being completely frank, we we lost forty thousand pounds worth of sales in a week yeah. um, through cancelled uh, yeah. through cancelled orders. Yeah. You know, and and my I think my lowest month during COVID was eighteen hundred pounds. So that really makes you, uh, uh, you know, stop and take stock because that's not a sustainable business. And when you've yeah. got people to pay wages, yeah. you've got salaries, you've got offices, like you've got commitments. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not and you've run out of stuff yeah. to sell. Yeah, uh, you well, know, yeah. of your own, which you know, I I, I had to do scary um, stuff. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, you you start to go into uh, you know, you go into yeah. going to freefall. So that was the time where I really realised that first of all, not to have a business where essentially you are just paying wages for other people and not yourself, mm. because of course the the, the thing in the UK, um, Daryl, is that uh, they uh, you know the the uh, the furlough. The great furlough seat scheme that, that everyone talked about was great for everybody apart from directors of businesses who got nothing. <laughs> yeah, so, right, yeah. um, right. so my yeah. my employees all got paid, and I got absolutely nothing uh, other than what I could muster through my own through my own sales and my and being uh, 
uh, quick to to adapt. So so that you know from 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 uh, from my perspective, it was a yeah. massive level and and time to start to think about what could I do. So I also mm-hmm. created a couple of online stores. Um, uh, you know, started to generate some revenue through doing that. Um, started um, get this. This is started selling these. Hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> manufactured in the UK. Um, mm-hmm. Memory bears. Nice. Um, so so uh, so um, yeah. It's essentially um, yeah, my little memory bear uh, store that's uh, started to uh, to produce some revenue as well, um, where people send. Um, uh, clothing through of a of a loved okay. one and you yes, can turn okay. them into a bear. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. yeah. So we do all sorts of all types of weird and wonderful, mm. diverse things. That if you'd have asked me two years ago, yes, is that what I would have been doing? I'd have said to you, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's what it, I think. COVID's been that. I mean, Daryl, I think you've you've been involved in a lot of new businesses and some of the stuff you've done on mass pages has come out of that, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I I did do the same kind of thing. Uh, I had a lot of my consulting clients have to give me the, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. So I had to reinvent myself and I was able to uh, quickly pivot into building SaaS software because we had our own team. Cool. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I've been building software for other people for a number of years. So it was a really cool, easy pivot for for me to do. so I, I was definitely uh, in the same boat as you, Paul. Uh, besides the hairdo, we got that something else hey. in common there. Hey. So <laughs> you got the suspenders, right? My, my wife is trying to get me to do the suspender thing. You got that going on? So uh, uh, I've got I, that I going on. Cool we, we, we call them braces in the UK, uh, yeah. Daryl. Suspenders are something completely different. Uh, I don't know if Paul has those or not, but we don't judge. It's 2021. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe I am wearing suspenders. <laughs> I, you I don't know. Uh, well, by, by. by the that off air. By the by. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I've got that loud shirts. Uh, yeah, I, I love loud shirts. All of that, the louder yeah. the better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. It, it has been the reckoner of all reckoners, and I think that those who have come out the other side of it. Um, you know, are all the richer for it. Uh, and, and when I say richer, I don't mean financially. I mean although that that's ideal but but i mean just being able to to turn your hand to something else and to say okay let's not be so snobby as to say we only do this you know let's look at well what else can we do with the skills and the talents that we already have and look you know i've been building websites for for 10 years professionally i've been doing seo for 6 7 years professionally why shouldn't I be trying to do some of these things for myself mm. and not for, for people who may or may not be interested in my services in a time where money is, is scarce? Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. I yeah. Have, uh, do you mind if I ask a, just a few questions? Because we're, we're getting close Isn't to uh, time here with him. Uh, and, Paul, sure. we do want you, to spin, we want you to spin our wheel for our prizes uh, coming up. Happy to. Uh, Simon, I'm not sure if uh, you have your prize or I can just do the next domain uh, that I've got in the list. But um, We can do either. I'm going to take a bit of water, actually. I've got a sore throat. But... Yeah, go, oh, yeah, go, I think... go take, take a little break. I, me um, too. So we're in this uh, almost four hours into this. Uh, so uh, we ki- got kicked off with uh, Craig Campbell. Uh, we had you did from Pitch Ground. We have you, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Uh, he was uh, the, the guy behind the SEO Underground and um, is all around digital marketing and business and everything like that. Um, a couple of questions for you. I've been in the business a long time uh, with software and um, building websites and things like that. I've built probably over 600 websites in over the you know past, whatever, 25 years. Um, my question is, as you go down the line, your briefcase gets fuller and fuller of your requirements of a digital marketer. One is you have to be mobile responsive. Then you have to have schema. Then you have to have points of interest on your page. Then you have to do like, we just stack up 
all of these things, right, that we have to do and keep our eye on the prize for. And like you mentioned before, people that go to Wix or whatever, they're not like thinking of that. They're just going to put stuff on a page and then they're going to wonder why it doesn't rank. But we have to be like these chameleons that are like focused on the whole world, like of all of this new stuff that's coming in and coming out. So I just want to know what your opinion is about that. And when do you start to shed some things from your briefcase? Because they don't really matter as much in 2021. Yeah, it's a, that is a, an interesting point and question. I, I agree. And the other thing as well to add to that is, is all of these additional things that have come on, let's say, over the past six, seven, eight years, um, also have had a little flurry of, of interest and a little acceptance that perhaps it may cost a little bit more. And then suddenly it's, it's kind of expected rather than it being something that you could say, hey, mobile responsiveness, that's something that is really, really important. And, oh, did you know it's going to cost another X, Y, Z to uh, to add on to your, to your website? Nowadays, it's just expected. So worse than that, you've got to learn these things. You've got to understand what the context is that you're going to be doing it. And then... Um, on top of that, you're not expected to charge any more for, uh, for, yeah. for, for actually doing it, which, which is, is, is the real kicker. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I think I, I, shedding stuff, um, I find it quite difficult to, to, to actually disregard things. Um, I, I think if, if, if anything, one of the things that, that I've – I've become more aware of. We we initially sort of set ourselves up as as the company that makes things look really really pretty, and actually, you know, if you look at our websites and things like that, they generally look quite pretty. Um, but I've kind of started to put that a little bit further down my list of things that I want that because um, you can spend weeks, months making things look mm. beautiful but they actually have absolutely no impact on the outcome. Um, and so, uh, yeah, sometimes we substitute pretty for functional. And sometimes mm -hmm. that means to say that we can develop a website very, very quickly because we know what is needed. Um, and yeah, I, I, I would love to make everything look beautiful because I love form. But I also know that that's a personal thing and that isn't necessarily what people want to pay for. Um, and so I guess, you know, one of our biggest USPs has kind of started to become one of our biggest millstones. And so as, as we sort of move in, I think I, I alluded to this with Simon. Um, I have to now try and let some of that form go because it doesn't do me any good. Um, and people start to expect it. Uh, I, I had a customer today who um, is in a copyright uh, argument with, um, with a not insignificant biz, uh, company at the moment. Um, and they basically told them that they've got to change their logo. Uh, it was a logo that we developed knowing full well, or they knew full well that this was something that, um, that could be a problem, but they wanted us to do it nonetheless. And of course, now uh -huh. it's come home to roost. And they contacted me as if we were going to do it all for nothing. <laughs> and I said, yeah, oh, dear, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm afraid, you know, if we finished developing this uh, over uh, 18 months ago, we won't be, uh, we, we will be charging you for, um, for, for, any of the, uh, for any of the changes, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, that's why I've gotten away from doing as much client work. Uh, I'm building my own yeah. stuff and like doing our own affiliate and taking our expertise where we're not being, you know, sort of questioned about whether, you know, we should do this or not do that. It's all riding on me. So if, if, if I don't mm -hmm. build a campaign that uh, gets traffic and creates some affiliate revenue, that's on me. I've, I've you know, wasted my yeah. time. Right. And, and things like that. Sure. But uh, at the same time, I can take, you know, my my most experimental stuff, the stuff that are on the bleeding edge that I wouldn't have a client experience of, you know, because it is too bleeding edge for that. 
Yeah. Um, like black. Then, he's talking about black hat here. <laughs> no, I mean things that are kind of experimental that uh, I can't recommend to somebody until I know how it works, right? Yes. Uh, I, yes. I feel like that is my space. I like that space where I can actually try things out. And, um, and then, you know, hey, if you get the upper hand, you know, because of the experimentation, great, you know, um, and, and so, and it also helps me because I'm a bit of a, you know, I like to share and teach. So uh, I, I, it brings me some things to uh, the next mastermind and things like that. Or when we do consulting, um, I get to have something, you know, something more to uh, bring to the table because I've tested it out in, in, yeah. in my own environment. So um, yeah. that's, that's kind of where I'm falling with that. So um, yeah. I hope you can concur with what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. It, it, it is. It, it does give you it is quite a, a liberating experience to be able to to try these things and not actually i won't say not care but not be overly worried because if you're doing it for a mm-hmm. customer if you're doing it for a client even even traditional things and let's say you know the um you know the sands have shifted and what you'd been doing for example on seo for the past 12 months suddenly it doesn't have the impact that you were expecting it to have even though you followed your own tried and tested formula of you know doing this doing that doing that and it it isn't working anymore and suddenly um yeah you're you're out there in the wilderness so so being but being able to turn around and go okay that didn't work well i'm going to try this instead you couldn't do that with a client you just couldn't do it because because it would be too too risky um, because you know you you could be sailing into completely uncharted territory. So yeah, I do I do agree with you. I do agree with you. Yeah, awesome. I I thoroughly enjoyed having you on here. I got to say, I was sitting back <laughs> doing some work, and I'm like, Simon's doing such a good job holding this down. I'm enjoying it as a listener, uh, view, you know, viewer. <laughs> and Simon, kudos to you, my friend. I, w- I was able to get some of the emails scheduled and like handle some things with our future speakers tonight. Uh, so that is that that's code, all sorted. I was boring. Is that code for the fact that I was no, 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 <laughs> no, it, no code. It, it was enjoyable. It was like listening to something you don't want to stop. So um, the, 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 the webathon is just a webathon of one person. Uh, Daryl's just getting on with some other work. You know, he's doing yes, other things. I know. He's probably got a client <laughs> meeting. He's got a client meeting lined yeah. up. You know, I mean, I'll have done the yeah, twelve hours. Daryl done. Daryl done two two hours across the day. They got on with I other, went for a job. To yeah, he's doing some laundry. Well, he had a lot of nice lunch, you know. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been great to catch up with you, uh, Paul, and it was uh, nice great asking you some of those questions. I think we've got into some other, you know, great to talk about sort of agency stuff. You've got that experience, and, you know, there's some, uh, yeah. some good uh, um, insights for people. Now, uh, Daryl, I know you're lining up the, the draw, which is going to be very exciting, oh. but um, I'm just wondering before we get into that, Paul, um, it is Cyber Monday. Have you got any things that you want to share? Um, I, I think you were doing a deal on... SEO Underground stuff. Yes. Are there any other things that you want to just like we can just share a link with people if they want to know more about what you do or if anything you've been working on there? Yeah, so so if they go to seounderground.co.uk and click on see the videos, um, there is a uh, an offer uh, where we're doing 50% off the video suite. So basically you can catch up with all of the stuff that we were talking about with uh, SEO Underground uh, because they are pretty unedited uh, um, videos. Yep. I had the uh, the go-ahead from all of the speakers that we could pretty much re- release them without any uh, uh, removal of stuff, which I thought was was uh, very brave of some of them, yeah. um, but uh, but all the better for anybody who, uh, who wants to watch these videos. Um, and so, yeah, seounderground.co.uk, uh, click see the videos, and, yeah, you can get them at the moment for 50% off. Uh, so I think that's £47.50. Uh, but what I'd like to do as well, guys, if you send me the winner of, of, our, of our wheel spin, they can have uh, the videos for free, uh, the winner, on top of whatever it is that you're going to be giving away uh, in a minute. Awesome. Wow. Love it. Awesome. Uh, what is the, the value on that, just so I can kind of put that in the, the prize? Uh, so we, we did promise 25000 yep. in value. We're well over that. But just uh, what is the value of that? So, uh, so uh, the the normal price that we'll be going back up to is ninety five pounds. Uh, so, but today's price will be forty seven pound fifty. Pick which price you want to use. Okay, 
So it's the courses, uh, uh, the recordings from SEO Underground. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, all, all of the, uh, and, and there's some really, 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 really hot stuff in there. Um, some real and, eye-openers, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, very yes. interesting. Yeah, no question. That's awesome. So awesome. we'll uh, yeah, we, update this. So. We've got some uh, c- questions coming or the comment. <laughs> Craig Campbell <laughs> is, uh, is there. He's watching. He's watching. He's watching. There we go. Uh, a few more things coming in here. Are you saying, ask him where he can buy a shirt like that, man? So have you got a, you got an affiliate link you want to drop for the shirt, maybe, or something? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think this is from a charity shop. Uh, it's basically yeah. two tents uh, sewn together. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, oh. let's uh, throw the Adam's, shirt. In. Ad, ad. Trust me, you could probably house about four, um, you know, four families in this. So, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. so it's probably of no intrinsic value whatsoever. And, Sounds like uh, Adam yeah. wants your shirt, though. He wants the shirt off your back, so maybe, yes. maybe, uh, yeah, awesome. Probably. <laughs> It's not that sort of Washed podcast. or unwashed, it's, it's, Adam. It's not that sort of stream. Anyway, Adam. I, I was going to say, I, I know how Adam is. Uh, Adam, do you want it washed or unwashed? <laughs> 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 right. So anyway, it's seounderground.co.uk if you want to see the videos. That's great. There's, yes. a, there's a deal on them. Brilliant. Awesome. Okay. So, right. uh, Daryl, over to you. You're the draw master, I think. So over to, over to you. Yep, just so updating you the do, website. Darryl? Yeah, oh, so okay. you're just going to do the old spin a So let me um, go ahead and add this to the stream again. Uh, okay. Once again, if you uh, have not seen this already, folks, go to webbython.com. And it uh, looks like we're having trouble with the LinkedIn stream. So I think that we've expired that one. Um, so if you, uh, if you go here to webbython.com, that's two Bs, uh, you can see the live stream. You can also register. And then there's the prizes page. If you go to the prizes, you'll see the latest winners, the 10 a.m., the 11 a.m. winner. If this is you, one of these people, reach out to me at daryl.chat, or we're going to reach out to you via email, okay? So we'll just verify that you're the right person. The uh, 12 o'clock name goes here. This could be you on the prize wheel uh, that we have right now. And they get lazyday.com, a $5,400 value from uh, nameworth.com assessment. Uh, plus, uh, you can use that as a cool brand, Lazy Day. Uh, you can have it as a blog site. Yeah. Do anything you want with that. We found that domain with Domain Kicks, which I'm going to show in the next hour. So you'll you'll get to see uh, how I how I make domains happen uh, so that I can give them away to you folks. Uh, so, but you can also use them for domain investing, which I do uh, throughout the year as well. So we're going to have Paul's SEO Underground courses, the recordings from the SEO Underground. Uh, so you definitely want to grab that uh, offer. It's can you flash that on the screen one more time? Uh, yeah, I'll, set, I'll put it up. Hold on. Give a little plug there. Uh, SEOunderground.co.uk. If you're on the listening side, SEOunderground.co.uk. Um, and there's no hyphens or dashes or anything like that. So it's very Correct. easy to get to. All right. All right. So let me see if I can get the, the wheel of names here. These are all people that registered before nine o'clock this morning. We're going to Ooh. add in the next group of people uh, when we break after my talk. We're going to take a little 15 minute break and get everything updated and shifted over to the next stream, uh, part two stream. So um, awesome. So are you ready to give the big old spin? I am. I was born ready, Daryl. I was <laughs> born ready. All right. When you're ready, Wait, let what us know. Do I just say? Spin now. You... There you go. Go on. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Oh, it's like being on a trip. Oh, wow. It's our speaker coming up later today. Dre, he signed <laughs> up. <laughs> Dre from the SEO video show. You just wow. got He just won because of Paul. Nice job. <laughs> awesome. So we'll add Dre on there. <laughs> Why That's not, cool. right? Yeah, so we'll add him on, and he'll get the SEO Underground. I wonder, he wasn't there, was he? So he'll he probably so love this. Yeah, yeah so he'll yeah. love that. Yeah. Um, awesome, awesome. Have you watched his show, the SEO video show? No, no. I have not. Oh, 
Oh, you definitely have to check it yeah, out. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely have to check it out. Yeah. I will put him on my list of uh, people that I watch uh, every he, week. He interviews a lot of different people from SEO, and he's got the best looking videos ever the production values the lighting the audio the backgrounds everything's absolutely amazing we've tried to do a little bit today with this thing but his his <laughs> stuff is on point so um yeah yeah his, uh, ident, definitely worth looking at looking him up yeah but your ident was uh was something else i'm i've uh yeah i was hugely flattered by uh by that that was uh that was, uh, that was something else <laughs> we, we, we can send you it through you'll be able to re- repurpose it for the other things yeah, i'm gonna can, put it on yeah. Basically, every time I answer a phone, yeah, uh, yes. every time I get your leads, <laughs> you do a Zoom, yeah, give me the little... first minute of yeah. your Zoom. Nice. Wait, 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 wait. Let's wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's do it again. Play it again. Come on, let's do it again. I think it slowed down there a little at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him go. It's like me. <laughs> Done the same. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little worn out at the end there. So. Yeah, I know the feeling. Awesome. Yeah. I think Craig's awesome. uh, barracking us from the sidelines. Uh, to send this is the SEO video show from Wish on here. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for your support, Craig. <laughs> right. Anyway, oh, let awesome. me ask you. Let me ask uh, one more question, uh, Paul. On. Uh, page page builders or no, and which one? Um, yeah, I love love page builders. Uh, I've used all different types over the years. Uh, current one is Oxygen. Um, okay. I have enjoyed using Oxygen on WordPress. Um, longer learning curve than Elementor, or you know those types of things, but. Um, you can do a lot with it. And I have never experienced the issues that people talk about with, uh, with oxygen, with the speed issues. I've always found it perfectly bearable. Um, and uh, its flexibility and integration is getting better and better and better. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So um, I've, I've seen the speed results from it and I know it's great. I'm a beaver builder yeah. guy. I love beaver builder. Yeah. Um, it's losing some market share, obviously, because Elementor has come online. But um, I find Elementor to be overwhelming with how many things it does. And then yeah. it feels like an Android device where it doesn't do everything very well when you put it all together because it's too much yes. going on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, but I like I the simplicity of, of the more simple builders. Uh, Thrive Architect, I think, is great. Um, yeah. You know, I, do, I do think that Oxygen is good. I But, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been doing... Uh, you know, page builders. The vis- the first one was it uh, the visual builder. What was that first one that was packed into all the themes? It was terrible. Um, oh, there's been. A few- that- I used um, one called Themeler. Um, you might Themeler. Have heard of okay, Themeler. yeah. That was um, that was that was sort of our first sort of sorting because we used to work with Joomla as well, and so mm-hmm. we loved it because it was cross platform. Um, but mm-hmm. oh man, some of the problems that it had, and they were so slow to to pick up and repair it. This uh, is like, we just had to step away from it. I think there was a WP Bakery or something like that. The yeah. that one, the WP, visual yeah, whatever. It's Div- Divi yeah. as well, isn't it? That's well known. Yeah, Divi. Yeah, Divi. Yeah, Divi. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I got to give my you know credit to Divi. That was my first page builder that I really actually liked. Uh, but then when yeah. I found Beaver Builder and I found that they didn't have the short codes because. One day with just dealing with short codes and you're uh, having to try to edit that is just like insanity. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, although Gut- Divi looks Gutenberg great. now, Gutenberg now is is becoming oh, yeah. a page builder in itself. Yeah, it's you know, that, yeah. that's yeah. it could render yeah. a lot of page builders completely useless. In yeah. I, mean, I use I use Cadence, Cadence theme, and Cadence blocks pretty much all the yeah. time now. And yeah, I mean, I think Gutenberg, you know, a bit of a cliche, but it, I think it is the future, and I think it's a good place to be if you're. Um, and it'll be fast, fast um, yeah. you know, supported, it, 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 compatible, yeah, highly supported. Um, so you know, it, yeah. there, there's a lot to be said for it. Um, I think, I think if you if we all get wedded too heavily into, you know, the the flavor of the month with page builders and stuff, the issue is is it will get blown apart. You know, we thought we <clears> found the you know the ultimate several yeah. times and been wrong several times. So uh, mm. just go with what it is that that suits. You know, yeah. your um 
yeah, yeah, you're, you're the thing that you need to do. But speed, we said it before, speed is probably one of the biggest, most overlooked yeah. uh, uh, SEO matters um, yeah. that mm-hmm. matter. And yeah, you need to look for something that you can absolutely trim down into, you know, racing, racing spec uh, very, very quickly. And a lot of this stuff is very, very tough. Although I know Elemental have made some big jumps forward mm-hmm. lately with their, with speed and getting rid of some of their bloat, but mm-hmm. uh, I still think they've got a way to go. Yeah, absolutely. What a pleasure to have you, Paul. I really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> You're sure very, very I'm... welcome. Yeah, this yeah, has been, been this has been great. great, great uh, even though, yeah. even though Craig Campbell throws some shade at you, uh, oh, you know, and he's, <laughs> it, it, he's just upset because I've got a nicer shirt than he has. That's 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 the longer. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll, I'll see him later. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Mind you, he's, well, he's, he's in crime lord, so. Yeah, yeah, he's got that Uzi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I won't get, get right. too upset. Thanks, Paul. Awesome. Great to see you. Good to catch All up. All right, Cheers. Paul. Yeah. Thank again. you so Take much. Care. Bye now. Bye bye. Awesome. That's Paul Hogden, uh, SEO Underground. Let's go ahead and throw his link back up there so everybody can see yeah. it. Here it is SEOUnderground.co.uk. Uh, if you weren't able to make the live uh, event, this is a way for you to pick up a lot of the nuggets uh, that were spread there. And uh, again, the, the winner from the next. Uh, the the last giveaway, um, uh, Dre uh, Devera or Paul Dre or Dre Paul? No, <laughs> Dre, Paul, yeah, Paul yeah. Andre. Paul Andre Devera. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, he's got a lot of yeah. names. Uh, he he's gonna have that um, course, so we'll get that name over to um, Paul so he can get him copies of that. So yeah. we are transitioning now over to my talk with you. Um, and we're going to talk about domains now uh, in this session. We, uh, you know, mass page tools is sort of a few different audiences. Obviously, we have the SEO audience, we have the mass page audience, and we also have people that love domains and want to buy and sell domains. So um, I would love to have like a high level discussion with you a little bit, uh, Simon, about domains. And if, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you want to, we'll just throw back and forth a little bit here. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to take you, if you want to continue the intro, I'm going to take a natural break, actually, because I know I've, I've been okay. doing all the work on this uh, yeah, webinar yeah, so yeah. far. You have been, and, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to take a, a two-minute break. I'll be back in in a second. But if you want to kind of open up, I will be right. uh, be with you very soon. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So anyway, my name is Daryl Ledyard. Uh, I am a product developer, also the person behind Mass Page Tools. Uh, we've shifted from client work over to uh, doing more things. Uh, for ourselves. And one of the things that I wanted was as a solution to do stuff with uh, finding domains. So uh, the approach that I take with domain buying isn't just for SEO purposes. Um, I do do some of that, but the majority of probably 80% of what I do is I'm looking for good brand names. Uh, So if you take a look uh, at flippa.com, you'll see there's a domain section. And you'll see people that are selling domains for various amounts of money. So um, what I do when somebody's just trying to learn how to buy good domains and to know that they're worth something is to spend some time on these pages and go ahead and look at like the editor's choices and see which ones are getting the most bids, right? And you can do all that kind of filtering to see what is what has you know potential and what doesn't. Okay. Uh, whenever you see something that has a lot of bids, it's a really good indication that it is a domain that could uh, do quite well. Okay. Um, so as you can see, there's you know all kinds of various prices. Now this one is twenty five thousand dollars because it has the word TikTok uh, in it, TikTok Junior. Okay. And so I would be worried about that having um, a brand name in it. Uh, TikTok could, you know, sue and get that to be uh, taken off or, you know, turned off or whatever. So you have to be really careful. You don't put like AT&T, um, you know, in your domain or like, you know what I mean? Some kind of big Microsoft in your domain, right? You don't want to do that. So that'll be a really um, bad decision to do. One of the other things that I want you to think about is trends, 
Uh, one of the people on here earlier was talking about NFT and meta trends and getting domains that fit into a trend so that you can cash in on that trend and do a quick flip. Okay. I'm not against that. I don't particularly do that myself because I've seen a lot of people come to me and want me to manage the sales of their portfolio. They have a shit ton of like cannabis domains that are a bunch of crap. Like they're, they're not even, I wouldn't even pay for them for the registration fee. So just going after a trend, just to have as many domains in that particular trend as possible is a fool's errand. Okay, you don't want to do that unless you really have been kind of picky about what domains that you're going to go ahead and grab. Okay, make sure that it matches up with the types of sites that you're seeing uh, do well. Like, for example, I think that this one is a good one. It's premiumsites.com. Okay, it, it's spelled properly and it's $130, right? So if you're buying in this kind of a marketplace, you could actually build a really nice web design site for with premiumsite.com, right? So for $130, that would definitely be something I would be uh, interested in. Um, I typically don't buy this way because I do have domain kicks and we'll go over what that is in a little bit. Um, but these are the, the, the different sites that the folks over at Flippa who sees all these all day long, these are the ones that they kind of edit or picked. Um, and you can kind of do some searches here based on uh, the most active, okay? And now you can see this one, investment buying is a good domain, but don't think of this domain because somebody else already owns this. Think of that category, all right? Investment, mortgage, loans, all of that kind of stuff um, is a really good one. Now, on our Sunday Live, we gave away lending, lend markets, okay? Lend markets. Um, I thought that was a good domain. And uh, so somebody picked that up last week because we give away domains every Sunday on our Sunday Live on our YouTube channel, Mass Page Tools. All right. Uh, here's somebody that's doing safety techniques. Um, and But it's a low price. It's only $65. Okay. Look at this fourletter.com domain. Okay. What does this mean? C-Y-B-E. You, you know, but it's they're trying to get to $80,000 on it. And it seems like there's some activity on it because it's uh, coming up and a lot of people are watching it, right? Um, three letter.coms, no brainer. If you can get a three letter.com domain, it's it's definitely worth close to this price of $49,000, okay? Here's a here's like a category killer, product.com. It's a bit generic. I don't like that part of it. Uh, it's $2 million is what they're, they're asking for. Inkrefill.com is a really good domain. Um, it's a disposable, uh, product that's going to have continuous, uh, refills. It's exact match. It's spelled properly. $4,500, I think is a good domain. Gummy.com. I think that could be a fun, no, uh, brand and, uh, it could be, it could be a lot of different things. It could be, uh, you know, candy, but it also could be, you know, I don't know, something else that's just like a fun um, product or brand, okay? And that's going for 500000 So the reason why I'm showing you these, okay, and the reason I'm going to show you these on brand paw is some of these things don't really mean anything, and they're worth thousands of dollars, right, if the right buyer comes along on one of these directories. And they're worth a lot of money because, plain and simple, People are looking for good brand names and a lot of the good domains are gone when they're dot coms. Okay. So I actually decided that I wanted to build some tools to help me to get more of these. Um, so I, I built the tool. It's called Domain Kicks and we're continuing to improve it and things like that. And uh, you'll have a chance to win um, a lifetime deal for Domain Kicks at the end of this presentation. Okay, so I'm going to give two domain kicks giveaways today. Um, if you go to the pricing page, they're valued at $9.97. Uh, there's currently a um, discount if you're looking to buy lifetime. Um, just go ahead and go to our website here, webbython.com. I'll just go ahead and type this in. Webbython. And uh, let's see here, 
Uh, and we go over here to Cyber Monday deals and go down to Daryl's deals. Okay, I only have two deals going on right now. One is for uh, domain kicks. Uh, and you also get the lifetime of Leads Detective as well. And I'll show you that software as well because we're going to use that in this, in this demonstration. Uh, so it's half the price. So it's 50% off the lifetime. You'll, you won't get this again. So get, get this uh, lifetime deal if you like. Uh, if you click on buy now, it does put the code right in there and it drops the price down and then you can pick the lifetime. Um, if you pick these others, this doesn't apply. So to the monthly deals, it's only for the lifetime deal uh, that we have the, uh, the Cyber Monday offer on. Okay, if you're watching this in the replay, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think, I think this one ends Tuesday at midnight. So if you're watching on the replay, uh, be aware of that, okay? All right, so um, let's see. So what I wanted to talk about is one of the ways that I, I look for domain is this concept of panning for gold. In the United States, there was a gold rush and people would go out to the mountains and they would try to pan for gold. They would try to find you know, little gold nuggets uh, in the rock form and in the uh, sediment and they would just go through and spend lots of time trying to find some. And now some did really well and a lot of people did not. Okay, a lot of people did not. And that's why you hear the people that sold the picks and axes and the tools did better than the people that were painting for gold because it was, you know, too many people trying to do it. It was a trend. Everybody was trying to do it and they didn't know how to pick, you know, the right spots to pan for the gold. Okay, so uh, the people that really knew where to go and were able to, you know, take that, that over uh, did very, very well. Okay, so hook hunting down a good domain name is a bit like this process of panning for gold. Okay. You're going to spend a lot of time and my tool is going to save you some time, but it's going to take some time to find some really good domains. You don't want fool's gold. Uh, you don't want like uh, some people call the pigeon shit of domains. You want a real domain that's going to be worth something on Fiverr or on Brandpaw or Squ you know, Squad Help or any of those other platforms so that you get a return on your investment, okay? And I'll, uh, one of the things that I do is uh, when I put them in, and welcome back, Simon. Uh, hello, One hello. of the things that I do, yeah. Um, one of the things that I do is uh, I put them on uh, Afternick, which is a product of GoDaddy, and I put it on uh, the premium selling. And then I also put them on Dan.com. Uh, as uh, another listing. So when I give away a domain, I have to remove it from after Nick and I have to remove it from dan.com, right? After the transfer happens. But what the nice thing is, is that they do all the selling on autopilot. They have the audience. When you type some domain into GoDaddy and, uh, or I think there's like a hundred other places you can find, uh, you know, look for a domain and it'll show your listing. It'll show uh, this listing is owned by, owned by Daryl Ledger, and you can buy it for $5,000 or you can make payments or you know, um, you know, pay per month for it. There's a lot of different ways that people can then pay for that domain um, if they want to. And this can happen like in the middle of the night, I'll sell a domain for $2,500 or $4,000 and it just helps me to not have to ever pay for the domains that I'm searching for. So some people like to, you know, they're, they're anglers and they're fishermen. They like to spend time fishing, right? I like to find domains because that's my hunt. It's like something that really gets me going. If I can find a really good domain that's a brandable domain and that I could, you know, resell or build a project on or something like that, uh, formerly loved domain, you know, um, things like that, that somebody let expire. Uh, yeah, I'm all, all about that. And uh, so that's why I talk about the uh, panning for gold concept. Have you ever heard of that concept, Simon? Panning for gold? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, familiar with the, the, the term. And yeah, I can understand that there's only a few sort of gems that you're going to find. And uh, I guess you, you've got something that can help you find them easily amongst the, <clears throat> the, the, the rough and the muck. That's, uh, that sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, so that's what we're trying to do here is to, to pan for gold, right? To find the little nuggets that are worth 
hundreds or thousands of dollars, not the stuff that's barely worth even registering, right? Sometimes I wouldn't say every domain has value. Most domains that you see have negative value. In other words, you have to pay every year for them and they're worthless. You'll never sell them. Sorry to say, a lot of people come to me and say, what's this domain worth? Well, it's, it's crap. It's not worth anything. And it's not because it's because I've been in the industry since 96, right? When I bought my first domains, 90, 96. Um, so I've bought and sold a lot of domains over the years and I know what sells and I know what people buy, right? Um, yeah, you can get lucky once in a while on a trend or you, you buy, you know, uh, I know people that have, you know, over a hundred thousand domains, over a hundred thousand. And guess how many times they sell every single day they're selling. Okay. Because they have so many, right. But figure out what's a hundred thousand times $10, right. That's over, uh, was it 10 million? No, it's a, a million dollars a year, just the renewals. Right. Hmm. So you have to be, that's very amazing. Isn't that's, that's, that's a big, uh, a big amount. I mean, do you, do you focus on .coms primarily? Is that where you, you see the market is? I mean, I appreciate there's .net and .org, and I know .io and .ai are popular, but, you know, once you get outside of that, I mean, I come from, I'm not a domain investor. I sold one domain on Afternic a month or so ago. It's the first time I've ever sold a domain, mm -hmm. so I'm very uh, fresh onto this. Um, is is really the, the action really on .com still and, and a few others and when you get into XYZ and some of the other more, um, you know, .gallery, .directory, .office and all those other ones? Is that really, are they, they yeah. really kind of worthless or what, what's your view on where to, where to focus? So, so my view is, is it depends on the, the type of brand that you're working on. Okay. So there's, um, the kind of domain like ours, mass.page is our website, and we're in the mass page industry. So uh, if, if um, it's, a, it's basically mass.page spans the dot, they call it. So the dots in the middle, instead of .com, it's mass.page. So it's the shortest possible domain to say you're in the mass page industry, okay? To really say that exactly, uh, it's the shortest possible domain. What do you think I pay per year to uh, have that domain? What do you think? Uh, $8. No. I pay <laughs> $400, $400 a year do you? for that domain. Oh, I didn't know those. Yes. Uh, really? Okay. That's interesting. Because, I didn't know that. because it's a premium domain. And I've got uh, several premium domains that are over $200 um, a year because they're, they're that good. They're, they're worth having. Um, uh, there's another project that I have coming out that was also an expensive domain. Um, and you guys will hear about that. Uh, so I'm willing to put the money in for my brand ability to have a really good domain. Okay. Other people are like me in the industry of building software and things like that. They're going to spend the money to buy a domain. Um, I just sold the domain xreels.com the other night. Um, somebody, somebody bought xreels.com. All right. And they, you know, paid 2,500 bucks while I was sleeping. And that's, that's a brand. Now, would you have thought of X reels? How would you come up with that? How would you come up with X reels.com? Right. Well, you could, you could shop around expired domains.net. Okay. Which is what I used to do is I'd go through lists and lists and lists of uh, expired domains.net, but that only covered some and it, the thing was, it, it didn't cover a lot of the golden nuggets that I'm trying to pan for, okay? Having expireddomains.net is a tool to find expired domains, but it's not necessarily the best tool to, for the job of finding brandable domains, which I think are worth more potentially than just what you're going to find that has some SEO value. One of the things I talked to Craig Campbell about was how much is it worth to just forward a domain to your domain? And what is it worth from an SEO perspective? And he said, no, it's better to actually build it out and put links on it and to, you know, to make it really a real website. And I totally agree with that. I think that that's, that is what you should do. But again, you're panning for gold. And so to be successful at planning, panning for gold, you want to have the best tools and you want to know how to do it, you know, the techniques and how to do it. So you're not a fool out there in the mountains trying to pan for gold and wasting your time. Okay. 
That's why I think that the topic is something people are really interested in because .com domains are very rare, very rare, especially under six letters that actually spell something um, original. I mean, if you take a look, short is the way to go. If you take a look at all these, these are like six, seven letters, you know, mostly under six, and they're worth a lot more money. You know, fund up three thousand dollars, right? So, how do you find a domain like that? How do you find it? Well, I I built a tool. There's you know there's ways you could do it with you know a lot of other tools, just like putting it all together and mashing it up. But I wanted to build a tool that would do it the way I wanted it done, and then we added another couple features into it. So ad enough with the teasing. Let me just show you domainkicks.com. Domainkicks.com, where you can find a catchy domain in minutes. Okay. If you go through this website, it talks about the different features. We've added some additional features that I'm going to talk about here on this uh, call here today. And uh, if you go to the pricing, it starts at $47 a month. Uh, we don't have that discounted, but we do have the lifetime special. If you use the promo code um, that, I, uh, that I have inside of our page. So again, if you want to get to the promo code, go to webathon.com. Go up here to Cyber Monday Deals and Daryl's Deals. Go down there and you'll see my two deals. I have one for Siphon AI standalone and I have one for Domain Kicks. Okay, so those are the two that we have on there. The promo codes are built into the link. So you'll be able to buy them directly through there if you're interested. All right. Um, so anyway, so this is the inside of Domain Kicks. When you get in here, you're going to see a few different things. You're going to see your account, your settings. Now you're going to need to get a Dynadot API uh, key, and so we have a video that our good friend Stephen put on uh, that tells you how to get your Dynadot key, and you're just going to put it in the right place. I'm not going to show mine, uh, and that that means that all of your searches are done exclusively through your API. Okay, and we're going to be adding additional features so that you'll be able to automatically register domains and all this kind of stuff from your dream list when they become become available. Uh, so it, it will be your own drop catching service that you can do. All right. So here we go. The reason why I built this is so that you could do this while you were on a phone. You've got three columns. You've got a prepend, a primary keywords, which is the most important one, and the append. This is the only required one is the middle. Okay. So what I do is if you hit the recycle, you'll get another set of different catchy keywords. Okay. That you can use. And you could just keep rotating through until you find something interesting. And then I'll just like say, okay, I'm just going to concentrate on prepend and primary, right? And I'm going to hit .com. And it's going to check all of these different combinations for us uh, on that list. Okay. So this is from the default list. It's going to first check the actual brands, right? And then it's going to start to put those these words together. Okay. See these check boxes? These are, if you like the domain and you want to add it to your dream list, you can do that. But it looks like, let me see if it's done. Yeah, it's finished because it stopped recycling. And greatestdvd.com is available. So if anybody out there, that we're live. If you want to register greatestdv.com, it's regular price. Right now through Dynadot, it's $7.99. Okay? So that's how we just used it just now. Any questions on that, Simon? No, I think it's a great example. Uh, I don't know if you planned that or not, but as soon as it just sort of came out of the blue, uh, I think you yeah. know that you'd expect uh, something like that to be be taken. You know, um, DVD is obviously not uh, not so current, but you know people are collecting them, or whatever else, or someone like that has got like a legacy site. You'd have thought that wouldn't be available, and you yep. just found uh, one there. So, uh, so yeah, great example to see that uh, popping up. So, I know, yeah, yeah. So you could just keep rotating these things until you see something interesting. Now, I mm -hmm. literally have been on a conference call that was kind of boring and just went through this while I was sitting there just looking for combinations to try, right? There's Dallas Attorney. Let's see what happens here. And we're just checking .com. You've got all these other options. And then there's a box down below. You can add any option. So any extension you're interested in, you can throw it in there. Um, 411 Drugs. Okay, that could be an information because 411 is an information um, uh, thing in the US, right? Information on drugs, front drugs. All right, so that would you have thought to check out 411 drugs? No, this no. is why Domain Kicks is so special. It does, it does this work for you. We've actually gone through and done tons of research on what kinds of things you should be searching for to make combinations of different, of different things, okay? 
And if you have like your favorite endings, like if you want like if I or LY or, you know, if you go like to here, I tell people to look at this stuff and then look at things that have endings that you like. Okay. So if you're looking at something and it has like an IA, put that into your presets and I'll show you what you can do with that. Okay. So, um, so these are, uh, buzznotebook.com, giantnotebook.com, uh, missnotebook.com, misslease.com. All right. That, that, that's just came here. Now, if we hit X there and we hit rewind here, we change this here. Uh, I'm just going to change this shirt type windows tinting. I'm looking for possible combinations here. Let's try this one. This might be interesting. And again, we're searching dot coms because they're the most rare. Okay. If you can have a dot com, that's great. But what I was going to say to you about the, um, the type, if it's like, let's say a, a really cool SaaS platform, I almost don't want the dot com. I want like a dot IO or if it's an AI tool, maybe dot AI, right? Um, Jarvis dot AI, right? Um, you know, what's that beam dot GG, right? Good game is the, the concept of GG, right? So, um, there's a lot of more trendy extensions and that's why we put dot GG in here uh, because I, I find that some of these sell pretty darn good. Like dot IOs I think are awesome. I have a lot of dot IOs. I have some dot LYs. Um, I've got some dot clubs. I got Daryl dot club. Um, I have, you know, dot GGs. I have um, a few dot GGs um, and dot TV. Some people are big fans of dot TVs. I'm not so much, but we have it on here in the list. But you can also add other extensions in your country. So if your native country isn't listed here, you just put it in a row separated list and you can add all of that um, in there. All right. Am I going too fast? Is you understanding, Simon? I'm following it. Yeah. Good? I'm a, yeah. It's all good. All right. Yep. All right. So, uh, so back to um, when we do a search. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this and do a search. Uh, wait, oh, that was a good list. Too bad. Uh, so these are random, but sometimes you get repeating. Um, all right, let's try this one and do a search. I'm going to show you how easy it is to capture a domain that you missed, right? And that you want to have searched forever, not just for a few months, not for a few days. It'll keep searching this list, okay? Um, so here we go. And I wouldn't put like too many because the more you put in here, the slower because it uses your API key. So if you put in like too many, it might be every two days or so that it's searching for that. So I'm a little picky about what I put in my dream list. But I want bestwebsite.com, all right? I do want to have that. Um, I'll take gomedia.com. All right. So what I'm going to do is add it to my dream list. Are you sure you want to add it? Yep. Good job. You added it to your dream list. Now it's going to check several times a day to see if those domains are available along with the other ones that are in my dream list. So if you go up to my dream list, you can see that these are all being checked. The last time these were checked, um, let's see. Uh, November 5th. I have to check on that because uh, this should be updating. Let me see. Search I, I just had a message okay. from somebody, Daryl, to say that they've uh, bought one of the domain names that he just uh, put, popped yeah. up there. Somebody's, somebody's jumped in. Or just, I'm not going to say who it is, but they've, uh, they've invested yeah. in it already. So, uh, yeah, be quick. so there you go. Yeah, I, I literally should just do live streams using this tool because people would just pick up stuff all day long uh, watching this. But you can have the tool yourself. It's not that expensive, guys, considering the fact that you can sell domains for $2,500 while you're sleeping. Uh, it's it's pretty easy. Now, if you got, uh, let's say, your own domains or your buddy's domains, you can enter them in here and you can kind of keep track of them as well. Sometimes, you know, if a domain becomes available that is like, one of your clients, let's say you're a digital marketing agency, right? And you've got all these clients and they, and they all expect you to kind of keep track of their domains. Well, guess what? Um, if let's say something falls through the cracks and somebody hits delete on their domain, okay? But they didn't show up on the expired domains list or anything like that. They just deleted it. It will show up here where a lot of those drop catch services are only expecting certain things to drop, okay? So uh, this is, I think, a really cool way to just kind of do it under the radar. You're not telling drop catchers what you're doing, which, you know, 
Uh, there's some tricky people that are you know, looking to, you know, they're just not so super honest, I guess. Um, so just like this is yours, right? So if you put this into your dream list, it's yours, right? Nobody else is seeing this because it's going into your account. It's being checked against your Dynadot account, okay? Um, so we find Dynadot to be pretty honest. So I, I have never had a problem with somebody snagging a domain that I was uh, looking for. But look at this, answerlawyers.com became available while we were checking, okay? That's a good domain. That's a .com in the lawyer niche, right? We found that with Domain Kicks, all right? So this is a really cool thing, and I hope I'm not overselling this, but I just, I get so excited about it because it's something I'm using myself. All right, so here's the presets. This is a really awesome page here. Now, there are <clears throat> system presets, okay, which is part of Domain Kicks research to come up with a bunch of domains. And then we have my presets, okay, which is ones that I put in. So I put in all of these states and cities because sometimes I want to just use my presets, okay? And when you do that, all of the searches uh, will will be um, will be in here. So what's this? Any thoughts? Just a, just a question closing? that's uh, come through. Just thought if you want to uh, pick it up now or later on, depending. Uh, fashion clothing design, the value of clothes. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, I don't know enough about that industry. Uh, I would just do a lot of research to see um, see how many companies have have sprung up in the last five years. And it's a numbers game. If more people spring up a business in that category, it's trending. So I would go to Google Trends. I'd go ahead. I'd go and check databases and see, you know, how many are in the clothing, fashion, um, design uh, area. You know. And because the more people are buying, let's say plumbers, okay, or like say landscaping, okay, there's a lot more people looking for that uh, for to buy a domain than the fashion clothing design company because there's only so many, right? There's only so many that are clothing uh, fashion designers. So anyway, but if let's say you were into that, you could grab all the keywords and put them in here. So you could have your, all your fashion keywords here under primary keywords. You could have your favorite prepens, your favorite appends, or you can just do what we call as a mix, okay? Where your stuff gets mixed in with ours for you, only you get it mixed, right? So you'll get a mixture of ours, the systems and yours, okay? Fair enough. All right, next is this miscellaneous keywords. Okay, so this is words that you want to have withdrawn from your uh, searches. Okay, so I'm going to just get rid of these because I want com to show up. Um, I just put on all these because I'm, I'm going to do a little demo here in a second about these. So let me delete these here. And okay, so those are updated now. Uh, so so now let me see what, what we're going to do. How are we doing on time? Okay. Um, again, somebody's going to win this uh, coming up, a lifetime offer. So uh, it's a $1,000 value. You're going to win. Uh, this is a lifetime deal coming up in a few minutes. All right. So one of the things that, um, that I like to do is uh, we built this to save you a lot of effort. Okay. So I built this leads detective for domaining earlier on in, during the pandemic, okay? And in Leads Detective, uh, you get this free as well. So you'll, you'll get uh, Leads Detective as part of your lifetime deal. It only goes with the lifetime deal with Domain Kicks and you'll get a lifetime of uh, Leads Detective, which is $1,400 value, all right? It's constantly updated. We get um, information from the registrars uh, of people that don't have privacy protection on. We also overlay from like six other sources and we have some AI uh, that's always looking for like, you know, the, the information and different things. So let's say we go with Leads Detective and we'll put in landscape, landscaping, okay? Uh, landscaping is all over the country, right? Uh, so you'll see these are all landscapers. And if you load, the page will keep loading and loading and loading and loading, right? 
And so let's say we're looking at this and we're just going to go after abletrees.com. Okay. And we give you all this information, right? We have their phone number. We have their, their company information, their email address. Uh, we have the, what categories they're in, you know, any information that our, our spider has come up with it's in here. Okay. And we we're constantly, it's constantly checking and, and adding things to it. It's not, Google level, okay, this is not like, you know, don't expect the world. Uh, this is a little pet project that I built that um, I, I wanted to do, all right? So if I go back um, and you have the landscapers, you can download these, okay? And based on the package you have, it'll tell you how many you, you're going to be able to download, all right? And you'll download them all at once. Now, it's downloading a pretty big file of landscapers, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that over to a CSV file. I'm going to open that into Excel. Um, all right. So here is your data. So having data is really helpful. All right. We have a, a, a partnership with bulkleads.net, uh, which people are getting data from there. And I can show you how that works as well. But you can do this all with this. Okay. So if you go in here and you've got all of these landscapers, right? You've got thousands and thousands and thousands of these domains, right? Some of these might have expired, but let me just show you something that's really, really cool here. So if, if we go like this and we highlight the entire thing in domains, okay? And we're going to go into text shaker, all right? And I'm just going to paste this in here. All right, you've got some that have www's, you've got things that, that don't, so I'm just going to look for www, period, and I want to replace it with nothing. You've got some that are .us's, which are fine. Uh, we're just going to go through this. Okay, looks, looks pretty good now. Let's just look for HTTPS, just in case. Uh, delete that if there's any, and let's make sure that there's no... Well, I don't have to worry about the rest. So anyway, you just go ahead and we're going to go and look for the shortest. Because remember, those websites favor domains that are shorter. So if you go here on TechShaker, I just hit the shorting thing and it finds just the domains that are the shortest. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up to probably seven or ten letters. Right. I'm just going to grab a bunch of these. All right. And I'm going to grab these because these are the ones that are shortest. These are the ones I'm going to test to see. Okay. So I'm inside of domain kicks and I'm going to clear all and I'm just going to pop these domains in here. Okay. Remember we have .us, .net, .biz, all of that stuff. We're going to hit this errors found. We're just going to fix it. Bang. Right. It'll clear all that stuff out. Let me see. There was an issue. Hang on a second. Because we... Let me just see if I had to put it in the right preset. Hold on a second. Uh, let me do, do, do. Okay, let me clear this out because I put it into my miscellaneous keyword. So, bang. See that? I cleared all those .coms, the .nets, everything out. Okay. So, um, I think it's because I had that set up um, for a, a, a different setting. So, anyway, so all of these keywords are there. And now I'm going to check them against .com. Okay, these are actual, you know, domains, but some are .us, .biz. So I'm letting the system, the data from Leads Detective, guide me on domains that people have already picked out. And I'm just seeing if the .com is available uh, for that. Okay, so here is a five-letter domain. Not sure, you know, what it stands for or anything like that. But these are starting to come up from that list. OK, so these are domains that somebody had interest in at some point. Right. Um, but you don't get this with expireddomains.net. It doesn't go after every single domain, uh, you know, from a list of, you know, dot nets and dot us and dot X, Y, Z's and things like that. And double check to see if there's a dot com there. Uh, so this is, you know, a way to another way to use this tool. OK, is to do this. And you can see as they're, they're coming up, uh, some people are probably waiting to see if they're going to get something of high value. <laughs> um, so these yeah, are people are ready, are to, ready to buy, aren't they? 
I think that. I yeah. Think so. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. So thank you guys for uh, spending the time here with me on this um, presentation. I'm sure you guys want to win this uh, domain kicks um, as well. So that's really cool. Let's see. So we're, we're getting more and more uh, domains. I haven't seen anything I'm going to buy yet, but you might see something you like. Um, again, we're going after short domains that somebody already previously loved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So um, that's what we're looking for in this in this scenario. OK. Um, Yahoo.com. I've, I've heard of that company. Mm. <laughs> it's over here on the right side. These are ones on yeah. the right. Are ones that available. Somebody else yeah. Already has. yeah, that's already. But treeslawn.com. That's interesting. It, it doesn't feel too brandable, but it does have two categories mm. in it. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're in the space, that could be a good exact match, couldn't it? That could be a good partial exact match. Yeah. Treeslawn.com. If you're doing lead generation um, in landscaping, that could be a good one, guys. I don't know that I yeah. put that on the side of my truck, but that could be valuable. Mm -hmm. Anybody liking this tool? Go ahead and comment if you're liking this tool and what it does. And you're, tell us if you're interested in this topic and why uh, you could see yourself panning for gold for domains. Could you see this as a little side hustle for yourself? All right. All right. I'm going to stop this because we're getting close to the time. I want to show you another thing that you can do with domain kicks. If we go back to this list, okay, and which, hold on. I'm going to go after emails. Okay. So I'm going to go after emails uh, from a list. Let's see if I have a, a list of email addresses. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to grab all of these email addresses here sorry guys if this is your email <laughs> it's just for demonstration <laughs> purposes only uh all right so go back to domain kicks we're gonna clear all we're gonna pop all of these email addresses in here i've never seen a tool do what this is gonna do click that and it gets rid of everything okay so that way you can just search it now we're gonna have a deduplicate so I'm just going to do that step manually just so it deduplicates things. So we're basically trying to make this so simple that uh, you don't have to worry about anything. And now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to use this tool to find the shortest. So we're adding this as well into Domain Kicks that you can just look for the shortest ones. AOL.com is already taken, so is MSN. I'm just going to pop these out. Why bother searching for those? And I'm just going to grab the shortest. This is from an email list. All right. And we're going to go back to the domain kicks. Paste this puppy in there. And we will search using people's email addresses, domains. And again, some of these are .coms, some are .whatevers. And we're just using their brain powers to find our potential searches, our potential winners. Okay. All right, so we're getting really close on time. All right. We just see if a few come up. See, these on the right side are not available. Adam says it's an awesome side hustle. Yeah, I, I just, you know, it's a side hustle and it's also a hobby. <laughs> you know, I just enjoy doing it when I have some spare time. That's why I wanted to make this so easy that you can just hit the rewind and just hit the... You know, if you hit the Domain Kicks logo, it just resets all three of them at the same time. So it just speeds mm -hmm. that process up. Uh, but the, yeah, you'll see that it'll start to just pull things in. And these are people that actually spent the time to make an email address. So that domain is possibly, you know, good. All right. All right. Any questions from you before we go ahead and give away a copy? Again, no, there's no questions like from me. Yeah, uh, I don't know if anybody who's watching got any uh, questions. So uh, now's the now's the time uh, to ask Daryl before we move on to the next uh, topic. Yeah, absolutely, guys. I really appreciate you guys being a part of this webathon. Uh, it's been so exciting to put this together for everybody. Um, if you're new and you're just watching this and you want to be entered to win these prizes, all you have to do is go to webby.link and sign in there and tell us your areas of interest for this webinar 
And uh, we can also use this to try to determine what we'll do for the next webinar. So uh, <clears throat> really appreciate our domainers and people that love domain investing uh, joining and checking this out. It's been my pleasure to show it off to you. And now it's my pleasure to actually give this thing away. All right. So uh, we have the people that signed in before 9 a.m. I'm going to hit the recycle here. And we'll go ahead. And uh, I think I'm going to have you, Simon. You're going to be the non- you're the okay, guest. I'm going to do the do the spin. I'm the guest. Okay, <laughs> okay then, <laughs> spin. All right, we're spinning the wheel. We'll see whose name comes up here on the Webbython. See if it's oh, it's gonna be close. Simo E S I M O E. All right, we're gonna remove Simo so he can't win again. We're going to add him to the winner for the Domain Kicks uh, giveaway. So I'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and add him in here so we don't forget. Uh, but what do you think of the person? We don't know who Simu is, do we? That's do you true. Know who Simu is? It's true. So it could be anyone. No, but, I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's we'll true. I, I'm we'll, 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 we'll email Simu. What was the last initial? E? E. E? Okay. E. Yeah. All right. So we're saving awesome. this. How much fun. This has been a lot of fun to do this with you guys. Really, really do appreciate you guys being here uh, as part of this whole thing. Uh, Webathon just kind of came together organically as a way for us to give back here on Cyber Monday. Obviously, you know, there's some people that do have some products that you may be interested. We've kind of curated things that we think are really good uh, for you to take a look at. But a lot of this is about the education and getting you, you know, different ways of thinking about things. Uh, we had Craig uh, Campbell on earlier today. We had Udit, which, I mean, what a masterclass he gave just on business, mm. right? Yeah. Totally, um, yeah. We, we, we just had Paul Hogden, which I think was spot on about a lot of stuff. I think it was, it was excellent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been tremendous. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is... Uh, Bradley's coming up here next, but what are we going to have to do is I'm going to bring Bradley up for a second and we're going to switch streams and I'll get Bradley over. So, uh, what, let's bring him up to just say hello. Oh, Hey Bradley. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, Bradley. Guys. Um, we're, we have to strip, we have to, uh, switch, uh, streams because our streams can go only so long. So what I'm going to do is I'll send you, uh, in Facebook, the actual link, uh, to the next stream that's, it starts at two o'clock. Okay. Um, and and then we'll uh, we'll get started with your presentation. Do you want to give a little teaser about what your presentation is about before we switch over? Yeah, it's about content mirroring. It's a way to kind of take existing content from a website, uh, either like a long form landing page or a silo. If you've got, you know, supporting articles within a silo and how to kind of multipurpose that content in a very powerful Google asset structure that then you power up with a bunch mm. of links. It's a very, very powerful strategy. I love it. Uh, I yeah, love it. Was... You you have up to two hours because uh, last uh, session we did with you uh, was our most popular uh, <laughs> guest that we've had on. So yeah, you did something, man, uh, on our mass page tools uh, thing. Uh, we definitely had a lot of interest uh, in what you had to say uh, about that. So okay, um, cool. you got the floor. Cool. If if you need that, if you don't, uh, Simon's got some things prepared that he can also talk about. Uh, to pick up at the end. Um, did you have any any promotions or any Cyber Monday things? No, what I'm give this this training is free we're, for uh, Black Friday to Cyber Monday. We were giving this method away for free, so uh, we'll give awesome. you guys access to it. I'm going to kind of walk through what the process is, how it came about, and all of that. But you guys will get it 100 for free. Awesome. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break, probably like 15 minute break. And we're going to light up the uh, other um, part two. You're, you're going to see a stream in mass page tools uh, for uh, stream number two. And we're going to update the uh, live stream on our website and it'll go out to all the various places it's going out to. So uh, hang in there, guys. We will be back. Uh, anything you want to add, Simon? I'm going to add, to, we're also going to refresh the list. So if you've not registered at webby.link and you're watching this, make sure oh, you right. put your name in now because we're going to refresh the giveaway list to make sure that for all the part two giveaways, you can be part of that as well. So if you're not in, make sure you register and you'll be uh, have a chance for the uh, the part two giveaways. That's the only other thing to mention. 
Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. We'll, we'll see you guys in like 10 minutes. Uh, sign, um, I'll, I'll send you the link so we can get started with you on that other stream in the background. Okay, Bradley? Okay, very good. I'll, I'll wait for you on Facebook. See you soon. All right, thanks, guys. See you. All right.